So, hey guys, how are you all? So welcome back to everyone on the channel. So in this video, it is about what if Naruto Prodigal Uzumaki and the legacy of the Uzumaki clan well, if you want to listen to what happens in this story, stay tuned to this video, and this is the full part of this video. And guys, if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't liked this video, so like this video, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Chapter 1 Arc of the Lost Clan Faded Encounter Ira's Sasyari smiled at the store clerk as she entered, pushing aside the flap that marked the entrance. It had been a while since someone from her clan had come to Kanahagakur, the village hidden in the leaves, but she was happy. Therefore, after all, their clan contacts had informed them that the village might have some of the medicine they had been looking for, yet they were not willing to finish their business once and for all. Some of his clan members would have undoubtedly been more efficient in searching for the medicine. It was his first time leaving the clan compound on this type of search, and he was in no hurry to return, especially since his relatives tended to get noisy just thinking about it. In her relatives made Akari place a hand on a nearby wall and lean forward, tiredly forming a dark aura around her as she sighed at the men in her family's penchant for idiocy. Unfortunately the women were not exempt from the typical family joy Yari was well aware that her cousin Nabuko enjoyed drinking her own father under the table, proving in some way that his liver was made of or was a medical miracle then of course, it was Kamiko whom everyone depended on to maintain the discipline of the clan, despite her young age. As a knife specialist she was so skilled that she was considered one of the clan's elites, just behind Nabuko's father and grandson of Elder Kaisu Kraden, only Elder Kaisu himself, even at the incredibly advanced age of 70, towered above them all in terms of strength, which explained how he had kept the clan united, though not even that stopped them from nearly raising the clan property. Every time one of her groups got out of control which unfortunately happened every other day, without realizing the fact that she was causing a minor scene, Kari cried silently grumbling comically to herself about her misfortune of belonging to a clan full of idiots happy to fight. Just seeing the young woman standing in that corner muttering to herself, the store employee silently reflected even while sweating, if it had been a good idea to let the strange girl in. The store particularly considering the uncomfortable looks from other potential customers, were giving her a miss tried to snap the ch out of her self-induced depression I apologize, but you're scaring the other ha, huh? the expression Akari had when it was enough to make the clerk scream in fear, just like the rest of the clan he cursed. Akari had inherited a bad temper and a dislike for being interrupted in her reflections, so when she turned her head to look at the clerk a little, a dark shadow passed over his face, and he mocked the woman like a Yakuza, going completely against the cheerful and happy image he had presented upon entering the store. You said something. He asked rudely. His tone very, very easily conveyed the fact that anyone. Anything other than a negative response would result in pain. The employee squealed again in fear and shook her head quickly before running towards the safety of her teller, although one had to wonder how much security the piece of metal could really provide against the angry young woman in the room. The corner of the store finally emerged from her dark musings, some of them related to the best way to punish her excitable male relatives, and Kari noticed the look she was receiving, and quickly realized, realizing that the clerk had been asking him to tone it down, was supposed to be murderous, now that he had been projecting, sighing and once again blaming his family for this bad thing. Yari went to the medicine aisle to check what the store had in stock humming a song. Clan quietly looked at the labels curiously headache medicine cold medicine hemorrhoid medicine he absentmindedly wondered if he should bring something to Elder Kaisuk, but then discarded that idea, since he'd probably given her a beating for suggesting that he needed nara nara nara, he muttered. Giving up humming to remember the brand of medicine he was looking for. After all, that seemed to be the way this store organized its products until now. He'd seen the pills for Yamanaka's headache Akimichi soldier pills, and Hyuga's eye drops searching for something a young male voice asked, turning his head to the left, Yari blushed almost instantly, when a handsome young man smiled charmingly at her oh, she had really hit the jackpot when she asked to come to Kanoha, who knew they had such cute boys wandering around ha, who is now the monster of nature with cow breasts who lacks X appeal, Moriko Yari put his most charming smile and bowed briefly in greeting oh I'm sorry, he apologized extra sweetly, and his posture was arranged to emphasize his assets I'm new in town, and I heard that Nara medicines were the best that could be gotten, then he pouted as cutely as he could, and judging by the sparkle in the young man's eyes, it was quite a bit. But I can't seem to find them 3 2 1 allow me the young man suddenly much more exuberant than his previous calm charm and cold had suggested, he shouted, almost hypnotized by the delicious female morsel before him, it was just as his aunt, Nabuko's mother, had said before she passed away, men are weak before the power that is the female form, hell, and Kari simply froze. She stayed behind and watched as the young man went through almost all the shelves selecting medicinal products made by the Nara clan, asking her each time if that was the one she was looking for after almost 15 minutes. 
No, she screamed happily when he got lucky and provided her with the bottle he had. Then searching rewarding the young man with a kiss on the cheek and giving him the time and place for an appointment for the next day if he was interested, he quickly stocked up on the particular medication and went to look for to the cashier who looked at her suspiciously still remembering the dark aura she had given off moments before when she finally left the store and Kari was smiling happily. Happy to have accomplished her first clan mission off the property pouting, she remembered how openly the elder Kaisu had argued against allowing clan men and women to leave the property before turning 18, even knowing that 10 to 11 year old children left large villages like ninjas, there was no made a dent in the man's obstinacy in fact Akari could honestly say that the reason he was outside the clan compound was pure luck the old man had been incapacitated by some illness at the age of 70, Queen did not take him down honestly, and therefore that a decision on who to send to receive medicine had fallen on the shoulders of his uncle Iroki, who was much less strict with the rules as such, he had easily allowed Akari to leave the compound, trusting his skills and knowledge to keep her safe even. As she made her journey to Kanoha okay so maybe it hadn't been so easy she had had to convince her cousin Nabuko to give large amounts of alcohol to her uncle, and then she got him some pretty company daring to entertain himself after that was simply a matter of asking him for a favor, and when he found himself docile with alcohol and women he accepted immediately, Yari shuddered to think what the old Kaisuke would do to his uncle once she discovered that he had been manipulated by his daughter and niece, he either deserved it for not keeping his guard up, but so far it had been a worthwhile journey. The world outside the clan compound had always fascinated her. Uncle Iroki always told the clan children stories of his adventures whenever Elder Kaisuke sent him on a mission, and she had grown up hearing wonderful stories about ninja battles and the slaughter of wild beasts that terrorized the countryside. Heard of the Biju but what children in his clan had not heard of after all Viulu and his family had a special history, and as they grew up they all had to learn everything there was about them so much so in fact that their clan treated the Biju as if they were a family tradition, plus it's good to know, but nothing really that will make you twist your panties, according to Elder Kaisuke, who really loved sharing stories from his youth that wasn't always the case there used to be a time he had told them when the Biju were fundamental to the very existence of his clan, he stated that he had personally known Senju Shama the Shota and Hokage, whom the clan learned to respect as the first man who managed to defeat the greatest of all the Biju, the Kaiban Kitsune, which made him Ikari felt even more dizzy to be in Kanoha. Growing up, she had seen Shota and Hokage as a hero, and now walking through the village that he had co-founded was quite a trip, looking towards the famous monument to the Kahe. She couldn't help but sigh pleasantly at the carved faces of the four Hokage even carved in stone, the expressions of the four they conveyed nothing but authority and power, and yet also the feeling that they were guarding their village protectively smiling to herself as she looked at the majestic stone, and Kari she checked it off her list of things to do while in Kanoha unfortunately that didn't make the list that much shorter considering her underage relatives had assaulted her, so that they brought back memories of the outside world as he went through the list, thank god for the eidetic memory, he sighed in resignation, leaning against a wall again as he realized that he would have to go buy more ceiling scrolls, the order of Nabucco alone, enough alcohol to make you dizzy. During one year she would take up an entire scroll by herself in another part of the elemental nations, a blonde with a double ponytail sneezed, just as she was rolling the dice on a craps table, making the treacherous ivory cubes landing on double one, and tripling their gambling debt, Yari sighed to herself with self-pity, wishing not for the first time she could live in a city like Kanoha instead of in the clan compound she understood the old man Kaisuke's reasons quite well one of the rules the clan's main principles were that there should be no secrets between clan members, but as she walked through the streets of the busy city dressed in her usual clan attire, she couldn't help herself. Notice the strange looks she attracted. On the other hand, she didn't. There were plenty of people around going about their business carrying a huge scroll on their backs, it wasn't an exaggeration, either the thing was maybe a foot taller than her, and the only way she could carry it without dragging an edge across what he didn't know was that it wasn't the scroll itself that attracted attention, but the fact that a little girl could carry it without apparent concern. Not that Akari she was oblivious to the look she had attracted since she set foot in Kanoha. She had felt watched and attributed that feeling to the Anbu that her uncle Iroki had told her and her cousins about. She absentmindedly wondered if she could meet one face to face. Face with a mask if the stories were true on the other hand, that would mean he was in trouble right, maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all Yer Yer sighed as he walked down the market street with his eyes half closed as he cast a cursory glance at the stalls they passed in search of anything their relatives might want after all. Unless one of the clan members left the compound on a mission which they did from time to time to feed, shelter and clothe. As his clan, his family had no real ties to the outside world, then a flash caught his attention, and he turned his head towards the stall on the right, recognizing its products as handmade jewelry. 
one with shining eyes quickly approached the stood admiring the products offered as the young girl she was to be fair, Hikari had only seen this type of high-end jewelry in the hands of some of her aunts, and even then most of it had melted after the war broke out and her clan fell apart. He was forced to flee from a ninja. The same thing happened with everything they had owned from Kumo. In fact, the little they had from both countries were now considered bitter relics. In fact, with hopeful eyes, he raised a particularly pretty brooch. Admiring it under the attentive gaze and the stall vendor's smile as he heard a commotion on the street, reluctantly turned his head towards the source of the noise, much to the vendor's disappointment, and he was shocked to see what appeared to be the young shop assistant whom he had intimidated before shooing away. Quite rudely at a young man dressed in the most divine clothes, horrible orange jumpsuit that Yari ever had the misfortune of seeing seriously. Just looking at him made him want to gouge out his eyes and purge his eyes through an exorcism ritual, yet something didn't add up about him. All with the way the employee treated the young man like some kind of undesirable street trash of course he seemed a little rough, but surely she had made a worse impression than him right ah, it's that boy again he heard the e-merchant news and Karari blinked and she looked curiously at the salesman. The man looked at her for a moment. You're from out of town. No. He shrugged. As she nodded and took a seat behind her stall. I've been seeing you around here for a couple of days. Uncle. He growled before. Yari didn't know what to make of the man's verbal tittick, but it was starting to grate on her nerves. That being said, she found his information about the boy interesting. Even if he seemed like the plague of the city because of it. Do things sound this bad? He asked, resting an arm on his giant scroll container again. The IV native shrugged. I haven't been bothered, he said noncommittally. The rest remained silent, keeping their eyes on the downtrodden boy as he walked away from the store. I guess even Kanoha has its rejections, he mused privately. Naruto had called him today officially. He sucked in the first place. The academy tutors had almost expelled him for a day for a barely acceptable technicality well barely acceptable in his opinion, since he didn't consider pranks to be grounds for suspension, even if it meant the teachers were covered in chipping powder, Yuka hadn't been present to stop his suspension, like he usually did to make matters worse, he had forgotten his lunch at school, and since he wouldn't. He allowed into school until tomorrow, that meant he had to go hungry, since his food was barely rationed at home, the Rubio boy dressed in orange he sighed sadly, as he took a seat against the wall in a nearby alley, his last attempt at window shopping, had also failed, because the prissy checkout clerk had naturally called the harpy. All the names in the book when he was almost expelled, although it served to reinforce his belief that the people hated him, he made fun of him. So what did he care that one day he would show them to everyone? His eyes almost instinctively landed on the monument to the Kahe, regardless of the jokes he did in the place, it was a simple truth that he practically worshipped the leaders of the village from the Yadai Hokage, to the prematurely deceased Yondai Mei Hokage, saw the great leaders of Kanoha as an inspiration, hence his dream to continue his steps, and in doing so, he achieved the respect and recognition of his parents Naruto had learned a long time ago that no matter how much he cried or screamed, he would not really make him respect jokes of course he loved wearing them, and they did attract some attention however he was also very conscious that it wasn't the attention he wanted for now that was keeping him afloat, but he had never dreamed of settling for that he shuddered as he felt. And heard his stomach growl ideally this would require a trip to the Raymond stand of Ichiraku, the only place in the city that would gladly and happily serve him, but he still hadn't managed to raise enough to pay for it, of course, the old Tucci would probably give him a gift, since it was cool, and all that, but Naruto hated charity he really did it, he believed that a man needed to be able to take care of himself, but maybe sitting in an alley wasn't the best way to ignore the hunger pangs. Getting up slowly, he walked out onto the street, deliberately ignoring the looks of disdain and disapproval that came his way. They spoiled the features of many of the citizens of Kanoha. He had long gotten used to them and although they still bothered him on an emotional level, he took revenge by playing pranks on the most serious criminals. Oh look, it's that snotty TCH kid always causing trouble. I can't believe he did it. They were allowed into the academy, the comments always seemed to follow him wherever he went. They were generally gossipy women, since the men of Kanoha preferred more direct forms of contempt, such as making him trip. Accidentally throwing garbage in his path and other similar petty actions from time to time, if Kanoha got close to October 10th, he would have to be on guard against drunken revelers who wanted to teach him a lesson, whatever that meant honestly what happened to these people. Their only consolation was that every time mobs started to form the Anbu were quite quick to stop them and disperse the drunken idiots shaking with irritation, every time they made derogatory comments, Naruto he finally felt mad when he heard a particular civilian call him the forbidden word damn shrimp Naruto turned around, planted his feet, and pointed at the attacker with wide eyes and no pupils. 
Who are you calling a small speck of ahe dust naturally this earned Naruto a chase down the market street by the offended civilian whom Naruto enjoyed mocking terribly while staying out of reach, finally losing the civilian con violent tendencies, Naruto felt a smile on his face as he came down from the adrenaline rush yes, that was what he needed a good old fashioned chase to get his blood pumping. His mind had now eliminated any trace of hunger related thoughts Naruto chuckled to himself as he began to planning from the safety of his dark alley, who to prank that day, and how perhaps it was time to pay another visit to the food store's Aquimichi last time the poor beefy fire bastards had slipped laxatives into their systems, causing the entire nearby area to be declared under quarantine, and somehow causing a massive shortage of toilet paper throughout the village, Naruto laughed as he remembered that particularly pleasant week not even the Aburum bugs would come near the window zone. Joji had supposedly beaten him up when he admittedly stupidly bragged about the prank during lunchtime, to be fair he deserved it, and Naruto liked his big boned classmate at least he didn't insult him, Naruto sometimes even accompanied him for a prank, along with Kiba and Shikamaru of course, they were not friends in the strictest sense of the word, but they tolerated each other quite well of course. It was also stupidly easy to bribe Joji to do anything give him a bag of potatoes fries, and you can probably get the burly boy to fight the Kayubi talking about classmates, Naruto wondered if maybe his new prank adventure should be directed at Kanoha Echiha's beloved boy Sasuke, that the main candidate for rookie of the year was a person who really got on Naruto's nerves by frowning all the time and maintaining an unsettling atmosphere around him. Naruto couldn't stand the feeling of smug superiority that the duck-haired boy gave off every time. Time I saw it a fact that was only made worse by the fact that all the girls in the class thought that the emo boy was actually mysterious and Cole honestly, if I continued listening to them praise the altar of the greatness of Sasuke Naruto, swore that vomiting was also one of the few points of agreement between him and his male companions, scratching their Barbidian opportunity to make a joke there. After all the emo boy wonder felt so confident in his superiority that he would probably overlook someone as Naruto laughing again, Naruto didn't notice the sweaty passerby staring at the dark alley, as if someone crazy was about to come out unfortunately for Naruto, his brilliant calculations had missed a tiny but unequivocally crucial detail, Sasuke was the favorite for the rookie of the year award. Because he deserved a cursing the horrible entity known as Logic, Naruto jumped roof after roof, while the pair of tuning that had gotten in the way of the masterful prank took him, they were chasing courtesy of an equally masterful dodge from the aforementioned emo boy Wonder Duck Hair, both covered in pink paint and sparkly body glitter, just wait till we get our hands on you, roared one of the tuning sexually threatened I'll kill you roared as part of life I mean buddy Naruto smiled over his shoulder, you know denial is a sure sign of he screeched as he barely dodged a smoking shurik, meant to take his head off hey, that could have killed me, that was the point screeching again, while dodging several pointed instruments of death and slash or mutilation, Naruto cunningly evaded the pair by Throwing an engine himself to look like a trash can that the enraged Chunin Miss Naruto smiled as the traveling gay pride parade continued on a futile search in the opposite direction, laughing mischievously. Naruto headed towards his apartment building, which, although decrepit and barely fit for human habitation, did not stop. Being his home it also helped that no one else lived there, since no one wanted to share even a building with him in fact, he had often wondered why the building was still there, considering that he himself manager, had been gone for quite some time well at least he didn't have to pair and however, as he got closer to his house, he began to notice what appeared to be a glow coming from the street the Type you normally see coming from fire in the distance glowering the young man stopped his walk on the roof in front of his building and crouched down. Experience had taught him that the less he stood out at night, the safer he was. Naruto did not regret that decision one bit outside his building. There was a group of local people gathered, he assumed that was the correct word, drunk for the most part, but also some brainy people who had fun hurting people as a group, he saw them destroy the facade of the building. Paint the walls with gang graffiti and break windows, why he never really understood the reason when the Hokage told him, but as far as he could understand they were just idiots being idiots, unlike the idiots from the nicer part of town, who just refused to sell him things, or they overcharged him just for being who he was, fortunately the old Tucci didn't mind buying instead as long as Naruto advanced the money the man was nice not stupid, Naruto watched in silence as the crowd destroyed the outside of his house, not really caring fortunately, they had long since stopped invading the apartments themselves, as they had realized that no one living there had anything of value, hence why they lived there. It was perhaps half an hour before the group left. Tired and started to leave the building, and Naruto could see that they seemed a little disappointed that he hadn't left with anything of value, that being said, he was pretty sure that if they had caught him at home and tried to rob him, they wouldn't have had the balls to do anything else. Although many punks had threatened to seriously hurt him in the past, Naruto had noticed that after the first couple of similar occasions, said individuals had almost disappeared, instead of he decided not to look a gift horse in the mouth. Let's just say those. 
they were the days when Ikki Marino, head of torture and interrogation, had been happiest, and let's leave it at that once the last of them left the building and began to return home. Naruto finally jumped out of his hiding place and began the final stretch. On his trip home however he was about to start the first flight of stairs to his apartment when he felt an incredible pain in his chest and was thrown backwards, landing heavily on the ground almost out of breath, he knew he would catch you if he waited long enough, he stated a youthful male voice no, not that kind of youth, as he emerged from the shadows of the staircase Naruto's attacker was a handsome young man with a cruel expression as he looked at his victim after all rats always return to their nest Naruto who normally gives as good as he gets couldn't respond because he was still having trouble breathing what's wrong, the young man sneered as more hidden assailants began to emerge from their hiding places, no no at all taunts, no defiant statement stabbed his boot into Naruto's stomach throwing the little boy a few feet away and further complicating his breathing problems, the garbage like you should disappear, the young man mocked as he and his associates approached the fallen child. Adults may not have the guts to do it, but I do catch them guys laughing the group began to cry Naruto who instinctively curled up in the fetal position to avoid being hit in sensitive areas, it must be recognized that the young blonde refused to shout out. Pain clearly refused to give his attackers the pleasure of seeing him squirm after a moment. The young man raised his hand and the group stopped the assault by ducking. The ringleader grabbed a handful of Naruto's hair and lifted him up. You've had enough garbage in your head, Naruto sneered, finally able to control his breathing. He simply smiled painfully in response. Go ahead. You idiot defiantly challenged him. He was rewarded with a fierce uppercut to the face, which further aggravated his condition. The young man clicked his tongue as he stood. The little bastard almost made my skin break, he complained before giving his victim a quick kick in the ribs that apart from making Naruto contracting, did not provoke any reaction from the boy. Hey, now what boss asked one of the less intellectually gifted members of the group. The young man looked at his subordinate as if he were stupid, which to be fair he was. What do you think? He scoffed. Get rid of him. This town won't miss him, and dad can finally get rid of that monstrosity, he added, pointing with his thumb at the crepitous building. Oh so that's what it is like. Yari had trouble falling asleep once he got back to the hotel. He didn't know why. What, but seeing that oppressed child had really bothered her was strange, since he was not even the only stray pigwool she had seen, and she was realistic enough to understand that he could not do anything for them that boy, however, he really cared. It had remained engraved in her mind even while she was putting the medicine in her suitcases, not that she was going to take advantage of this visit as long as she could, she couldn't stop thinking about him, there was also a feeling of familiarity in him that made her looking at someone he should know but couldn't remember clearly. He knew instantly that he was not a member of the clan who had fled. There was no such thing in his compound. All those who had left during the Great Exile remained until where she understood within their assigned groups, none of the other cells had reported a leak, and to seal the deal, the girl was blonde, not a traditional Yuzumaki Ritid. Not being able to fall asleep she did the best she could do. Going for a walk actually that wasn't accurate enough more like jumping off the roof she had always loved high places, and jumping off roofs was a natural way for her to clear her head, well she simply focused all her thoughts on the next jump, and on the next, if we add to that the benefits of physical conditioning and continuous practice. In chakra control he had found an ingenious and healthy way to calm his mind, unfortunately his habit too, had a tendency to trip her up into some problematic situations, oops once accidentally she slipped mid-landing and fell on her fifth grade cousin Aya, who had been trying to woo her cousin Yuki, her aunt steps on Nana, suffice to say that the user of water was very upset and made it very clear. By using his techniques to drag her into a stream leaving aside the possible homicide and death from hypothermia, and Kari had learned to watch her steps unfortunately she was also prone to forget her lessons while jumping on a roof which led her to the kind of situation she found herself in now, just as she was about to take another jump, she came back to reality quickly enough to see that she had reached a dead end. So to speak below her there was only one street and the nearest roof in front of her was several stories higher. Sighing she was about to change direction and continue her journey when she heard the familiar sound of a thumping, then she sighed. Desperately recognizing how messy it was to be able to instinctively recognize what a beating sounded like damn cousins and his stupid youthful temper coming out of another anger-inducing dream, he blinked when he heard a familiar voice and looked down the street frowning as he recognized one of the group. From people like the young man who had helped her in the store earlier that day, what the hell were they doing training at night? The question answered itself rather quickly when the small group of bullies backed away revealing a badly beaten boy, the sight was enough to make her gasp in disgust, and she immediately directed a glare at the young man she thought had been attractive just a few hours. 
Earlier however just as he was about to enter the fray and give them a lesson to those idiots, he heard the boy's exchange of words, and the young man smiling despite himself as he listened to the boy challenge his attacker, however he shuddered when he saw the young man brutally beat the boy in the face, and thought he had waited long enough raising his hands and making a familiar seal he listened. As the young man ordered the bullies to get rid of the boy and his reasons for hurting him, his gaze became more cruel when he realized that he was just a small-time dandy who probably lived off his father's money, so this is how it is he announced loudly catching their attention and turning away one of the bullies began as everyone looked up at the ceiling and saw the red-haired girl standing. There with a very displeased look on her face however they didn't have time to say anything else before a surge of chakra flowed through her and she spread her hands in front of her face to slam them against the ground on either side of her kuchi seo jutsu he shouted causing seals to form in a circle or around the area where he had struck his palms, Yama Inukurbero summoned that night twin howls. Were heard in Kanoha as puffs of smoke announced the successful completion of the technique of summoning Akari from the smoke already halfway towards the thugs surrounding the boy, there were two huge wolves one with grey fur and the other with midnight black fur, with their jaws wide open, as they went to kill a Kanoichi screamed in alarm one of the thugs, while well, everyone flees from Los Lobos, who unfortunately did not reach their objectives however the duo took protective positions in front of the fallen boy and his lover soon joined them by jumping from the roof and landing gracefully between them the young man without however, he remained calm even when the two canines snarled at him with barely contained cruelty. He had recognized the woman as quickly as she had recognized him and he was sure that his charms would win her over, especially considering who he was protecting. I remember you called her with a skillful smile the girl from the store Truthyari kept a furious look while her hands fell on the heads of her summoned without flinching, the young man reached for his pocket which made the wolves and Akari they stiffened and then he took out a piece of paper that Iari recognized a proposed date that I had given him a little early for our date he didn't ask. Jokingly although Iari could now see the malevolence that was hiding just behind that thin veil of charm about that he said with a wry smile, I'm afraid I'll have to cancel I don't go out with children beating up losers come on, there's no need to be so feisty, the young man brushed aside his insult if you come here now and leave the brat alone, I promise to give you a good time, while Yari raised a in reddish eyebrow at the proposal apparently the idiot really believed that trying to kill a child could be avoided with soft words, are you kidding me no the young man blinked once, then twice, and finally sighed as he held his head in his hand shaking it. Ah, what a pity, he mused out loud. I guess this will have to be the hard way, guys, catch them, not very admirable, he hesitated to do it, since they now knew she was a kanoichi, but boss, she's the man, he snapped. Hung with irritation she's just as own with her two pets, surely you guys can deal with that oh I need my father to evict you, useless bits of your homes he scolded, that sealed it for the bullies, with a somewhat hesitant roar, the group of idiots the muscular men charged at her, and her summons with wild abandon, without somehow the trio rolling their eyes at the sheer idiocy they were displaying. Yama Inu left Kerbero's right both wolves calmly ordered. He growled and ran towards their assigned side leaving Akari to fend off the vanguard of thugs alone, although dealing with small-time thugs was not outside the scope of his abilities, he couldn't leave the boy defenseless, so he slammed his hand on the ground below. She with a smile directed at her attacker's Kuchi Seo Jutsu, shouted Shiba summoned you another howl pierced the sky as the third of the world summoned by Akari of the Shikoku race emerged from the column of smoke and stood firm just a foot away. Distance from Akari Shiba protect the child I have these idiots, he ordered receiving a growl in response jumping on Shiva, just as the wolf jumped back to protect the child, and Karari smiled at his attackers as he withdrew his fist and nailed one of the thugs in the chin, letting it drop like a stone, then spinning on his foot, he used his free leg to kick another pair of thugs, before using us Arla. As another pivot to bring his now free leg and crush the nose of a third thug. Meanwhile, Yama Inu and Kerberos, two of Akari's most aggressive attack wolves, had launched themselves against the mass of thugs from the sides, quickly spreading panic among them, while the duo clung painfully to the legs or arms. Only to let go when their prey began to running away while Akari and her wolf pack attacked the thugs, Naruto slowly regained consciousness, and just as quickly he painted himself as pain tormented his senses, glad for once that his healing factor seemed to be working overtime to keep him in one piece, Naruto opened his eyes in a daze, when the sound of fighting reached his ears, there were the bullies. Hiding each other well they looked pretty stupid, so he guessed it was a possibility, and that's when he saw the wolf staring at him frozen the blonde boy looked at the wolf with wide eyes, as if he hoped that the lack of movement would make him choose something else to hunt. All the while he kept a firm mantra in his head, please don't eat me please don't eat me, please don't eat me it was repeated almost hysterically, and then the wolf licked its face, the residents around Kanoha would wonder for days where that clearly shrill cry had come from the Anbu in particular deployed forces throughout the hidden village, in case there was an invasion had occurred. Suffice it to say that the experience was enough to make Naruto faint again. Meanwhile, Akari was having the time of her life. 
when she finally let go and really did. Some damage to these kids beating up the punks before her at home all she could do was train or fight with her relatives and none of it had the satisfying feeling of a real fight, this time without any elders around to tell her to stand down. Stopped he could really deal a blow to the enemy and he accepted it, like a fish in water ducking to avoid a blow, he turned his agile body slightly and then drove a screwdriver hook into the chin of his current opponent, effectively lifting him up and knocking out for all the effects, then seeing in that split second that two more thugs were going to flank her on both sides. She turned in the air and launched a roundhouse kick, nailing both of them and leaving them, as they say, out of combat, landing in a crouch, extending her leg. Knocking down some of the idiots making them prime prey for Yama Inu and Kerberos who quickly pounced on them as if they were fallen deer by the time the dust settled on the fight, and Kari grabbed one of the thugs by his shirt, the man had long since he was unconscious and his fist was bloody, but otherwise he was completely fine hell, not even his outfit was much affected by the fight otherwise they. Had been civilians I'm sorry he mocked the ringleader you didn't say they were going to catch me at this point, the young man she was fully aware of how out of her depth, she was initially dismissing the girl as just a wanted Kinoichi, and with no village her three summons and herself had eliminated her best enforcers, who the hell are you? He demanded as he walked away from her and her summons, Yari sighed as he dropped the unconscious thug and stretched his arms above his head, feeling a pleasant pop in his joints man what a pain he complained are you that guy a little fight and you get to it whining like an ank boy, then clicked his tongue in irritation, pointing and tapping at what the young man had assumed was just a custom. Embroidery just above his left breast on his white and purple yukata with a short skirt and low neckline, beneath which a black mesh shirt could be seen along with black mini shorts, peeking out from under the hem of her yukata, the symbol however, was unmistakable in Yuzumaki spiral, and Kai presented himself proudly before pointing it out. Instigating her summons to slowly stalk towards him the young man screamed in fear as he was pushed against a wall, although he recognized the last name she gave him, as a supposed Kuchi specialist of the Yuzumaki clan, Yuzumaki suddenly breathed very hard. Aware of how much there was however, if that didn't tell her the gleam in her advancing wolf's eyes it did, she looked at the fallen boy behind her and then back to her advancing doom you or her family, that single comment froze the three wolves in Akari, throwing his head back to look at the unconscious boy, who by the way was also foaming at the mouth from his too close for comfort. Encounter with Shiva, his eyes widened at the revelation that this boy he could be one of the members of the Uzumaki clan, or a descendant of one who had disappeared over the years before the Great Exile took place, now feeling a fury like he had never felt before he slowly turned his gaze towards the young man with the one who at one point had deigned to leave. There was nothing left of that impression, all he could see was an enemy of his clan that needed to be destroyed, raising his index finger, he pointed at him with a cold and vengeful gleam in his eyes, get him the loud screams. They soon caught the attention of a nearby Anbu squad, who quickly arrived to investigate by then however all they could find were numerous seriously injured civilians lying in a heap, a rather disfigured young man muttering hysterically to himself next to a wall, and a note left in the pile that had many of the veteran ninjas sweating, there was so much garbage on the street I took care of it. Remember to recycle said the fact that it also had a small drawing improvised of what appeared to be a redeated girl with short hair and smiling, making a peace sign simply served to increase the absurdity of the matter in the end, the Anbu squad simply decided to do what they always did when something like this happened and form Hokage, well the Anbu doing cleaning work after their exciting. That away Kari had picked up the young man and quietly carried him to his hotel room, having deduced that his position seemed to be the object of disdain by most. From the village leaving him in his bed he left him asleep there and sat in front of the futon against the wall, he raised his knees and rested his head on them while he looked at the sleeping and bruised boy, in fact he had not stopped since he put him on his futon and he let him sleep after the beating. The disappearance of members of the Uzumaki clan before the Great Exile was a well-known fact among his family. As they grew up, Elder Kaisuke made sure to instill in the minds of the young people to show respect towards the members of the clan. The ceased or missing every year on the anniversary of the first day of the Great Exile, the entire clan literally went to the family temple and offered prayers to the hundreds of names inscribed on a huge stone slab, an eternal monument to the sacrifice of the Great Exile Yuzumaki clan of Yudaskakir. The problem, it was that years had passed since it was known that any member of the Yuzumaki clan lived in Kanoha. There was certainly a time when her family would have been next to the ninja village and she knew everything about Lady Mito and her relationship with Yoda. Of Lady Kashina the successor chosen by myth when the time came for her to pass on her burden however, according to what the clan had learned she had died during the attack of the Kayubi 13 years ago, and the great Viulu disappeared along with her, and with the passing of Kashina, the last of the Uzumaki clan chiefs also passed away. Originally Lady Mito had been scheduled for the but her marriage to Senju Sadama had removed her from the succession and effectively transferred the responsibility of clan chief to the son. 
from his father's brother, Kashina's father, when he died, the responsibility fell on Kashina, and just when the Yuzumaki were about to meet to agree to settle in Kanoha, the Kyubi attack occurred. For days, the Yuzumaki elders had waited for Kashina to arrive at the place of meeting, only to discover his fate from Boka Elder Kaisu. Kolwiz told the story of how the elders had despaired at the news, but as he told it, it was not a moment of failure and surrender, but of perseverance Yari he still remembered how he told her that when the meeting failed, he had sworn to keep the Yuzumaki name alive. And had asked the clan to divide itself into manageable cells to keep themselves and their inheritance safe from the prying eyes and jealous greed of the greats. Nations that had destroyed his homeland Yari was only tr years old when the division occurred his entire life, he only remembered living in the complex, but he never forgot the story of Lady Kashina and how the Yuzumaki had been so close to settling in a new home, her steady gaze never left the young man could Lady Kashina have left an heir they didn't know about, he was really an Yuzumaki to begin. But her bright yellow hair seemed to defy her old mark, but then she knew of several cousins who shared the lack of red hair of this boy, Yari growled in frustration as he scratched his head with fury, not knowing how to proceed if the child was a long lost relative, then clearly he had to take him to Elder Kaisuk on the other hand, he had no very clear what the boy's circumstances were and bringing. A complete stranger to the compound would undoubtedly give the old man an aneurysm, that meant Kaisuk had to get close to the young man there really was no other way around it, he supposed they could send Oroki first, but he was a cousin Lady Kashina's third grade, so he wasn't exactly close, he gently tapped his forehead on his knees and hugged them close to his body, then it was the old man Kaisuk. Had been there long enough to knowing what to do yet he couldn't help but form a small smile of excitement if this went well, maybe finally, the Yuzumaki would be able to call a proper village home chapter 2 arc of the lost clan, the exiles waking up the next morning, Naruto had no idea where he was, and the first thing that came to mind was to go crazy as they say go crazy after all, if the last place. You remembered being conscious was a dark street surrounded by thugs, why the hell would you feel safe if you you woke up in a totally different place however said hissing fit was quickly silenced by the fact that you felt something flutter in your face, frowning you grabbed whatever it was and pulled it down, making a grimace cursing and roaring as you ripped the tape off. His forehead taking away some eyebrow follicles mother roared rubbing her head furiously, in a vain attempt to lessen the pain rolling on the ground as she did so, when she finally calmed down after cursing to as many deities as he could think of. He stared at the piece of paper that had been lovingly taped to his forehead bar eyebrows for his, it wasn't the typical delayed rant about go die in a ditch demon I had to leave early room services on the table, also take the monkey appropriate clothes to the left of the futon we will be back soon, p.s seriously take off your glasses, who wears glasses nowadays, Naruto blinked in confusion at the note wondering who the hell the author was the last thing he remembered was that it was being beaten to death by a group of disreputable strongmen, then of course there was that horrible nightmare about a wolf licking his shaking face, Naruto realized that he was actually stripped down to his underwear and let out a loud scream of surprise, cursing any pervert who had done this to him his eyes. Immediately returned to the note finally realizing what it said about his beloved monkey despondent over losing his only companion through the sun and rain. Never mind that it was a horrible fashion faux pas that somehow miraculously didn't get him killed for standing out so much. Naruto swore to find the clothing kidnapper and take merciless revenge on him for this clandestine and diabolical act. It never occurred to him or her. To his apparent kidnapper that the boy had somehow managed to survive all these years and become an expert in stealth while using that horrible thing then once the silly thoughts left his mind he turned to his left, whereas he had promised the note was waiting for him, a complete set of clothes neatly folded, kidnapped stripped and now provided with clothes and food, Kami murmured I hope they didn't. Sell me as a now one might wonder how on earth a 13 year old could know such things, suffice it to say that if you live mainly on the street you learn things, it's not the most pleasant of things, but it is things. At the end of the day, looking at the pile of clothes as if it were a time bomb, Naruto approached it carefully before touching it with cautiously satisfied that nothing would occur to him bringing up uncomfortable memories of his face, licking the nightmare of the wolf slowly unfolded the shirt and lifted it to inspect it grey shirt well, it's not that bad he guessed, and it seemed to have that orange spiral motif he always saw on uniforms of Kanoha sewn just above the hem of the short sleeves, the pants weren't that bad either he supposed, although they had a decidedly bland look being all black in fact in his opinion, it was getting too dangerously in the realm of emo attire, and by emo, he meant Sasuke yet what else was he supposed to wear now that his jumpsuit had been diabolically Kidnapped by a random stranger as he reluctantly put on his new outfit, he also noticed the presence of some bandages of combat, with a note attached, telling him to use them for his legs, instead of his hands dripping from his, before the new note complete with a little red-haired girl, raising his thumb idly, pondered whether he should ignore this thing, quite yet angry that he had been stripped naked. 
and kidnapped against his will although how much will an unconscious person could have is up for debate touching the scroll of paper, he pouted thoughtfully as he also reread the note, finally turning away without simply adding an explanation as to why he should listen to it too apparently as she said the main thing about ninjas was their need to remain dexterous and agile at all times with minimal chances of getting caught in any type of obstacle including their own clothing loose clothing as such tended to be one of the greatest dangers of the ninja profession since a simple slipper tub could end his life the bandages were therefore intended for him to firmly hold his pants to his body preventing them from if he ever had the misfortune that his pants would snag or trip when he stepped on the hem, looking down at himself Naruto could see that the hem of his pants actually reached just above his ankles, which he didn't think meant that he would trip a lot on the other hand, as the card said it was better to be safe than sorry, and the wraps would help him avoid getting cut in exposed areas, as they were strong ninja grade wraps, so by the time you finished getting dressed feeling a little weird for having to take so much care of your appearance Naruto approached the table mentioned in the note and found his breakfast a little cold, considering he had just finished I got up and took so much time getting dressed still, even though it wasn't Raymond, it was pretty good at least I didn't think having never eaten food of this quality cold or not savoring the food and naturally. Excluding the vegetables Naruto sighed contentedly as he patted his for once full belly, giving a small burp to show his appreciation yet apart from the food and everything Nadi couldn't help but feel a little good, a lot worried about how he got here, more importantly, he still couldn't come to terms with why someone had stripped him naked and just left him there. And he assumed that since no one had come in still to demand services or something he wasn't a prisoner well yes he was he had to admit that this was the most pleasant sight he had ever heard of, however he abandoned his musings when someone knocked on the door panicking again, somehow convinced that this visitor was some kind of pervert who had finally come to claim his prize. He quickly headed towards the window, pleased to see that it was not closed, looking around, he quickly recognized the building in the which was one of the most elegant hotels in Kanoha, to his surprise, he had been so sure that his kidnapper had hidden him in some dark and leaky warehouse, however, the blonde is not someone who looked a gift horse in the mouth. She acted like any possible kidnapping victim and quickly jumped landing on tiptoe on a nearby roof to the surprise of passers-by on the main street and running away meanwhile back in the room the door opened and revealed a young woman in a kimono and apron holding a room service duster. When Akari finally returned to the Yuzumaki compound, she was sad to say that she was not at all surprised to see. Her uncle Yoki hanging from a crossbeam from his ankles completely tied and with a seal label labeled punishment on top, the rope's red-faced but otherwise ridiculously jovial apparently elder Kaisuke had finally managed to impose a punishment for allowing an underage clan member to leave the compound, hello Ajison, greeted with a smile, and a ridiculous wave Iroki gave him a backward smile and tried. The wave making him sway carelessly Osu and Kari-chan screamed as he swayed from side to side, and then a small stone stuck him in the Akari, would have loved to say that this was an exceptional moment in her family's daily life, that would have been a lie a sad sad lie upon reaching the front door, she ignored the ongoing shouting between father and daughter, she made the hand seal necessary to open. The door gate having spent most of their lives hiding from jealous and greedy people, all of Itsumi's complexes were sealed to the 11th degree demon, even attempting to jump over the walls of the complex was just a way to earn a quick death, and horrifying fortunately however, each clan member and woman was taught the appropriate hand seals to deactivate the door seals, quickly skimming the combination finished the seven seal code with a clap, which caused the door to glow briefly before disappearing and causing a distinctive clicking sound to emanate from her, as she opened the wooden door of the door she smiled as she saw the complex spread out before her once again Osuyak heard Nabuko call out to her in greeting sitting on the on the porch of her room, the jet black haired beauty. Of the Uzumaki clan dressed in a simple single tie Yukata was casually lounging on the porch in the most unfeminine manner, holding a teacup in one hand with a smile and a blush at her side. Next to it there was a brown bag with what seemed to be stones, how was it with you, Yari really wanted to sit and gossip with Nabuko about her travels, but unfortunately her message arrived first, I'm sorry cousin I can't stay and chat, now she here responded with a gesture before looking at Iroki who was still hanging, I guess I chan found out Nabuko nodded happily, as he put down the now empty cup yes. She made a slightly drunk pea sign she told me to take care of dad's punishment and everything apparently I ignored ignoring the fact that she had also been the one who had brought in the drinks and the women to relax her father, well that explained the hanging, Iari supposed as she looked at a red-faced uncle who had returned to swing idly. In the air being a Jinjutsu specialist, it would have been easy for Nabuko to catch her father off guard and humiliate him in this way one of her favorite pastimes, not that Uncle Iroki cared much he was so relaxed it was ridiculous, where are the guys she asked, as she passed by the porch Nabuko shrugged her shoulders, you know what those idiots are, she said casually before drinking another cup and 
laughing Natsu is probably picking a fight with Yuki Raiden again Ikari sighed tiredly at that although he continued walking along the porch, ignoring the fact that Nobuko kept throwing stones at his father's head from time to time, causing a series of rather extreme curses, from the normal affable and foolish man walking through the streets of the Ikari clan district he smiled and waved. The different clan members and women who lived in the small village-sized compound, approximately 150 members of the Yuzumaki clan called the compound home, and perhaps a quarter or a third of them, had never seen Yuzushi Agakur, as to how they managed to keep so many members of the clan hidden. The Yuzumaki refugees had relied on a combination of their legendary Hutsu finish, and they simply did not stand out. Knowing full well that proclaiming themselves a ninja would only attract attention. Elder Kaisuke had simply ordered the complex to emulate a walled peasant village as such, there were no obvious signs that the inhabitants were highly trained death dealers for this there were no forges, that is to say that could be seen in instead, there were butcher shops, sweet shops, tailors, repairmen, restaurants, everything that any normal town could have. Of course, no one visited the complex since the clan's Enjutsu established several highly sealed barriers that would place the victim in a disoriented Jinjutsu protected but still fell to the power of the great nations, therefore to avoid taking unnecessary risks, the members of the clan lived their daily lives like any other. Another peasant keeping his ninja activities strictly secret oh and Kari-chan welcome back she heard one of the older women of the clan call out to her with a smile and a greeting, thank you Abasan she responded with an equal smile and a greeting of her own, the sound of laughter, the children made him smile, as he continued walking down the path towards the central house, where the elder resided. Isuke hesitated to admit it, but he had missed the sounds of the Yuzumaki Konoha complex. It had been nice and all that minor fighting and misfortune aside, but there really was no place like home, and Kari-chan heard someone calling from up ahead and smiled at the sight of her older cousin Akemi, apparently she was out for a walk, and her brother Daisuke was probably there to protect herself from. Any suitor at 18 Akemi was one of the members of the Yuzumaki clan, who were allowed to leave the compound on missions, unfortunately she was not usually assigned to leave, since she was too conspicuous however, it was not her fault she was simply too pretty not to stand out, on the other hand, Akemi didn't seem to care. Instead of going out on missions, she seemed perfectly happy to stay behind and be in charge of teaching the Yuzumaki children and working in the clan's only bar personally. Akari considered Akemi to be her favorite cousin between her kind demeanor, her natural ability as a ninja and her stunning appearance. She was obviously her role model Osu Akemi and Daisu Kunkun, she greeted him back with a wide smile, his older cousin smiled kindly as they stopped close to each other with their hands demurely in front, how was your first mission he asked kindly Yari smiled nervously as he scratched the back of his neck well, I don't know about the mission he started knowing very well that practically she had broken. All the rules by leaving the compound at her age, regardless of whether the acting chief had authorized her to do so. Daisu groaned. Oh, stop being so indecisive, she scolded him sharply before crossing her arms. On the chest real men should be proud of their achievements dripping with sweat at the bold statement, none of the women had the courage to point out that Aiki was in fact a girl instead they chose to ignore him and continue the talk without him should still it had been exciting, right? Akemi pressed with a knowing smile. My first mission was shaking like a leaf. Moment an idea occurred to him tell me what mission do you remember, when the split happened right his older cousin pouted thoughtfully with one finger tenderly resting her lower lip hmm not well, but a little I guess why Lady Kashina had any family left when we were leaving to bring Konoha Akari asked anyway, tilting his head to the side as he remembered those dark days Akemi stood there in silence for a while still ignoring his younger brother before shaking his head a sad smile on his face, not that I can remember I'm sorry he said with an excuse me smile, I think the old man Kaisuke would be the only one to know for sure, if there is someone Yari sighed, having missed the opportunity to solidify his suspicions, before speaking to the old man in question, as things stood all she had was word of an assassination attempt and her own suspicions how is that something happened in Kanoha she asked Kini having deduced that something about Kashina's lineage was bothering her. Maybe Akari answered without committing first I need to ask Kaisu Jai I see was all he said to Kimi his sweet smile still in place, although a flash of something passed through his eyes, then I wish you the best of luck, and Kari Chan Yari, he bowed thanking his older cousin, thanks to my Neve said with a little enthusiasm, happy to have his older cousin's approval a few minutes later he passed. Another pair of familiar faces although one of them seemed to be sleeping, while the another looked at the cushion of the first with some jealousy Amaya greeted, enunciating the use of honorifics for her almost sister. The dark-haired girl looked away from the object of her jealousy and smiled when she saw her best friend approaching along the dirt road. 
Yari greeted with a wave of her hand although she tried very hard to keep from screaming, considering her future boyfriend was sleeping next to her. How scary the outside world was Yari shrugged. Not much really although big many people also said almost feeling like a broken record, considering how many people asked her that question to be fair, most of the clan members couldn't leave the compound. Amaya nodded wisely before smiling mischievously you saw Uncle Iroki she asked, and Kari returned the smile I made it, Nabuko is having fun nailing him with stones, Amaya raised an eyebrow seriously, so she's gotten better the last time I saw her, she was using him as target practice for her cards, she must have bored me with it she laughed, and Kari he's cursing up a real storm every time she hits. Them I think I will too if you two don't stop barking and let me sleep, the two girls heard a male voice growl looking to Amaya's side, and Kari saw Yuki looking at her seriously, what's wrong with you two, you can't let a boy take a nap in peace, Yari raised a defiant eyebrow, and what's wrong with you, can't you stop that habit of yours of undressing Yuki blinked before looking at himself and noticing. How Akari had very accurately pointed out that he had somehow lost his yukata summer that he had been leaving him in his underwear, it must be admitted that Amaya had long since become accustomed to the boy's unconscious habit of undressing. However, sometimes it got quite bad this time at a clan dinner. It doesn't matter. Anyway, Yari had to repress a sigh of tiredness as she watched Yuki go crazy for somehow misplacing her clothes while wearing them while lying down, sleeping sometimes she really felt sorry for Aunt Nana when she noticed something out of the ordinary Akari looked around before blink confusingly at Amaya tell me whereas Natsu Nabuko said he'd probably be around here looking for a fight with Yuki. Tried it confirmed Aya, but Yuki-kun wouldn't wake up for anything, so he left he'll probably pick a fight with Raiden and try to take the title of first dragon Akari C, he shrugged his shoulders at that, knowing how it would all end the four dragons, were the four strongest defensive shinobi of the Uzumaki clan, each in turn possessed a mastery of a particular element the dragons naturally they were. Ranked in terms of strength and Natsu despite all his flaws was ranked the second dragon, while Raiden was the first however that didn't mean he was stronger than all the members of the Uzumaki clan, the elder Kaisu could still hit him properly, and after challenging Kini once, Natsu had never dared to do it again. Damn. He even flinched every time someone brought it up. Of course, there was also Kimiko, who practically surpassed everyone in the clan. Except for Raiden, Elder Kaisuk, Uncle Iroki Yemi, the point is that being the second dragon was a great honor, but in no way a confirmation that he was stronger than everyone, and the gap between Raiden and Natsu was ridiculous. To say the least, they are going to kick ass again he moaned, and Kari that has stopped him ever Yuki spoke having returned with a modest Yukata now in place, you know he challenged Kimiko while you were gone again, he asked tiredly Amaya nodded with a smile she wiped the floor with him in 10 seconds, I swear I'm going to put a leash on that kid, Yari grumbled irritably like her and Natsu's parents. Unfortunately they passed away a long time ago the two had lived together most of their lives, and people generally expected the Kuchu specialist to keep up. Natsu Araya maybe it would be better if you did, Yuki said wryly, before noticing someone passing by the front door hey Sora, look who's back said woman from the Yamaki clan, Sora looked and smiled widely, when he noticed Akari running towards her, she hugged the older girl as hard as she could Akari you came back laughing nervously at the girl's sudden display of affection, barely able to believe. But this 14 year old girl was potentially so much more powerful than her being the fourth dragon of the clan. Yuzumaki yes yes he said lamely as he stroked the girl's head, you have been fine no, the girl ch nodded fervently, I have she replied proudly, I have repaired Nsuni four times, since you left the other three members of the clan sweat dropped at that unfortunately, no one could admit to being even remotely surprised then you might want to prepare for a fifth time, Yuki muttered as Akari looked comically about to cry at the news that Natsu was causing trouble, Sora blinked at Yuki and tilted her head in confusion HM what do you mean, and started only to be interrupted by a loud explosion, coming from the center of the complex anywhere else, that could have been cause for panic but. Considering how charged the air now all the members of the clan had deduced what had happened quite easily ah was all Sora said when she realized what had happened, Nsuni got into a fight with Raiden Sama no, Amaya laughed while Yuki shrugged her shoulders, you would think that I would have learned by now the lesson he grumbled, the dark haired teen, then shuddered be hate when Raiden goes off like. At all this electricity in the air makes me feel terrible for him, Ikari was leaning against the fence looking completely oppressed, as she knew Raiden would be on her case for letting Natsu run rampant like that, and then of course, Kimiko was staring at her with that hard look of hers already as a form of silent punishment, which unfortunately worked quite well, there wasn't a single member of the Uzumaki clan who could stare at Kimiko not even Elder Kaisuka Raiden even Mariko who specialized in offensive eye contact Jinjutsu did not dare to match the girl's gaze. 
Stronger you better go to Elder Kaisuk now or you could find yourself involved in this last fight, Amaya said to her best friend with a comforting smile, Yari looked again and nodded in gratitude yes you are right see Yuki Amaya said, as she said goodbye which she shook her hand and headed towards the entrance, she only stopped to give Sora a look of commiseration, could you tend to the idiots? Wounds for me Sora-chan she asked a younger girl and nodded tiredly to Yari and she replied fortunately for Akari, the rest of the trip to the main house did not take her to see more attic relatives. Although she did stop by the candy store to buy some sweets for later, however, arriving at the main house gave her a feeling of foreboding that she did not. She could completely get rid of Elder Kaisuk, despite not being the head of the clan, nor wanting him to be the leader of the refugees, and she was well aware that her little outing had broken almost every rule in the book regarding the clan security, although she could not question the legitimacy of Iroki's permission. It'd make her life very miserable for having deliberately manipulated events to obtain said permission. At the gate of the fence of the main house she was received by one of the last people who he had wanted to see Raiden himself apparently not bad, after his little fight with Napsu, the blonde-haired teen seemed bored in fact, although that expression quickly disappeared when he saw Iker and. Approach so you're back from your you little walk, he pointed nonchalantly with his pockets, make sure you keep that pet of yours on a leash. The little bastard challenged me in the middle of a training session with the brats, he said as he passed without even sparing him a second glance. Monstrously powerful clan member walked past her simply glad to be away from her presence, even when not in battle, Raiden was emitting a low output but definitely tactile field of electricity around her. Making the tips of his hair rise slightly, trembling at the uncomfortable sensation, anyway he gathered his courage and headed towards the perimeter of the main house, Cortez being careful to take off his shoes at the entrance when he went out to the porch and opened the door. Leading to the main hallway with a light step as the elder demanded. Isuk slowly walked down the hallway towards the room at the end that served as the elder's personal audience bar, study room, kneeling next to the sliding door. She was about to touch the wooden frame when she heard the old man call her from inside. Yari entered, swallowing nervously. She obeyed his order by opening the door and entering quickly before closing it. She turned on the spot and bowed respectfully while standing in seas before the old man of the Uzumaki clan. I'm back. My mission Kaisu Choro formally reported in the middle of a bow the old man cleared his throat at his proclamation and told him exactly what he thought about the legitimacy of his rather shapeless mission Yari swallowing. Silently in an attempt to protect herself from the nerves she nodded even while remaining bowed Shoro sama my trip to Kanoha turned out to be fruitful as I returned with the medicine you requested she stated simply while placing a bag containing the mentioned medicine in front of her furthermore, I have verified that as our intelligence suggested the stores there offer the best price for medicinal. Supplements much better than the prices offered in Kusaoki. The major gave another grunt while he continued with his brushstroke without stopping even once to concentrate better on it. That's all, he asked abruptly. His displeasure was evident in every word he spoke. Yari grimaced. I think I may have tripped over something important during my mission, Shorosama. Immurely, but before acting, I thought it would be better to let you know a wise decision for once, the old Sepagenario grumbled when he finally put down his brush and turned to look at her, the great leader of his cell. Yuzumaki Yuzumaki Kaisuke scowled at her with all the strength that her diminutive physique of a good four feet tall could muster in any other person. It would have seemed comical to see her sweat so profusely at such a small person, but the sheer force of Kaisuke's presence made him one quickly realize that this was a man who certainly should not be messed with. You saw what happened to Iroki, right? He questioned her, and Kari swallowed hard. Yes, he confirmed. Kaisuke kept his frown. Frowning before nodding well don't let it happen again, he said before the tension in the room eased considerably, and he sat cross-legged in front of her with a kind grandpa smile on his face, now tell me what you saw, that has you so nervous the girl said softly, and Kari slowly raised her head and had to hold back a loud sigh of relief for coming out so lightly. If it had been Natsu, he wouldn't have doubted for a minute that Kaisu could have punched him through his chest. Idiocy however getting serious she sat in Siza and frowned thoughtfully at the old man, before beginning chore began, only to be held by Kaisuke's rising hand, call me like you always do and Karen said with a smile I hate formalities, except when they are necessary, you already know. Stumbling over the words, Iari nodded and continued forward to Jai Chan, he obeyed as he said, first I need confirmation of something, he stated, and found the courage to continue forward when he saw that he asked him a question. He waved her away. Did Lady Kashina have any living family when she died at the hands of the Kiri? Kaisuke blinked at the question. He honestly hadn't expected it. In any case, he had been waiting for Kari to mention some strange fact or another since she had been so protected her whole life from him. 
Then when Raiden and Akemi returned from their first foray out of the compound, they expressed some confusion regarding the outside world which he had to correct family. Not that I remember he muttered while scratching his fabulous grey mustache, only the strange red tinge here and there gave some hint that he had once sported the famous red hair his clan was famous for, although it was a shame. Raiden hadn't inherited it, though I think he was still seeing that Namek boy when Yari died she froze. She had never heard of that aspect of Kashina Namek's story like in the Yondai Mei Hokage. She breathed. Kaisuke blinked, having muttered it without thinking. Still, she shrugged as it wasn't particularly important at the time. Indifference of boy a little nan for my taste, but there is no explanation about tastes, Yari stared at Kaisuke, without believing what he was hearing Laddie Kashina had been seeing Yonda Hokage heaven above, if they had ever had a child for the second time since he entered the room, and Kari froze having come to a conclusion she had only briefly thought about on her way back, that boy could perhaps. He quickly put forward her giant scroll, she ignored the curious questions of Kaisu while unrolling it, until the scroll paper revealed the matrix for a storage seal, raising her left hand on a partial ram seal, and her right on the seal array, Kai shouted a burst of smoke, after she waved away the Naruto's old orange jumpsuit, lay on the tatami floor of Kaisuke's personal study. The old man in question simply raised an eyebrow at the striking garment. Your tastes have changed since the last time I saw you in car mused. Is this what you guys? They call it fashion Yari blushed before shaking her head, it's not mine she protested, it's a boy I met in Kanoha, if possible Kaisuke's eyebrow rose even higher, you know I'm always happy to talk to you Yarian, but aren't you a little young to show your trophies he asked, torn between being amused and horrified, isn't that right? He snapped, remembering how stubbornly obtuse his family could be, and that unfortunately it was genetic, I rescued this child from being murdered right in front of his house, he said. He was carrying this crime against fashion, and I took it from him before coming here. Kaisuke, he didn't need to say a word, the expression on his face showed what he thought of that rather hasty explanation for the last time I didn't sleep with anyone, he almost screamed, causing something to go out. I believe you, Kaisuke said in a tone that clearly told him that he didn't believe in such a thing, he had really earned such a thing. Reputation to deserve this treatment anyway, he growled all the tension he had had upon arriving at the house, completely disappeared however it was replaced by a growing frustration he had a suspicion about the child's ancestry, I think he is in Yuzumaki he lost all viability immediately, he faded from Kaisuke's face as he processed that statement arriving again he asked carefully not entirely sure. If he had heard correctly at 80 years old he wouldn't have been surprised if his hearing had gone to hell, I think it's one of us, Akari pressed before hitting the monkey with one hand. I bring this here to confirm. We have an end follow-up jutsu to determine the identity, right? This monstrosity should be able to tell us yours. Aiki. This is no laughing matter, Kaisuke warned, frowning once. Plus all members of the Uzumaki clan were accounted for before the split, as far as we know the four cells are the only Uzumaki left, and if Lady Kashina had a son a son, she would keep a secret for some reason she pressed Jan if he is a relative, we should not try to claim him to help him demand that he was about to be killed Jay chan by some criminals, who claimed that no one would miss him we cannot. Allow a member of the clan to fall like that from the expression on Kaisuke's face Akari could see, it had struck a chord in the older man's heart. Kaisuke had lived so long that he had witnessed the second and third shinobi wars in the first of which his village and country were destroyed from the start. Losing many members of the clan in the process he had also seen his homeland, his country and his family being torn apart by jealous nations since then, he had sworn to protect the clan, no matter what happened, and the thought of leaving a member of the clan even one abandoned potential, was frighteningly antagonistic to his vow yes, if the boy is Yuzumaki, we will enter and protect him he decreed. Causing a look of joy from Ikari however he was quick to close that with a frown, but Ikarin keep in mind, if he is Kashina's son, that means it will be our duty to elevate him to clan leader and move our clan as a whole to Konoha. Do you understand that? Yari asked seriously. Yes, Jai Chan, staring at her for a moment. Kaisuke sighed and nodded. Head very good leave the clothes here I will have someone look at them if it is one of us I will announce it later until then, not a word of this to anyone is clear Crystal Jan asked seriously confirmed well dismissed Kaisuke waited until she left before focusing his attention on the orange monkey, a little torn by this revelation, although he had never craved the leadership position of his clan. Aisu could only feel apprehensive at the idea of handing control over to a young man, possibly younger than Akari however, as clan elder it was his duty to do so, the dilemma raged in his mind for a good 15 minutes before he sighed and scratched his bald pot a, did you understand all that Eamon asked calmly a ripple in the air behind him, soon gave way to Akeni appeared I did sure Osama confirmed. Your thoughts with a smile Akemi asked, although perhaps he did not participate in as many missions as the rest of the clan, he was one of Kaisuke's most trusted agents, he was only granted those missions considered too difficult for Raiden or Kamiko normally, when Oroki was not present until now. 
he had succeeded in all of them, and Carrion has good intentions, but maybe he is reading too much into this, the experienced Kanoichi on the other hand said. She seems pretty safe and she gave you some evidence. Honestly, I don't think it would hurt to check this clue. I agree. The octogenarian shinobi nodded sharply. Call Maki and tell them to put an identification seal on the clothes. Make sure they don't talk about the results either. I want them to. The littlest people know until I announce the results hello with the sound of a gust of wind Emi left he took off his jumpsuit, leaving Kaisuk alone with his thoughts back in Kanohe Naruto was discovering something amazing about his new clothes, they made him invisible well okay, maybe it wasn't that simple the clothes were just clothes and they certainly weren't imbued with the power of invisibility, rather it seemed like the townspeople were so used to his orange jumpsuit that most he seemed to overlook him as he walked the streets in his grey shirt and black pants hell, now that he was missing his overalls, he didn't look that bulky, either some stores didn't even realize who he was, until it was too late no needless to say, Naruto discovered how much he was being overcharged when he managed to walk out of a store with his arms full of much needed supplies for three times less than the cost he normally paid. Well he still felt some ill will toward his mysterious benefactor for taking his beloved monkey Naruto couldn't deny that his daily life had improved marginally, at least he wasn't caught out as often, and he realized he could get away with a lot more pranks, now that hiding was no longer a thing. Such an arduous task try to hide wearing an orange jumpsuit, he had even praised me about her new appearance, making the preteen blush with embarrassment as she gushed about her new appearance however, when he cautiously asked her if he should also get rid of the glasses she did he refused, having seen how much he appreciated them, however, she recommended that he put them around his neck. When he did, she did everything she could not to hug him. Right there, telling him. On the other hand, he looked very cute with his hair down, Tucci had to intervene at that moment so that the poor boy's chastity would not be threatened, however the Raymond chef told him that he approved of his wardrobe change. Feeling a little safer in his image now that his two precious people had positively recognized him, Naruto had practically entered the academy proud of how he looked for the first time, however somewhat amusingly Aruka apparently he had trouble find him among the students since he lost that precious orange beacon that always told him where Naruto was. Although the look earned him some brief and appreciative glances from some girls, his school life did not change much to his disappointment. The girls still fawn over Sasuke. The boys oh they ignored him, were indifferent towards him or actively ostracized him, and only Ruka and Mizuki seemed remotely concerned about his education. Although to be fair Naruto had long since given up on that since the other teachers had been pretty determined to fail, however recently he had started to notice something strange about a week and a half, after waking up in the fancy hotel room, he started seeing strange people staring at him, now well and normally this meant nothing to him, as people always stared at him for one reason or another this. Time however there was no orange monkey to blame, nor were the stairs hostile at least Naruto felt watched in a word, like the way his classmate sometimes painted a stuffed frog or an anatomical model that Aruka sometimes brought to anatomy class. At first he felt like he was just seeing things. But as the days went by he couldn't help but notice that there was always someone staring at him, whether it was a cute teenage girl sipping some tea at the dango shop, or a tough looking young man with nose piercings at the weapon store, or even a complete stranger staring at him, every time he thought Naruto wasn't looking, why leading at Ichiraku, no matter where he went, he felt watched and. Frankly that was making every instinctive alarm in his body go crazy. The Kanoha ninja however never seemed to act on the strangers for some reason they just went unnoticed by most of them. People had once bumped into a stranger like that on purpose, just to try to get a reaction out of them, but the big man simply growled at him and muttered something about real men watching his steps, even as he inkle his straw hat pushed forward to hide his face, he had even tried to play a prank on one of the strangers watching him, only for it to mysteriously backfire and cover him and his new clothes with a rather extravagant shine to be honest Naruto he was starting to freak out again, the worst part of the situation was the simple fact that they weren't acting against him, if they were like the thugs who almost beat him to death, he could deal with that kind of situation he was pretty good at dodging and evading his pursuers when he wasn't joking or joking, yet standing still and waiting knowing they were watching him wasn't even remotely within his tried and tested abilities, nor could he exactly face them he had tried once in a vain attempt to make people, when he noticed the weirdos that were stalking him, he waited until he was sure that one of them was following him, and then he grandly emerged with his arm outstretched and his index finger pointing accusingly at me. To find no one standing behind him other than a squeak coming from a nearby store, he couldn't even tell that anything was out of the ordinary however the townspeople who saw his extravagant gesture just stared at him with confusion. Disgust or a combination of both of them had unfortunately once tried to reason with the Ak about the strangers, but the old man's skeptical look had told him that his complaint wouldn't be taken too seriously. 
Naruto didn't blame the man considering he had no proof of have stalkers aside from a certain timid Hugo Eris, but he didn't know anything about that, however he didn't know that the Sandame Hokage Suratobi and Ruin actually took the complaint seriously, he could hardly risk not doing anything that could mean endangering life of Minato and Kashina's only son and the living Jinchiriki of. The Kaiban Kitsune had to be thoroughly investigated unfortunately, despite the old man's attempts and his deployment of U-forces to search the village for suspicious characters, the investigation proved fruitless, even the visitor log at the main gates showed no evidence of suspicious characters, and the censor division had not notified him of illegal entries into Kanoha through the walls that were within the many barriers erected to control illegal traffic. He had even had Ayakyanko and investigate any possible security breach, but so far nothing had come up, which meant Naruto was making up stories to attract attention, or that someone was capable of defeating even his best forces and infiltrating the village without his knowledge. Not even observation with his crystal ball had managed to find any viable suspect unfortunately, although his advisors and many girls would not stop accusing Naruto like to lie to get attention, and Ruin believed otherwise. The boy was a troublemaker, there was no denying that, but he wasn't a liar. In fact, Yuzin suspected that there were few things the boy hated more than liars. Too many close calls that almost ended with his death at the hands of two-faced civilians had taken care of that. The problem with the natural conclusion then was that it meant that his village had been infiltrated under his watch, and no one could find any trace of these infiltrators by what Iru knew they had come to kidnap the Jinchiriki and perhaps even plant explosives in a coordinated Terrorist attack meant to weaken Kanoha however, as the Sandame debated these possibilities, Naruto felt even more panicked as he realized that nothing was being done about these observers of his, no matter where he went he could feel their gaze on him, and it was driving him crazy. Even in the academy that was incredibly close to the Kahe mansion. They even consider spying he felt watched once he looked out a window seemingly at random and saw two figures standing under the tree with the Kumpio, and he could feel their piercing gaze directed directly at him what the hell is going on without however, while well, Naruto and Sandane were on the verge of panic attacks. The members of the Shinobi clan and the Uzumaki clan were hard at work gathering information about the boy who they had been informed could be the next head of the clan. Not only a ruling figure, but a head of genuine clan descendant of the same clan chief, who had been at Senju Shama's side the Shodayak, and husband of Lady Mito herself lifting the travel ban on minors, Kaisuke sent a full platoon of rising stars of the Uzumaki clan to infiltrate Kanoha and investigate the young man led by Raiden, whom Kaisuke trusted to keep his mind calm despite his aggressive tendencies. The team broke through Kanahagakur's sensory barriers as if it were a simple child's game. On the other hand, part with Maki Iji between them really had been as the two skilled Fin Hutsu specialists had opened a hole in record time, while teaming up with the barriers helped a lot that many of the Kanoha's wards shared the same basic configuration as those that had been used on. Izushi Agakur. Having the same basic blueprints meant that reverse engineering had been fairly simple. After that, it was about hiding in plain sight, something the clan had excelled at. The long time thanks to years of running from very powerful enemies Daisu takes and the third dragon Yuki Amaya Nabuko and Mariko put on civilian clothes and stayed in well-shaded areas, staying as discreet as possible, meanwhile Raiden and Akemi investigated the young man's residence address, courtesy of Ikari Aimaki for her part, simply kept the team's chakra signatures at a low level with their sealing technique so any attentive eye could see they were just another group of travelers, what rubbish Raiden commented dispassionately, as he glanced around the apartment that comprised the boys' living quarters, he absentmindedly kicked an empty container of instant ramen that was on the floor, we're sure this kid is real laggy and Maki seemed to think so. He pointed at Kimi as he carefully rummaged through the kid's drawers with his gloves fastened tightly to avoid leaving forensic evidence, and if Kaisu Choro believed them I do too, that guy is always too fast to trust Raiden commented while checking the boy's refrigerator taking a carton of milk, he sniffed it before scoffing with long expired disgust at the smell of things he added as he returned the box to its place seriously, how come this child is not dead from food poisoning I imagine, but when you live on the streets long enough you adapt to the difficult conditions responded to Kimi from the child's bedroom, it doesn't seem like he has any memories of family or relatives, it's not surprising considering where he lives Raiden pointed out. No self-respecting parent would let their children live in this hole if they had a say, much less eat barely edible poison, he added, looking at the pile of dirty dishes in the room. Sinkai can't say much either about his hygiene I think Akari-chan is right said Akemi, as he walked out into the small living room this boy is an orphan from the looks of it and survives completely alone, he concluded there is not even a hint of filial effects in this place, and no, it seems like no one has picked up a brush to tidy up Raid and clucked his tongue, I'd be mad at the fact that this guy could be our boss, but this is just depressing he commented, even the furniture here is made a makes one wonder what kind of hell did he have to live through. 
Hamaka Mita plowed an agreement before looking at the only window the apartment had, the one in the boy's room. Hey Jikin, something to report, she asked outside the window, standing on the ledge, the red-haired Antacidern member of the Uzumaki clan grunted affirmatively, Daisuke says the boy is back briefly reported we have five minutes to evacuate the facility, Raiden clicked his tongue again tch, what is that big idiot doing is he supposed to keep up, I pushed the brat away for another 15 minutes Daisuke is doing what he can Raiden Khan scolded Kimia at his colleague before looking around anyway, I don't think we'll be gathering much more information right now we better get going now Raiden just growled in disgust. Agreed and with the sound of a breeze blowing the two left, it's worse than we thought Nabuko informed the group as they gathered in what seemed to be a really wild forest, until now their traps had managed to kill one dozen deadly snakes, five huge slugs, and what appeared to be a gigantic earthworm, suffice to say that even Maki Yuji were surprised that their traps received such training that child. Not only is he orphaned but he is being deliberately rejected Nabuko continued gravely, I can think on at least 15 different occasions where he was turned away at some store or stand for the silliest of reasons I can attest to that report, interjected Moriko doesn't seem particularly welcome, in nowhere he goes except two places the Hokage mansion and this small spill stall near the main street. Ichiraku's raiment provided by Daisuke is not bad, although his meals are not balanced enough to keep a real man healthy speak for yourself, he growled, to Kessie, it's something delicious. Just as Daisuke was about to respond, Raiden released a spark of electricity between his index and middle finger as enough warning. He scolded them with a look he didn't admit. Protests what else seems like living off a very poor diet consisting mainly of cheap food, responded to Kimi providing the team with the information she and Raiden had acquired in the apartment, if this is all she has been eating for the last few years, then it wouldn't surprise me suffering from some serious growth impediments, as well as a damaged metabolism is pretty low, that's for sure Yuki. Noticed from his position high up on a tree branch he inexplicably seemed to like him. His pants were missing although he seemed completely unaware of this fact he is the shortest in his class Yuki where are your pants Nabuko asked. Branched in sweat mother which was also not pleasant at all, Amaya said with a pout as she remembered her observations throughout the week ignoring Yuki's clothes disappearing act and his subsequent freak out most of the boys seem content to ignore or bully him he related and the girls are even worse, most just belittle him at every turn opportunity well, except one Yuki interrupted after having recovered his discarded pants, but of course I'm not sure what to do with her she's probably hiding from him, Amaya said with a disdainful gesture you saw her she couldn't say two words while she was close to him, and every every time he looked at her she would blush and run away, she could be in love her love life aside, Raiden interrupted once again feeling irritable about all the tangential observations that were being made what conclusion can we draw about whether the boy is Yuzumaki or not? There was a moment of silence among the group as they pondered that question. They all knew how much depended on this since Kaisuke had told them in very clear terms that the results they produced would directly impact his decision to approach Kanoha or not, I can really only speak about what Jiken and I found, but our seals were clear. He has Itsumi blood, Maki ventured with a raised hand and a nervous radiant smile. He always intimidated her to no end, and he is not a distant blood relative. He is a genuine first-degree descendant of a member of the Uzumaki clan, and he agreed with her assessment. Looking at Raiden for any sign of approval or denial he unfortunately got neither. Do things since the team leader's expression was blank it's hard Nabuko admitted not many people can handle so much deliberate ostracism without breaking out, but this kid acts like he doesn't have a care in the world he added, he craves attention sure, but at least he's constructive about it, I agree, Moriko intervened while lifting his glasses with his index finger. Furthermore, I have the feeling that he is important to someone important, although not enough for his benefactor to be open to his support. He pointed out, explain, Raiden ordered irritably. He has been living on cheap food and lives in his own apartment. No, Mariko asked for confirmation from Akeni, who nodded. Then where does he get the money to buy them? He asked. Rhetorically he doesn't have a job no one turns to look at him on the street, except that guy at the Raymond stand and his daughter so where does he get his funds from did it occur to the others that no one had tried to investigate that issue, good point Raiden admitted causing a blush on the younger girl, so someone is paying the bills for that brat, he's tough, he added. Nodding in recognition to Nabuko, and he's a survivor capable of eating almost poisonous foods, unfortunately, apart from Iji Maki's Hatsu end, that doesn't tell us says it to see if it's one of us or not, a Kyle language muttered lightly tapping him on the shoulder which he dutifully ignored, except for her name Takesi pointed out as she crossed her arms, looking at her clan members gravely wherever I go, the same thing is said about the boy, they call him the Yuzumaki brat, anyone can take a surname as their own, especially an orphan, Raiden pointed out. Since my and I didn't find traces of family belongings in his house. 
Even if he were an orphan, there should be something that it will show where he came from, especially if he is able to pay the rent for an apartment either way. It is a pretty good clue no to Kessie he answered. We have a name Yuzumaki Naruto. We have Maki and fanboy techniques that confirm that identity he added, causing a frown from. Aigimi I say we go back to the old man and tell him what we have, we're not obligated to get much more, Raiden watched as the rest of the team exchanged glances and slowly nodded at the suggestion before do it himself okay, confirmed Maki hiding from the censor barriers we leave in 10 Hello Chapter 3 Arc of the Lost Clan, the forbidden scroll I see Kaisuke reflected while listening to the team. Report this is really scary, I don't see why Natsu complained sitting between the clan members a little upset at being left behind, and for good reason considering he had the finesse of a jackhammer in a glass shop, he's one of us right I grabbed him bashing in a moment Natsu was in the ground, while Kaisuke removed his hand from having cut him on the head. Silence. He reprimanded him as he reflected on things. The evidence is still circumstantial, but I agree that perhaps it deserves a more direct approach. He considered with respect. Shozama spoke one of the adult members of the clan, perhaps it would not simply be more prudent to proceed, as Natsu suggested we do not know how Kanoha will receive us after all this time, nor does it seem that they respect us more our name, judging by the treatment given to the child, was a valid concern, and according to what Kaisu considered to the members of the gathering. He had many supporters. Whatever the child's paternal circumstances, there was really no reason to disrespect a clan that for so many years had supported Kanoha through thick and thin, which directly led to his own destruction, I agree with the moron Takesi growled, ignoring Natsu's indignant cry, the brat has been dealt with practically like an animal, apart from his mysterious sugar dad that Raymond. Chef and his daughter and maybe his teacher, I really can't name anyone else who supports him even among his age group Takesi's opinion started a wave of discussion in the room crowded, while all the members of the clan from the age of 14 onwards discussed the team's findings after having been informed by Kaisuke. The old man for his part observed in silence how small discussion groups were formed with some opinions that they threatened to get quite heated on his part. Kaisuke had a theory to perhaps explain the boy's treatment, although he hardly justified it by comparing what he knew about Kashina's trip to Kanoha with the fact that this lost clan member was probably his son. In reality there was only one logical explanation enough, he declared, raising a hand. Almost immediately the room fell silent. I understand your concerns, but I can know why he has been treated so badly, he announced, perhaps not many of you. You know but before Lady Mido married Yoda and Hokage, she was dragged into a fight between the original founders of Konoha Aram Sama, Yuchi Madara informed them, and was very happy to see the various frowns of disgust at the name of Ichiha, the Yuzumaki had long had a history of animosity against that particular clan, and did not much like the Sharingan's infamous ability to copy techniques for. The clan of Finhatsu specialists, nothing was more abhorrent than plagiarism, everything the world knows the story of the Valley of the End, Jiji Natsu groaned, go to the good part, pounding another blow to the head, calm the boy making the room sweat, as they watched the irritated old man retract his hand once more what those of you who don't have reached the third grade in Finhatsu what they don't. No is that the Shadai not only defeated the Kayubi when Madara summoned it, but also sealed it using our techniques he continued, as if he had not only inflicted physical damage on a member of the clan, a small smile on Lady Myth dropping that bomb, had the desired effect, as almost everyone in the room who had not chosen to become experts in e-fine techniques, seemed stunned. Although the Shoda's access to Yuzumaki's sealing techniques was not that surprising considering that was the lover of myth, the fact that his honored ancestor had been a Jinchuriki yes, it was such an act for obvious reasons, would have been kept buried however, for a clan of specialists, the majority were punishing themselves for having somehow overlooked such application of their techniques to explain the sudden disappearance of the nine-tailed fox, and that's not all another member of our clan was chosen to succeed Lady Mytho, once her life came to an end he added, enjoying the growing looks of shock among her clan members, it wasn't every day she could get so angry with them, Lady Kashina Akemi breathed with her eyes wide and her hands covering her open mouth, Kaisu looked at her for a moment somewhat grateful that she followed the lead game even though he already knew it, Kaisuk nodded, causing another wave of whispers to break out raising a hand to silence the crowd he continued due to his special chakra even among ours and his ability to create chakra chains, his father our clan head, decided seal the kbai in Kashina, once lead Mido's life was nearing its end, she hit her pipe on the taintan and removed it from the blockage before taking another puff we were successful, and she left Izushi Agakur to be the second Jinchuriki of the Kanoha Kayubi for a lot, I like the history lesson, Grandpa, Raiden complained, since he knew all this, what does that have to do with everything? A mark developed on Kaisuke's forehead at the rude interruption. 
However, unlike Natsu, he did not raise his hand against his grandson and actually not out of favoritism, but simply because Raiden wouldn't shut up even if he did it was already getting to that he complained honestly I'm old I like to take my time with things massive sweat quotas, coughing lightly, Kaisuke looked at both sides warily before continuing anyway, where was she oh sure Kashina became the Second Jinchu she died they screwed us, he summarized causing more beads of sweat, however he started to smile mischievously, but here is a question I have for all of you if she died, and we know that that's where the Kai went silence Kaisuke enjoyed the way they looked at him honestly, he hadn't thought about the scariest thing about Biju's disappearance 13 years ago, I admit it I hadn't thought about it until now like most of you I guess that I assumed that perhaps Kashina had sealed the Kiru inside her when she died taking it with her Kaisuke admitted however the question arises, no Biju cannot be killed, we seal masters know this, he saw that the appropriate section of his members clan nodded at that, even if he had let's call him dead, he would have regenerated at some point and the only way to keep beasts of that level out of trouble for longer is to seal them, but not all objects can contain a bu, especially not the Kyubi so naturally we must conclude that it was sealed in someone else he paused again to enjoy another puff of his pipe, then who was it he asked calmly again silence reigned in the room, until Lakari shakily stood up looking stunned that boy is the Kyubi's Jinchuriki. That makes sense no, Kaisuke said with a knowing smile, even when the room exploded in screams of surprise and denials we know that the Yondai Mei was the one who defeated the Kyubi Kanoha, has been bragging about it for years indicate some complaints, according to over the years they had encountered many Kanoha ninjas, who were surrounded by the Yondai Mei's victory over the fearsome Kyubi and now know that just like Hasurama-sama and Mytho-sama had access to our seals through Kashina, it is logical that he used them to seal the Kyubi in a child, the best possible host for such a beast, this is because Kanoha will never let him leave the village, it is too important a strategic asset to be let go, demonstrating why he was the one in charge of Itsumi's exiles. Isuke watched as his logic took them all to his side. That said, Kanoha may not have honored our sacrifice, but we honor our loyalty to the family. Isuke reminded them, making more than a few straighten their backs and the Senju were family that boy in charge of the charge of League Kashina is family, we are the Uzumaki clan of Yudas Gakir, which means that we support each other, or if he did not insist we all fall, as one listened to his audience express the traditional response call, that served as the motto of the clan Kaisuke smiled with satisfaction with the pipe in his mouth and nodded while crossing his arms over his tiny chest see, now let's go look for a lost clan member, Naruto was having a bad day no, that word was not enough to describe the feelings I had for today in fact, if I had to describe how I felt I would have said a mixture of anger helplessness sadness and resignation, what happened to cause such change in the boys? Ooh, the graduation exam for the third time third time he had failed the damn exam, and always in the same part that Bunin Naruto couldn't understand why, but he had never been able to produce a decent buns in his life, even when he trained at home or in the training camps, no matter what he did, he had never achieved it, and a large part of him felt that it was patently unfair that one of the qualifications required for graduation was the ability to achieve it afterwards. He had never needed it before to escape his pursuers, so why was it so important for him to learn it? Unfortunately, he knew that Aruka would never let him pass without knowing it, no matter how much he protested, sighing dejectedly, he watched as the parents came to pick up their children and congratulated them. To those who had passed away, everyone except him, even Choji and Shikamaru's parents had come and gushed about their children. Kiba's mother had given him a small loving pat on the head before giving him a kiss. This of congratulation he grimaced slightly as he watched some look at him and begin to murmur knowing full well that once again he was being belittled some evil ones even spoke out loud about how fantastic it was that he had failed Naruto felt a pang of something dark arise in him when he heard them ridicule, but he crushed it mercilessly, he would not give them the pleasure of watching him. Collapse no matter how tempting the idea of doing so was however he was about to leave when he saw Mizuki's co-professor Ruka approaching him with a smile and a wave Naruto liked Miyuki unlike Aruka, he seemed happy to lend a hand, it sucks about your exam, Naruto said the kind teacher with a compassionate smile, you know I tried to convince Aruka to give you another chance, but you know how it is Naruto. Look down sadly yes man he's so uptight, why can't he give me another chance he demanded a little angry but also sad, because the man who regularly treated him to Raymond couldn't even understand what he was doing. Asking for the impossible, I think he's hard on you because I see a little bit of himself in you, you know, Miyuki comforted the boy, making Naruto look up in surprise, after all. He wasn't exactly the model teacher he is now when he was your age. Damn, I think. I would have given you a run for your money no way Naruto breathed with growing amazement, Haruka the straight a demon like him inconceivable right Mitsuki confirmed with a smile, you know he's an orphan too, when he was younger pranks were the way the others were paying attention to him, so don't be too hard on him. 
Okay he's probably trying to put you on the right path Naruto looked down, absorbing this new facet of his serious teacher, still he muttered depressed, it would have been fantastic, if he had able to graduate Mizuki stayed silent and looked at Naruto, you know if you really want to impress him, maybe he knows a way Yerim cursed as he jumped from roof to roof, having returned to Konoha only to finding. Bad news waiting for her apparently the young man she had saved from being killed was being accused of stealing a rather important relic from the village, and from what she could hear there were quite a few who expressed their desire to kill him naturally this was unacceptable to her both personally and as a result of Kaisuke's orders. No matter how much the elder Yuzumaki wanted to move forward to claim the child, he first needed to consult with the other elders of the cell about a move that could lead to for some time despite this, knowing that the boy was having a hard time in Kanoha, he had ordered an outpost team to be assembled to keep an eye on the potentially missing relative while the necessary red tape was eliminated. Yari was one of those Raiden members, however he was not. And that had caused some problems the first dragon had been recruited to watch over Kaisuke, along with Kimiko in case it ever leaked that the four remaining elders of the Uzumaki clan were meeting at the same place, shuddered to think what the ninjas of Kumo Kirio Ia would do to capture the elders if that ever happened unfortunately with. Kimiko and Raiden absent on other matters, and Akemi forced to stay behind to handle the clan's affairs, while Laroki was also absent that it left very little in terms of proper field leadership. Aigi had been a potential option, but everyone dismissed him just as quickly after realizing the teenager was a seal master. Expert but not exactly a field leader Natsu was also right, despite his status as second dragon, if he was ever given a leadership position in something his short temper would most likely cause his cover to be blown, Takesi was also excluded from consideration for the same reason in the end by elimination process, Ikari had been assigned the role of field leader, while the remaining field worthy. Uzumaki clan members lined up behind her just as things were like she had chosen Amaya Yuki Takesi Saranatsu and Maki, as backup feeling that having the three remaining dragons on her team would improve the otherwise green team something feels off in the situation, Yuki observed as she landed skillfully next to Akari while she was taking note of his orientation. Our observations did not suggest that the boy had a thieving streak. Amaya landed from behind the two and nodded. It's too out of place. She confirmed. It doesn't matter. Akari said. As the rest of the team landed on the roof, whatever our conclusions about this, the people of this town seem to distrust him enough to believe him capable of committing high treason, we must first get to him before they kill him out of spite, he said firmly. You don't think they would really kill a child, right? Sara asked with wide eyes. You disgusted your tongue with irritation. If he is a jinchuriki like the old man thinks. Then I wouldn't let it go. He said something annoying. Isolated or not. The Yuzumaki had seen and heard of numerous cases where Jin Shriki had been mistreated, Maki spoke, and Kari choosing not to answer Sora's question, even though she was thinking along the same lines as Takeshi, although she didn't need to say anything else since the master of the seals got ahead of her by kneeling on the roof and slamming his hand against the concrete. I'm already on it, the redeed said with a somber look as she raised her free hand in a half seal. Ram finally intoned causing a spiral of characters. Spreading out from beneath his Saseki palm, the spiral characters before the seal master's eyes merged into a circle which then began to contain glowing dots within its circumference, so it seemed there were quite a few, but only one glowed green. Fortunately, he remembered to bring a sample of his lost relative's ad when they tested the monkey. It is one kilometer northeast in that direction, he concluded, pointing towards what seemed to be the eastern entrance, perhaps. There are three dozen other contacts heading that way, and two of them are approaching the boy. Yari clicked his tongue in irritation. We will never get there before those two. But at least we can stop the others. He judged. Looking at his group who was ready to receive orders, no. There is nothing to do Amaya Yuki you two take half of the incoming ninja to Keinatsu you two take the other half just wait, we don't need the trouble that a couple of body bags will bring us, he told his relatives firmly knowing that they were prone to getting carried away in a fight he then turned to the two remaining girls Maki Sara on me. Let's go save that Sora prepare to heal him if necessary hello the group acknowledged their orders and split up relieved that there had been no no challenge to his authority, although he assumed the urgency of the situation had something to do with it, he led his group towards the east gate, knowing that they would really have to fight if they wanted to get it to the boy as soon as possible. Unfortunately although she had great faith in her kin's ability to contain the angry ninja, she could not risk overlooking the possibility of his failure, Maki spoke as they landed near the gate, taking a brief second to look over the imposing wooden cell doors. This door ordered take question Maki surprised Natsu, and the others are strong, but we can't ignore the possibility that some can overcome them, explained Akari no Elo, don't let a single person pass Maki nodded firmly, understood he agreed before flipping through a rather impressive amount of hand seals, we want to be on the other side, once the seal is up, he noted as he continued flipping. 
Per the hand seals without further ado, the trio jumped past the doors with Akari looking back just right in time for Maki to turn mid-landing and hit the ground with both hands, Finn shouted, causing hundreds if not thousands of ink black characters to suddenly sprout from the ground. Emerging from beneath her palms in a massive, swirling form, Juju Rasamon Finn roared as she raised her hands, pointed her palms upward and clawed fingers toward the open door and then clasped her hands in front of her in a clap. As if by magic the doors creaked as they were forced to close with a speed they were not used to, slamming shut before their eyes however this was not the end of Mai's technique, as the two large spirals made of characters in front of her shot a single line of black ink characters at the doors, then ran across her frame until they formed a large X shape Maki was breathing heavily as she finished. The technique which was announced when the cross shape it glowed green. That should keep them at bay for a while, he said, swallowing loudly. Though they can still get past the walls, I can't do anything about it. No Sayak. Kun pointed out, landing heavily on his butt and barely standing to be able to stand. Honestly, if she had sealed with her partner she wouldn't have been so exhausted, however, performing such a high-level sealing by herself was incredibly exhausting, it will do, Ikari said seriously, noticing her cousin's emaciated condition, get out of sight and rest, Maki ordered Sora and I will finish the task. Mission nodding tiredly unable to muster enough strength or willpower to respond, Maki slowly complied with his orders crawling towards the nearby foliage, certain that no one would really find her given their quite low chakra levels, and Kai meanwhile he looked at Sora we are already late, he said to the younger girl, we will have to improve a little you can handle, that the 14 year old girl nodded. Firmly I will be fine Yarin Chan she swore nodding in satisfaction, and Kari put the pace in the last leg of the chase, jumping towards the farthest tree he could reach, almost vaporizing the branch he landed on with the amount of chakra he had put into his feet, to the credit of the fourth dragon he landed on a branch just in front of Akari's and didn't seem too affected by the fast pace he was. Following Akari smiled maybe they could make it on time after all, remember when Naruto said he had a bad day he took it back today, he sucked Miyuki that backstabbing, backstabbing idiot had played with him, he not only played with him but used him according to instructions, he had taken the forbidden scroll from the Hokage mansion. Even going as far as to use his patented warak no jutsu against the old man himself, although that had been fun. To say the least he was surprised at how easy it was to get the scroll, considering it was supposed to be a priceless relic, why there weren't more security measures at that time, Naruto had ignored those concerns, or rather had completely overlooked them thinking that this was enough. Proof that this was a legitimate remedial test for those who had failed the graduation exam. He took the large scroll and ran away. To be honest, he felt like he had left. Unharmed but apparently someone had warned the village alone, now Naruto realized that it had been Miyuki's plan from the beginning, according to the instructions he had brought the large size scroll seriously, someone was overcompensating ninja and started reading it, only to find a couple of very boring seals, some techniques that sounded silly, and then the Kahe Bunin had hit the jackpot when he saw. The name of his most vile and disowned enemy Bunzin Naruto felt his stubborn competitive streak activate with all his strength as he vowed to master this technique with his fist shaking in the air and he would show it all to everyone, no technique could surpass him of course, Naruto was so obsessed with convincing his eternal enemy that he had overlooked the fact that in fact he didn't. He was attempting a bunin, but a kaj bunin, so when he celebrated having mastered the technique after surprisingly small attempts, he thought he had mastered the bunin academy however it wasn't long before he realized how played he was. It had been Naruka the always reliable and goody two shoes had arrived first surprising Naruto smiling like the idiot he was he rubbed the back of his neck and asked Naruka if he had passed the makeup test, only for the teacher to look at him like he was mentally unstable, it was only after mentioning Mizuki that Naruka finally put the pieces together and just as Naruka was about to expose how Mizuki was a traitor said traitor Marvel arrived immobilizing Aruka in a nearby shed with kunai, and he offered to tell Naruto why everyone hated him, and well between an Aruka sermon or juicy secret about why his life was hell, Naruto's choice was a no-brainer of course, he never expected to hear that he was the Kaiba no Kitsune which was really strange, since he had never felt like a fox, nor did he. Particularly like raw meat the foxes even ate Raymond in fact how is it possible that a demon of that size became so small, he shouldn't have been much more powerful from the beginning furthermore, if he was a gigantic walking disaster of nature, dedicated to the destruction of all living beings, it was really wise for them to oppose him. Naruto did not express all these concerns, but it seemed like extremely vague reasoning. Anyway, Mizuki had entered and given his speech. Quite cliche in Naruto's opinion about how everyone hated him even Aruka and how he would never be loved okay, maybe it was a cliche, but it still hurt to hear it however in Aruka's defense, the man was busy protecting the forbidden scroll or so thought Naruto from Yuki Naruto runs his master shouted urgently, just as Miyuki made his move and threw the huge smoke shuriken he had been carrying with. 
predictable results as Naruto was still pinned in place Hiroka was forced to knock Naruto to the ground, only for the oversized shuriken to stab him in the back. Ah, Hiroka grunted in pain as he felt the pointed instrument of pain lodge near his spine. Naruto, run, please, he begged the boy. Under him I'm so sorry I'm so sorry for everything he apologized with tears in his eyes, I too lost my parents because of the Kiri I too grew up with no one you must have felt a lot of pain, so I wanted to be there for you like no one else was there for me Naruto was moved, he really was he had never heard anyone say something like that before not even looked at him with eyes that reflected nothing. But affection and honesty yet all this was too much for the boy and he quickly ran away with him. Scroll needing some time alone to process things Jamazuki surrounded himself as he watched his prey flee, you see Iruka continued with a smile that brat will never forgive anyone, he's the Kayubi I think I'll do the village a favor and kill him now, since you won't be a problem anymore Iruka watched. Helplessly as Mizuki jumped away unable to follow her slamming his fist on the ground, angrily he cursed himself for his weakness before slowly collapsing, as his injuries began to take their toll if he smoked shuriken had landed a few millimeters away, it would have been fine, but as things stood, he would probably pass out from blood loss within minutes without medical assistance, in fact his vision was becoming blurry which caused Aruka's thoughts to blur. Focus on he never thought he would end his life this way, hey Sora we were hurt down here, he heard a girl's voice scream weakly at the edge of his consciousness, heal him, well I'm going after the boy and Jiruka tried to speak, but he felt quite weak from his injuries, he wanted to protest, tell his rescuers that Naruto was not the culprit. But words failed him when the darkness began to claim him. Meanwhile, Sora looked at his patient with concern, while his hands glowed green with the healing chakra. He worked feverishly to repair the many wounds Aaya you have been seriously hurt, Nai-chan muttered as he worked and Jiruka grunted painfully, as he was forcefully prevented from fainting from the pain calm down everything goes to be okay, Nor-chan comforted him as the wound on his back slowly began to seal don't move, and I'll be done in a jiffy Don Naruto Aruka groaned in pain, Sora's expression lit. Up at the name that's his name he asked happily as he continued working then Yarin-chan will see to it that Naruto is safe and sound. Sama Aruka groaned in confusion. He had heard Naruto referred to in various ways. Since he was a child, Hokage loved that particular way of addressing his son. Bursit's figure even monstered by the most idiotic members of the village however he had never heard him referred to as Sama to Aruka, it was simply inconceivable, Sora smiled happily at his charge, although Aruka could clearly see the flash of sadness behind that smile, in a way it reminded him of the way Naruto sometimes smiled Naruto-sama is Naruto-sama he said, simply without venturing any more. Information Aruka was now doubly surprised with the young girl, not only was she quite young to use healing techniques with such skill, but also seemed very aware of the need to keep his mouth shut regarding information, although he couldn't place her as much older than his students, he was surprised that she seemed so much more skilled than any of them, including Sasuke the genius of his generation. An explosion sounded a little further ahead, causing Aruka to flinch slightly and Sora to smile, as he recognized the chakra signature oh, and Karin Chan seems to have everything under control, how about we finish here, so we can meet them, Aisen asked with a cheerful smile all Aruka could do was nod slowly, Yari had no problem finding the tough running Naruto, no matter how untrained he was. Unfortunately he was leaving behind a fairly obvious trail that made it easy for Yuki to eat Akari will track him Yuki on the other hand was trained, but he still left a decent trail for Akari due to the fact that he doubted anyone would interfere before he killed the blonde brat unfortunately for him and and he was in a rather bad mood given the circumstances. She was not in the mood to humor the traitor while he pursued his homicidal objectives, jumping from tree to tree. She reflected on the current situation before leaving the Yuzumaki barracks village complex. Kaisuke had told her taken aside to impress upon her the gravity of his mission. Not that it wasn't blatantly obvious as it was yet his words at that moment resonated within her even now Kaisuk dressed in his traveling gear and drinking his favorite pipe, he frowned seriously at Ikari as he sat cross-legged in front of her on the tatami tell me Ikari-chan do you know why even though many of us are still alive, our clan has not elected a new leader since the disappearance of. Lady Kashina asked him after expelling a few puffs of smoke. Yari frowned sincerely without knowing the answer on the other hand, she had not asked herself that exact question before, due to the fact that most of the members of the Yuzumaki clan, they just accepted the current status quo in such situations, unless they really wanted to be able to. Not many would question what he was addressing the group. I didn't admit regretfully. Isuke smiled while holding his pipe in one hand. The others didn't either. He said, comforting the girl. However. The answer is simple, none of us can become clan head Yari blinked at that answer, feeling more confused than before I don't understand you couldn't become clan head Jiji, she asked in fact if Kaisuke declared himself head of the clan. He doubted that anyone in the group would protest. After all, everyone understood that the man who had kept them safe all these years had been him. 
Isuk let out a brief and sincere laugh at the question. There was no hint of mockery in it either. Oh, no, he said, still laughing, what a terrible idea, I would prefer to bite my foot off. Ikari was sweating at the quite sincere answer from the old man. Ikari-chan. The Uzumaki clan heads are not chosen for their ability or influence. He told him simply after having regained his self-control taking a drag on his pipe, he let out a small jet of smoke, if that were the case any arrogant brat could challenge the boss of course hell that idiot Natsu would be all over, that I imagine he added, with a regrettable snort, Ikari couldn't deny that which made her sweat. Clan heads in our clan are chosen differently, she said. Although something in that answer piqued her curiosity, perhaps she was keeping something to herself on that topic, that wasn't it. A wild assumption considering she was barely qualified to even lead this mission, we do not choose the most powerful member of our clan, nor the most political, because they do not represent all of us, she explained a clan head must be strong yes, but he must also be wise. He must be influential, but down to earth most importantly he must still unite the clan behind him, he stated with a nostalgic sadness oozing from his tone, this is why no living elder of our clan or active member can become chief clan, none of us can unite the clan, Yari blinked again a little uneasy at that statement, but the clan members here love you Jiji, she protested, if you present your claim we will support it in an instant, and what happens to the clan members in the other cells Akari stopped short at that question, Kaisuke sighed as he blew a little more smoke, without doing anything Yari-chan, you are very kind to say that everyone would support me, but the members of our clan here are only a fraction of the clan here reminded him like this, as you see me as your leader. Our relatives elsewhere see their elders as the natural choice for leadership, he informed her before looking out the window at the setting sun. No. We try to take the position of clan chief then to avoid bitter fights. Of power I have already seen many members of my family die in carrion, I do not want to have to kill any of them for a title that I do not even want, she sat there stunned by the elder's words, she, to her shame, admitted that she had asked why Isuke hadn't simply claimed the title of clan head. He knew that Raiden had asked him too, as he often complained while drunk, that the old man should have the stones to take what was naturally his however, when looking at Kaisuk now Yari could see every year of his life reflected in his image he didn't seem weak in any way, but he did look tired, he seemed very tired the way he hunched over and looked at the red sun with eyes that were divided. Between the present and a distant past, and comforting why are you telling me this Jiji she asked, after giving him a moment to remember why this boy if he is who we think he is, could finally change things Kaisuke answered without breaking stride, a genuine descendant of the former clan head born outside of our self-imposed divisions, could unite the cells and unite our family again. He added as he turned to Akari, I'm entrusting the fate of our family to you and Kari-chan, make sure I don't nothing happens to the boy at all costs, he understood why Kaisuke wanted the lineage of the clan chiefs alive with so few Uzumaki remaining now was not the time to remain divided however, without the division that the elders had imposed on the day of the death of Lady Kashina there. Enemies would have easily chased them, and the family would have been annihilated, even as Kaisuke had said a new clan leader could change all that at least, he could be on their way to a new village at least until the day came. When they would take back Yuzushi Agakur, it didn't take a genius to realize that despite all their happy facade, the clan wasn't doing exactly well behind the smiles and parties he knew that most of the clan members were simply doing their job. Formalities could tell just by listening to Uncle Iroki's stories about his or Kaisuks, even Aunt Nana remembered from time to time, like the other adults. It hurt her to see her clan suffer so much without Yuzushi Agakur, without the heads of clan to give them direction, the Yuzumaki had been slowly declining if something was not done soon, he knew he would not survive, and that the second great shinobi war would finally claim its last victim stop running demon, heard the last pursuer of his future clan head shout more looking forward. The redeed accelerated her pace, already thinking about what summon she would use to put the bastard on the ground. Meanwhile, Naruto was backed against a tree, the forbidden scroll kept close to his chest. Literally as he looked at Miyuki somewhat terrified any other day he would have attacked blindly after all he was good at that this time however he was clearly informed of how outmatched he was having seen Aruka fall quite easily that's right, give up Miyuki looked at him dangerously, and he urged me to give him the scroll just hand it over, and I will make sure to do it quickly, now Miyuki might not have and of Jonin rank, but he was still a trained ninja from Kanahagakur, so when he felt that the dangerous amounts of killing intent suddenly erupted right behind him. He instinctively tried to move away from whatever it was, but quickly found himself restrained with an arm twisted behind his back and a kunai at his throat. Who's going to do that quickly if I heard a low voice? And feminine without a doubt his captor Mizuki began to sweat nervously as he thought about every move of his arsenal, trying to find a way out of his current situation, unfortunately I couldn't think of any Naruto for his part of her, simply stared as a stranger appeared out of nowhere crouched behind Miyuki and just as quickly grabbed the Chunin master to restrain him. 
her fiery red hair tugged at something inside Naruto, but what really convinced this woman was the fact that he was trying to defeat the man who had been trying to defeat him, yet he had been burned once, and he was not about to let that happen again, even as he walked away from the two ninjas Naruto thought that a few more steps would give him a suitable line of sight for his next foray into. Escapism Wade he heard the woman yell at him still looking at his prisoner as he kept the kunai poised against her throat, Uzumaki Naruto asked him clearly who wants to know challenged him stopping despite his previous conviction to continue running the hell he the hell are you for once a good question from that demon, Miyuki grumbled before grimacing when the woman's kunai superficially cut her. Next I woman backs away this is business Konoha official he braggered unfortunately Ikari was well aware of his deception and reported him if that's true, where's your backup idiot he pointed out with a furious look, even if he was you'd be out of luck more on him here for the Konoha kitty can rot, so I care now Mizuki was truly panicking, he had thought some strange passerby had taken him prisoner. Or maybe a Kono ninja to whom Aruka had told what he had measured the woman's tone of voice however it didn't betray any lie, she would really gut him where he was if she wanted Al with Konoha Naruto for his part, was getting tired of being ignored 13 years of neglect, saw to it that his need for attention was primed for mischief, and having absolutely zero stealth skills hey, don't ignore. Me, he yelled at the two, surprising Akari by the volume of his scream. Mizuki, however, was very used to Naruto's screams, and like a trained ninja, he quickly crashed his head against Akari's. Grimacing as the kunai cut a little more of his throat, although it only broke the skin as she cursed he jumped away from Naruto, and her looking at the two of them, as he clutched his bleeding throat wrong move bitch, he roared as he proceeded to form a variety of hand seals bunin no jutsu, with a few dozen bursts of smoke, Miyuki disappeared from their sight, only to suddenly reappear as the smoke. Cleared but as a dozen Mizuki looked at the new small horde of idiots to hit Akari jumped in front of Naruto and told him to stay where he was stay behind me, he ordered I will protect you, he swore fiercely Naruto gaped at the retreat, unable to believe what he was hearing he had often read about similar situations in the few books he owned, but he never thought he would be the recipient of such a heroic gesture who are you he asked in amazement a good question one of the Mizuki sneered as he began to spin a kunai between his fingers after all, I'll need to identify his body when I hand them both over to the cashier. I imagine I'll get a compliment for this, he mused out loud, looking very pleased with himself. Yuki, staring at her, slid his back foot another inch as he prepared his fists for a close quarters fight. I think you've done it. Understood backwards he mocked him the only reason you got my name is so you know who hit your ass, he roared as he flew towards the clones, knowing it could only cause harm to the real Yuki, a hasty assault mocked Yuki nonchalantly how stupid indeed Akari flew straight through the clone he had aimed at heading straight towards a tree behind him however it was not a ninja in vain so despite Naruto's cry of alarm, he simply took a turn in the air she landed her feet on the trunk and stuck to it, using her expert chakra manipulation with a feral smile already on her face, as she raised her head to meet Miyuki's gaze and placed her hands on the trunk just. Right. Under her I'm sorry idiot, but I forgot to mention that I'm not a tojutsu specialist she scoffed, just as her hands glowed bright green knives she shouted, making Yuki's eyes widen in realization Yuki cursed, as all the clones went for her, with the kunai raised and prepared to kill her to mask his real self, Yama Inukurbero shouted, causing two puffs of smoke to explode on the ground near the Three I summon you twin howls pierced the night sky, as the two large wolves lunged at the advancing clones, only to become momentarily confused as they tore through them, even as the wolves gave confused growls looking around for their prey. Ikari sighed and slapped her face in exasperation, even as Mitsuki and Naruto stared at them. Confused wolves are stupid idiots, he grumbled. Despite how powerful the attack wolves were, the two of them were fairly new to this whole ninja fighting thing and hadn't yet learned to take the time to fight literally sniff out their opponents fortunately the wolves had great hearing so upon understanding their situation, the two attack-minded biological death machines used the instincts their species was known for and began hunting the real Miyuki unfortunately, the things didn't seem so simple as the wolves continued to wander around, unable to find the real one. Browning, Ikari pondered what this could mean when she heard a voice shout. Nachan above you coming down on instinct, and Kari launched himself forward rolling on the ground, just as Miyuki slashed his back however to his confusion the sword he was wielding had caused no damage, despite having been within his reach, it was already too late to realize that she had been tricked unfortunately for Miyuki. Akari wasn't that incompetent and quickly moved to the side sliding to a stop, just as Miyuki jumped off the ground with an ugly sneer, damn grunt brat was all he managed to say, as well as Yama Inu and Kerberos rushed towards him, although Miyuki was able to evade the two wolves, and Kari was far from finished, he finally grabbed his huge scroll and untangled it just a foot away, Kai screamed making Miyuki's. Eyes widen as he a torrent of kuna and shuriken rushed at him quickly causing the ground he had been standing on to appear, as if it had hit a shower of metal, gently moving out of the way of Miyuki's retaliatory attacks. 
He untangled the scroll a little more as he placed it on the ground, quickly forming a tiger seal kai. This time Yuki was unpleasantly surprised to find two torrents of fire and water rushing towards him. Apparently when the woman told him she was a knife specialist he didn't. He was joking who knew what else that damn scroll of his contained and speaking of scrolls every second he spent fighting the obviously quite strong girl meant he was closer to being caught trying to steal the forbidden scroll of course. This whole prank would have already been over if that woman hadn't interfered with his little brat demon hunt weight. A horrendous idea popped into Yuki's head as he dodged another hail of sharp pointed instruments all this time he had been trying to take on someone who was obviously better than him when his weakness was too obvious he timed it perfectly he waited for the next summon blow to hit him before he bursting into smoke suddenly replaced by a log yari looked around suspiciously considering she was still quite surrounded by the harmless bunin Clones of Miyuki yet she had demonstrated considerable mastery of the clones, if she had been able to control them into acting apparently independent, something she knew was incredibly difficult and a testament to the man's chakra control. Where is he muttering to herself she would never allow a man so determined to kill her future clan head, ran away no under your watch hey Nisan, where did that bastard go, Naruto shouted then making her pale as he realized what Miyuki had a few seconds ago Naruto-sama, let out the honorific unconsciously confusing the boy jump, shouted frantically while running towards him despite his confusion. Naruto's self-preservation senses were sharp enough to understand that the girl was completely serious, and instinctively he jumped towards Iker, and just as the older teen jumped over him to where Miyuki apparently lunged to plunge a knife into Naruto's back, raising a kunai from below, he smiled grimly as he realized that he would evade his blow and finish him off with his own. Seconds seemed to pass like hours as she approached his heart only for her grim sense of satisfaction to evaporate when a Bunin clone pierced him, Omeyer began to curse only for the ground beneath her to burst, revealing two hands that grabbed her legs and pulled her to the ground, reappearing in front of her Miyuki, mocked her only for Yama Inu and Kerberos to lunge at him, unfortunately this also. Turned out to be a Bunin stupid dogs mocked them as the pile of dogs worked to separate each other from each other, they are wolves, Yari growled as she looked at the traitor, fully aware that she had been deceived in any way. Yuki ignored his words. A stray dog is a stray dog. Now if I know. Excuse me, I have a demon to kill and a scroll to steal, she said as she advanced towards Naruto who once again seemed ready to bolt. Don't run, she called. She's aiming for that. The moment you do it, she'll be on you. Oh, don't listen to her, Mitsuki said. But the mocking pout a little more chazzing would be great, plus you know I'm not the real Miyuki I know why don't we play a game he scoffed with a sickly smile, only to disappear and reappear behind him with a kunai on Naruto's neck, let's play find the real Mizuki, he offered grimly just before a short burst of blood gushed from Naruto's neck, screaming in pain. The blonde managed to escape just before the kunai managed to cut deep enough to sever his carotid artery. Now he was as hurt as that bastard. Waiting hurt. Naruto looked at the Mitsuki clones that still covered the clearing, paying direct attention to the traitor's neck. Without blood, that was impossible. Mizuki had been injured by the captured Nachan before the fight started right, so naturally any of the Miyuki that wasn't bleeding from the neck was fake Hei Nachan yelled at the Redeed, who was still trying to free himself from Yuki's trap, unfortunately he had managed to play some paralysis tags on her legs, preventing her from using her arms to get out. The irony did not go unnoticed by her either. She paused, noticing Las Lobos's gaze. Las Lobos tracked blood. Yari blinked at her. Naruto not knowing where she was going with this yes of course, why did she ask that idiot Mizuki was killed when you captured him right, but her clones are fine with her eyes wide open, Akari realized that the brat was right, and just as quickly she wanted to smash her head. Into the ground for being so stupid after all, how could she have overlooked such a ridiculous detail, Yama Inu Kerbero sniff out that bastard she ordered his summons Mizuki for his part, was not satisfied with this turn of events. The events and his clones reflected it looking at the dual little pest sharply growled before giving another sickly smile and suddenly reappearing next to Ikari's head, kneeling next to her and holding a kunai to her throat, I still have the advantage here, so back off stray dogs ordered the two wolves that were advancing, or else your lover will meet the Shinigami ignore him Yari counter order yes. But the bastard the two wolves however, could not do something that would endanger their summoner, it was simply going against of the summoning contract, thus without recourse, the two wolves gave Naruto and Akari a look of regret, before disappearing in a cloud of smoke with contempt. Yuki withdrew the kunai from Akari's throat, rising to his full height to gloat in his victory fortunately not. He had counted on Naruto's streak of unpredictability before Miyuki could utter a single syllable, something big and heavy slammed into his face, knocking him onto his back as he made the stars blink. The Kanoha trader realized. He realized that he had been hit with a forbidden scroll. Just in time for Naruto to close the distance and lunge towards Mitsuki's full in form, landing a solid punch on the man's bruised face. Unfortunately, Miyuki however was no tuning just because of his appearance. 
Pushing Naruto roughly off of him he jumped to his feet and glared at his former student viciously brat however, before he could react more appropriately Yuki stopped short when he noticed the blonde had his hands forming a seal. Unknown unfortunately for him however his temper had run its course, so he was now way beyond his usual caution, I'm going to enjoy strip little demon roared as he charged at the waiting blonde, who was just praying his jutsu worked run, Yari shouted frantically, as he tried to fight the restrictive seals Naruto shook his head, his gaze steadier than ever no more running he said, with a strange sort of Calm indifference pumping in as much chakra as he could thinking that more would be better, he shouted the name of what years later would become his signature Jutsu Tajikbu, no Jutsu Chapter 4 arc of the Lost Clan training in the Uzumaki style Siratobi and Ruin Sandane Kaj of Kakir, did not know what to do with the situation standing in front to him in varying degrees of embarrassment, were a group of foreign ninjas plus Naruto and a somewhat healed Aruka who had not only breached the village's security, but had also put a good number of ninjas in the hospital for the Naruto's head, still just looking at them standing in front of his desk, was starting to give him a headache that he normally associated with bad days at the office, read tons of bureaucratic paperwork to complete most. Foreigners they didn't seem even remotely concerned that they had been caught assaulting to citizens of Konoha, after illegally infiltrating the village if it had been Karigakur, he had no doubt that his counterpart there would have executed them all, out of pure leftist principle, Ride examined the various shinobi who had dared to mock his village's security systems and who had so blatantly interfered with his sting operation to dot to see who had tasked Naruto with stealing one of his village's most precious relics. The one on the far left was a red-haired young man. Of course he seemed to have an aversion to shirts since all he was wearing was a pair of baggy pants and a protective vest that wasn't even buttoned honestly, considering that he had been ap-ad fighting many of Kanoha's best in hand-to-hand -hand fights, it was a miracle he hadn't been more seriously injured, frowning the Hokage made a mental note to order mandatory remedial training and to jutsu for. All active ninja that any way on the scale of not giving it to frantic Yuzen, definitely put this on the lower end of the scale, considering how he was looking around bored with his hands clasped idly behind the head, in fact straining his hearing a little Yuzen could have sworn that the boy seemed to be humming to himself, the Hokage was torn between admiring the boy's composure and wanting to strangle him to his left the boys there was another indifferent individual, this much more eccentric steel earrings, adorned the boy's nose and forehead, giving him a slightly punk and menacing air, that was only made worse by his wild and rebellious mane of black hair, however, at least this boy seemed to understand the need for shirts. Even if it was just a sleeveless zippered vest, fortunately for Lockage's growing headache, the individual next to this imposing character was a little girl who seemed a little uneasy and nervous. The way a child normally acted when he knew he was in trouble of course it helped that he did not appear to be more than 12 years old, it was at this point however, that he began to notice a peculiar similarity between the individuals, including those who followed in his inspection, all of them were wearing so much on the clothing, as well as on what appeared to be a tattoo, a spiral symbol placed in a prominent place where everyone could see it this in turn raised quite a few red flags in Iron's mind, as he obviously recognized it after all the same symbol adorned it. Kano has bulletproof vests however before drawing conclusions he decided to finish his impromptu inspection after the girl there was a slightly older girl, and she seemed simply dispassionate about the whole matter, although not as condescending as the two boys. Initials saying this Yuin wished not to show such attitude limb, if the reports were correct in fact this girl was perhaps the most dangerous of all, considering that she had bypassed the village's detection barriers and had managed to seal one of the four cardinal gates, with a seal so powerful that the Hokage was seriously considering asking Jiraiya to return to Konoha so he could dissipate. Later behind the astonished girl there was another bored teenage boy seriously what the hell was there he had been escorted to the room fully dressed, but now it seemed that his shirt was inexplicably missing. However, unlike the first two children, the boy's spiral tattoo was not on his arm, but on his upper left pectoral just above his heart. Apparently it was not placed evenly, then came the girl who intrigued him the most well after the ceiling girl, the one who had been found with Naruto, and who kept looking at said blonde every few seconds, with expressions ranging from curious to scrutinizing and critical, and finally accepting like the others, she also wore a unique suit, whose only similarity ended with the spiral design placed prominently on the shoulders of her suit, thinking that there was no point in lingering any longer, Yuan sighed as she grabbed her pipe and unlocks it absentmindedly hitting it against his desk before beginning, he spoke. Capturing all their attention fortunately considering that it was another carefree attitude apart from ordering Anbu to force to pay attention, let me remind you of the charges that are being brought against all of you even me, Naruto said with a pout whoop sorry Hokage-sama, please continue, Haruka apologized, as his fist remained planted on the top of Naruto's head, the teacher he knew Naruto would turn out fine considering the extenuating circumstances, but interfering in an important report like this could still cause the blonde a lot of trouble nodding gratefully towards Aruka the Hokage returned. 
his attention to the foreign shinobi waiting to take a drag on his pipe before continuing you are all accused of illegally breaching Kanoha's defenses, tampering with said defense systems, and he looked at the open report on his desk sweating, so he saw 163 counts of aggression and aggression almost immediately the girl with a huge scroll at the end of the line turned to look specifically at the Two boys on the other end actually demanded the two boys seem sufficiently sensible enough to sweat profusely under the girl's withering gaze they started, protested the boy with light red hair, said my hair was pink, apparently they silently decided not to make things worse, everyone in the room wisely decided not to point out that it was in fact quite pink, and not counting the collateral. Damage, Ewan continued, not wanting to distract too much from the main point. There were apparently some buildings missing. Metal sandwiches, he paused and reread that sentence in the security report. I was hallucinating, unfortunately I wasn't and this was quickly confirmed when the boy with the thumbtack shrugged his shoulders, I was hungry. He defended himself while the nail filer prevented the one with the huge scroll from mutilating his compatriot so eat a bar of SX like a normal person, grumbled the stripper who was apparently about to take off his pants, why don't you stop losing your clothes like a normal person, the teenager responded to the boy's confusion, hun I chan your pants spoke the most young man hiding a blush behind his. Han's mother feeling her headache getting worse as this impromptu mass interview progressed Yusin seriously considered doing what Ibiki had suggested and simply handing them over to torture and interrogation, unfortunately due to the fact that they had saved Naruto of a traitor, he had to at least show them the courtesy of not putting them in Ibiki's hands, for now enough Yuan spoke firmly while. Adding a bit of his killing intent behind this almost immediately the room fell silent again, much to his delight these crimes are serious crimes, and many of those accused of assault have been sent to the hospital for their injuries, but they pale at the security violations he stared at the cheerful girl who was shrinking her body on herself under his scrutiny, and the ceiling of one of the doors of our village the normal protocol then it would be putting them all in jail right now he continued without flinching, however here Naruto, as well as the instructor Chun Inuminaruka, pointed towards the aforementioned duo, they have given sworn statements, saying that you were instrumental in saving their lives and protecting the forbidden scroll, a priceless relic of our village for that reason alone. You are not in the hands of our interrogation squad Yuzin enjoyed the leftover looks on the faces of teenagers after having to deal with their carefree attitudes at 3 in the morning, so let's make this sweet and simple, so I can get back to the bed offered while snapping his fingers, which caused a masked ninja to appear standing next to him with a port papers and a pencil in his hand. Please indicate your names and affiliation for the record and we will proceed with the interrogation. The group looked between yes for a moment before the pincat took the lead, my name is Natsu, he declared arrogantly beating his chest as for affiliation, I can't say it without the team leader's permission, Yuzin was tempted to strangle the boy at that very moment, but he grunted in sign of that. Well allowed to the surprise of the people his position in your team, then Natsu seemed to think about it for a moment before shrugging his shoulders heavyweight the boy next to him snorted something funny idiot challenged Natsu like, well, said his partner, shrugging his shoulders before looking at the Hokage, my name is Takeshi, just like the idiot. He said while pointing his head in Natsu's direction, which caused the boy to try to strangle him, both of them were restrained. Strangely by the cheerful girl who seemed to have placed a seal while no one was looking and had activated it with a carefree smile at the Hokage, making him completely nervous when he realized that it was not dangerous, he raised his hand to prevent the Anbu agents. Who were still hiding in the room they will kill you where you were, and you young lady asked kindly to the younger one, inadvertently returning to his grandfatherly attitude after all, despite the seriousness of the situation he still loved the children, that's it, sir, the team of doctors meekly responded. Some of Kanoha's eyebrows rose at that statement. Ninja doctors were very difficult to train due to the precise control of chakra necessary for the profession, for such a young girl to have mastered it, to the point of being able to perform. Combat medical tasks were almost unthinkable, Amaya combat support the girl next to her spoke, anticipating the box's question Maki ceiling specialist, the cheerful girl introduced herself with a slight bow. Still maintaining somehow the seal that had frozen Natsu and Takeshi in place, as if they were statues of an epic and imminent duel, Yuzin subtly nodded to the Anbu recording, to have special consideration for the girl, Yuki combat support spoke, then the stripper boy honestly, is all this necessary, he complained. Only to receive the punishing blow to the head from the last member of the group, who planted his hands on his hips and puffed out his considerable pleasure, as he looked at the obviously Hokage. Quite proud of who she was and Kai team leader announced her tone dared anyone to challenge her, on that we are the advance guard of the Uzumaki clan of Itsushi Gakure, we are here to guarantee the safety of the last clan head, the Sandaim Hokage stated proudly at that moment, he watched as a group of rowdy teenagers suddenly transformed before his eyes into real shinobi. His worry and carelessness disappearing as if they had never been there before, even the little Sora seemed to lose his mind. 
Nervousness you could have heard a pin drop after that statement in fact Lin Bu's pencil fell to the floor. While well, all the Kanohe ninja in the room looked dumbfounded at the group Yusin in particular seemed about to collapse at that statement and Naruto for once he remained. Silent. Just like Aruka, Yusin's mind was spinning. The Yuzumaki clan after Kishina's death had been considered almost extinct or completely extinct. Of course, there were strange reports from survivors of the destruction of Yuzushi Agakur, but no one had really estimated that a significant number of survivors would have been left alive, its relationship with Konoha was also both a source of pride for the older veterans and a sign of shame after all, while Yuzushi Agakur was being destroyed, Konoha he had not been able to and some unpleasant sectors. Could even say that he was not willing to send reinforcements to help his longtime allies at that time, so in a way they shared the burden. Of its destruction as such while it was encouraging to know that the members of that prestigious and notable clan had survived, I knew that its resurgence was also a herald of disturbing times to come, Yuzumaki breathed Iuka immediately looking next to her at Naruto, who seemed just as shocked, and Kari nodded once, so it is under the orders of the elder of the clan Dane Yuke, we have been sent before. The clan to guarantee the safety of the last head of the clan, he repeated himself before pointing at Naruto in surprise, everyone okay maybe not lockages, but everyone else in Konoha at that time was quite surprised at MP absurd, shouted the Hinbu, who was recording the clipboard trembling in his hands, the Yuzumaki were annihilated when Yuzushi Agakur fell to the combined forces of Kumo Iwayumi, and Giri Takesi Grun doesn't show what you know he said while crossing his arms over his chest, I am the clan boss Naruto then asked reminding everyone that the group's mission objective was also in the room with them, in fact. Many were surprised that it hadn't been so boisterous, but the amount of surprising information would have left anyone off balance, and Kari shuddered at the question, but fortunately Amaya answered a, not at all, she said, making some kind of movement with her head. And more accurately you are the last candidate for clan head he explained anyway, we are here to make sure that no one tries to kill you, while the clan arrives wait a second Yuzin shouted as he stood up, he stood up and held on to his desk for support. Yari scratched his cheek. Didn't we mention that? Elder Kaisu asked timidly. Will he bring the Yuzumaki clan to Konoha in a few weeks? He said with a smile. All of this. Yuzin couldn't help but catch the expression. The girl at that moment the way he had added that last part necessarily made her think that having the Yuzumaki all in one place was an oddity which didn't make sense, unless he had him wanting to punish himself for having passed overlooking such a possibility. The Sande Moke finally managed to put the pieces together, theoretically solving the question of how the Yuzumaki could have gone so many years without being found if they were still active. In short, they had divided their numbers to avoid being detected, a brilliant plan in its simplicity, and knowing that Kaisuke had been the one who ordered the vanguard to infiltrate Konoha, he wasn't surprised. He had heard of Kaisuke when Yuzushi Agakur was still thriving, although he didn't know why. They called Kaisuke the Great, he knew the man's reputation, and he was quite fearsome yet if the man was still alive and well he would be about 80 years old, which would help prove what these children claimed, since the Yuzumaki were notoriously long-lived, so Dino Kaisuke still lives. He muttered, reflecting on this new turn of events. Why not? Just send a missive to inform us. He asked Akari, who shrugged. We were supposed to deliver it before we left. Dvaco Ogi de Shorosama taking the letter with a shake of his head the Hokage silently read its contents, most of which was a simple confirmation of what the teenagers had been stating however Yuan Sweat dropped when he read the passage that warned him about certain group members' tendencies to exaggerate things which usually results in massive collateral damage, a slightly late warning Yuzin contemplated its authentic he judged while reading the letter, apparently Kaisuke wasn't stupid, not even in his old age, had he included fragments of incriminating evidence to verify his identity throughout the letter, including several anecdotes about the Nidame, that no one but a select few would know, so is he. Serious about this relocate the Yuzumaki clan to Konoha asked the group, although I was hoping that Akari would answer that question, it is confirmed. Yuin grunted in a sign of essence, before reflecting on the ramifications of such a move. On the one hand, he knew that he would have his former teammates. Team over for the next few months, and that Danzo would be unbearable, ironically however he knew that it would not be because he had failed in some way in his distinguished opinion, but to expedite the integration of Yuzumaki into the ranks of Konoha Koromura, would be happy to get Konoha a new clan, especially one as powerfully famous as the Yuzumaki, whatever his feelings for the Kayubi Jinchiriki. Danzo on the other hand would be someone to keep an eye on, since the Falcon of War would undoubtedly seek to take advantage of the Yuzumaki to reveal their prize techniques, Fui Yuzin doubted that he would succeed beyond simple seal masters, and a noisy group the Yuzumaki were a proud clan, and he could not think of a traitorous son having him. Born into that clan. Although of course that could mean that they killed those people before they could do him any harm, it would still be a surprising blow if he presided over the arrival of another ancient clan, although rumors of him persisted. 
Adnidame had been chosen as such due to his successful recruitment of the Huga clan, only those old enough to remember those days knew it to be true, although Yusin knew that he did not need any validation aisle of his publication, he could not deny that obtaining a massive increase in popularity would be useful, particularly since her and Karu aligned themselves more with Danzo than with himself. It sounded cold, but Yusin had long since reconciled himself to that part of the job the Hokage could enforce his own agenda to a certain extent, but the needs of the village outweighed personal philosophies, he didn't have a council that would overrule him or make his life hell like Suna did true, but it didn't take a vote to make life difficult for a leader, as they had discovered Amura and Karu. But still remember how they had miraculously backed him along with Danzo when he rejected the civilian proposal of a ruling council, compassed of the clan heads and prominent civilians after all, this was a military village, and civilians were only allowed to reside in the village because they tended to the ninjas. They could also leave at any time considering that since the first immigrants arrived the ninja clans had learned many trades, and some clans even came to be practically self-sufficient, in fact, most civilians ended up opening shops or restaurants, there were very few civilian artisans, if any. Who justified the delivery of some type of power in short, that meant that while their services were truly invaluable, they were only mere intermediaries easily replaceable and hardly critical to the mission, a Lohumo could only recognize their use, as future shinobi breeders nodding to himself use unfolded the letter, and the placed on his uniform very well nodded, please have one of your group. Report to my office here tomorrow afternoon, and I will have an answer ready for key I accent stated, that means we are free to leave Takesi half ask half demanded thankfully he was calmed down by what seemed to be an activated pain seal, courtesy of a sweet laugh from Maki Yuzin, made a note not to get angry with that girl, considering her ability to perform seals with amazing speed and subtlety. Ignoring the abundant expletives use and nodded yes confirmed while taking a drag on his pipe, this has been a long and confusing night, and for my part, I want to go back to sleep he stated brusquely, then looking at Naruto, he gave the young man a grandfather's smile, as for you Naruto thank you for returning the scroll, and defeating Yuki you were very brave, he honestly congratulated the boy Naruto. Still somewhat dazed by the revelations of the meeting managed to return to his typical hyperactive self as he smiled happily and gave Hokage a thumbs up, beaming no problem Jiji almost screamed that bastard had nothing on me, that's not what I saw Akari grumbled, remembering how the boy had run away after Iruka fell quite quite quite, he said between laughter to the great approval of some of the Anbu although the Yuzumaki group seemed encouraged by the kind treatment that was being given to the boy, I also understand the congratulations are necessary, he asked with a knowing smile, as he looked at the dirty headband on the boy's forehead. It seemed to dissipate any worry and drowsiness of the boy as he jumped excitedly. Yes, now I'm a Ganon. Iruka said it. Iruka-sensei said the teacher. To be corrective, anyway, that means I passed the exam, right? He half asked half pleaded with Hokage, said old man chuckled and was about to confirm his statement, when Akari raised her hand weighed almost immediately the feeling in the room became less jovial, although all the Uzumaki frowned at what was happening, is there a problem before them? Asked the Hokage. Wishing that they had let him confirm the boy's graduation and go back to sleep, the old people needed to rest either, he is Uzumaki. Akari pointed out quite redundant obtaining some nods from his group, we asked that the graduation be suspended until Elder Kaisuke arrives with the other elders to preside over a new exam, Yuen frowned, that would delay the start of the student's mission, quite a bit that would be very irregular, he protested, even when Aruka grabbed a steaming Naruto, who would have cursed ouch with every dirty word in. His remarkably large profane vocabulary if Aruka hadn't covered his mouth with a hand, yet the professor he seemed as upset as the boy, although he managed to stay calm. Naruto has reached the minimum required to graduate. And his education is governed by Kanoha's educational statutes. I can't make exceptions like this. Yari put his hands on his hips as that boy stood his ground. He will become our clan head, she refuted as such. We are the main party interested in his education and well-being, and from what I saw during today's fight, his ninja skills were underdeveloped and based on desperately largely on pure luck and last-second improvisation noted based on what we have seen during our investigations, he appears to have been regularly mistreated during his time at the academy by his teachers and peers excluding the current company he gestured toward Aruka who had looked away in shame at the mention of his colleagues, we have reason to believe therefore that his education has been sabotaged, and this will not do we will not see our future Tsu loose in the ninja world, with the slightest skills under his belt, Yuen remained silent during Akari's tirade, and he had to admit that he was quite impressed by her bravery in addressing him, plus her passionate plea made him respect her even more for it, since very few were willing to confront it when it was really necessary. Furthermore, she had a valid point, yet she took note that the academy's teaching staff be investigated for possible child abuse and bar neglect without a doubt. 
Bye Vicky, I'd have a very nice picnic, he admitted to the surprise of Aruka and Naruto, the latter's expression quickly reflecting feelings of betrayal. Yuen grimaced at this but stood his ground as he nodded to Aiki all of the students' graduation iifications. Students will be revoked in the interest of justice and a new graduation exam personally designed by Aruka, and I will be administered under our direct supervision within two weeks. Will that be enough? Yari asked. Yari looked at Maki who asked. Quick hand seals almost imperceptible before activating his Yuzumaki tattoo and making it flash in code pausing after finishing, they saw the tattoo flash in code, again transmitting the clan's response okay, he confirmed as he extended his hand Yuzin gladly took it, and they both accepted I imagine that all of you will take care of Naruto's education, then he asked, having deduced a reason why they wanted the postponement Yari smiled even when Naruto's eyes turned. They opened wide of course by the time we're done with him, he'll do the best you can for his money alright midget, let's see what you got to Kessie announced the next morning, as he confronted Naruto on one of the empty training grounds after the night's events. The Yuzumaki group had gathered at Naruto's apartment, which in turn almost caused the group to start an uprising, outraged by their living conditions, which although annoying, were to be fair quite good for an orphan, although he may not be a future clan head, however he had managed to calm them down with humility, which seemed quite out of character, with a normally loud and hyperactive bundle of energy however after a restless night of sleep Natsu and Takeshi had almost kicked him out. The bed being kicked at 7 in the morning even when Sara and Amaya set the table and Akari was cooking humming to herself, it was surreal for the boy having lived alone his entire life, he could barely comprehend that he now lived with others, and much less that she would live with an entire clan, and for a moment she had the urge to yell at the apparent intruders in her apartment, only remembering the events of the previous night had stopped her from doing so, and she even smiled at Akari once she mentioned that she had he had been the one who had discovered him and protected him from the bullies who had almost killed him. Having said this, he tried to gut the monkey with his fork when he heard that they had ritually destroyed his beloved monkey, however, due to the reactions of the others. She quickly realized that this type of violent interaction was common in her family, and Natsu and Takeshi were quick to laugh and leave loudly, and even tried to challenge each other, before Maki literally stood her ground and sealed everyone in place, when the owner he approached to shout at him, Takeshi opened the door and looked at the owner, until the man cried apologizing, and almost got dirty as he ran away laughing together at the crowded table Naruto smiled happily as the group interacted like a family lost, it's been a long time since they were said this, I really wish Natsu and Takeshi hadn't eaten more than half of their ramen broth in the process of eating breakfast after a few more hours of trying to set a shower schedule and find privacy to change the group headed to one of the training areas where they now sat and watched Naruto and attacks and confront each other, although Kaisu considered that Natsu was more powerful than the pierced boy takes if he was nevertheless a master of the A-body fight. Body even more than Natsu who was good at everything that didn't really require brain power, don't call me a metal face, midget Naruto replied causing Takeshi to raise an eyebrow and smile, good spirit I like that said the pierced boy, as he put on his gloves to make sure they were tight, though let's see how you do in a fight he spread his arms and gave a slightly deranged smile at Naruto come on try. They hit me just once and if you succeed you'll win Naruto smiled arrogantly one hit no problem he said, just before attacking directly at Takeshi, who now frowned sitting on the sidelines the rest of the group except Yuki, who had gone to deliver the official letter to Kaisuke, watched as Naruto headed straight towards Takeshi, who didn't seem impressed well, he's nothing if not consistent, Yin used as he. Rested his chin on his palms however Takakun doesn't seem very happy, Maki pointed out before grimacing when said simple boy simply gave one step to the side and completely evaded Naruto's attack, which caused the boy to stumble and slide a few meters on the ground, P. Takeshi he won't be hit so easily, Natsu said for once apparently serious, he takes the fight seriously, for what we can't expect to. If the runt any open chance Tsuko no runt, Amaya corrected absentmindedly as she filed her fingers have some respect silly, you want to fight bitch Natsu roared at the carefree girl lean to the right Maki ordered and almost instinctively, and Kari did just as Naruto flew by courtesy of a punch from Takeshi Takeshi kun kun is being very harsh, I'm going to heal, Naruto sama offered Sora as she stood up and began running towards the fallen boy only to be stopped. At Takeshi's cry, let him be, the pierced boy ordered with his arms crossed. If he needs healing after that little touch, Am is not worthy of being a ninja, much less a clan chief. Hoi, Amaya muttered while sweating. That's going a little far, Naruto. Embargo he seemed reinvigorated by that challenge go to the metal face he shouted in response as he stood up, I will become Hokage and clan head if it's the last thing I do here or before attacking Takeshi again causing many members of the group to he groaned, waiting for his next beating what they didn't know however was that Naruto wasn't known as Kanoha's number one unpredictable prankster. 
Ping just because he sounded cool not his tactical awareness although undeveloped was still remarkably brilliant in his natural state. Having realized that a frontal approach was useless, the boy pretended to do so until he was just a few steps away from Takeshi, who began to twist his ankle to deliver a roundhouse kick that would have undoubtedly sent him flying again this time however the boy lunged forward and slid across the ground until he reached Takeshi's back and then jumped towards the boy with his arm ready to deliver a solid blow just as his opponent turned to look at him. Unfortunately, Takeshi wasn't the one either. Third dragon in vain instinctively grabbing the boy's arm in the air Takeshi let out a roar as he used it to push the boy away from him, causing Naruto to carve a deep groove in the ground upon landing, needless to say, Takeshi wasn't the only one surprised by the turn of events, all of his spectators looked with wide eyes, and Natsu even gasped. He had never seen someone adapt so quickly to fighting Takeshi or take advantage of an opportunity so quickly. No. It's wrong boy praised Takeshi still in his throwing pose, he almost took me there, Naruto coughed as he knelt down, you're just playing with me awesome, praised Takeshi again very good do you want to try again, he half asked half mocking, as he gestured to himself to stop Naruto's credit. Showed an excited smile as he stood up be it I do it he said you said one hit and I win I won't back down until I've done it, believe it he good spirit, Takeshi commented as the boy charged against him again, but you know how to fool me once it's your fault he said as Naruto once again abated his initial counterattack and aimed at his back if you fool me twice, it's my fault he shouted as he quickly turned and slammed his fist into the boy's head. Planting himself solidly on the ground where he then exploded in a cloud of smoke who screamed in surprise, just as he felt a hostile presence behind him jumping quickly, he managed to dodge Naruto's kick just in time, landing a solid blow in its place on the blonde's back with a spinning kick and sending the Jinchuriki flying again, Kajbunin mused. Funny good trick, but here we are fighting with Tajutsu Naruto groaned as he stood up, but still managed to give him attacks, and a smile you said he had to take a hit, you never said knowing Jutsu pointed out, Takeshi blinked before looking at the group for confirmation, which made them and Naruto sweat sighing Iari fell tiredly yes, he has confirmed scratching his head with a frown Takeshi see he turned. The look at Naruto again as he thought things over. Technically, Kajbunin could better allow the boy to develop a fighting style more suited to him, rather than one of those strict tasting based ones that Takeshi had learned after all, given the boy's penchant for improvisation, predictability wasn't exactly something he would learn with enthusiasm okay, so he agreed as he slipped into a fighting. Stance's frown turned serious Kajbunin is allowed, but no other juts as he ordered the same rules as before, but with an additional rule if you hit me once you win however this time I'm going to fight back so if you can avoid being knocked out in 10 minutes, you win Uakari grumble don't go crazy with him now, Takeshi didn't give sign of having listened to the team leader. So when he smiled excitedly and approved the new rules, Takeshi smiled and immediately disappeared, reappearing in mid-movement in front of the blonde, who only managed to dodge it at the last second. Holy heavens, Naruto shouted. As Takeshi left a small crater where it used to be what the hell Takeshi looked at his prey with a smile I said I would fight to remember, don't let me down now and chicken out shorty he shouted as he lunged at Naruto once again, said doomed blonde quickly evaded the next blow kick and combo, but almost cursing he realized that Takeshi's blows were perfectly timed to prevent him from using the catch. Yunin curiously reminded him of how Sasuke fought with his eyes wide open Naruto he realized that the comparison was quite correct, just like against Sasuke, he couldn't find a single opening in Takeshi's moves, which often left him in a bind in the end, having so much backing resulted in him losing, which meant he had to quickly finding an opening or an idea lit up Naruto's frown as he jumped back to avoid another kick from his trainer. He extended his foot for better leverage, and unlike the other times he didn't move in the moment when Takeshi appeared in front of him again ready to knock him out instead, Naruto quickly crossed his arms over his chin, just as Takeshi gave him a decent punch that sent him flying again, by the looks of the older teen he had felt disappointed that he had managed to do it. Have you already given up dwarf Takeshi asked with a frown, I know you could have dodged that by lying on your back Naruto smiled at the sky, what a metal face he responded raising his hands to form a familiar seal, alone he needed time to do this, he shouted Tajik Kajbunin no jutsu o wed Takeshi he cursed as he ran forward to stop Naruto too little too late, a good 50 clones appeared due to Naruto's inexperienced handling of the technique although intimidating to look at the Uzumaki group, knew that they had no chance against Takeshi, especially if they all fought like Naruto at that time. It was still an impressive achievement. Although Iker and I had already seen him perform a version at a high rate. This technique with a deafening collective battle roar the wave of blondes rushed towards Takeshi, who smiled as he widened his stance and felt a rush of adrenaline as he fought so many opponents at the same time, attacking with short punches and fluid kicks Takeshi faced off. 
at each clone at the same time managing to land a blow with each blow he threw devils at one point, he simply grabbed one of the attacking clones by the feet and began using him as a flail against the others, to the group's fun, eventually the constant burst of shadow clones ensured that most of Takeshi's surroundings were covered in smoke. Although the teen couldn't tell as he had fallen into a battle frenzy while taking great pleasure in attacking the heart of blondes. On the sidelines, Ikari sighed knowingly, even as Maki continued recounting the events happening inside the cloud of smoke with one hand on the ground and forming a spiral seal. Takeshi is going to lose, Yari judged. Because time is running out and Karen asked Sora curiously the team leader shook her head while resting her cheek on the palm of her hand, he has lost consciousness of his surroundings, the most battle experienced members nodded gravely at the statement, including Natsu, who had also noticed that Takeshi was starting to get lost in their fight over said Pierce teen had to admit that he had never had so much fun in a long time with the cage buns around to give him a run for his money. True horde of practice dummies had had to loosen up a bit to deal with the increase in numbers. Although individually they were still terrible at Tejutsu, yet the increasing unpredictability of their attacks ensured that he remained alert, sensing another clone coming at him from behind, Takeshi moved his leg with a reverse heel kick, only to blink in surprise, as this particular clone dodged with a grin, just as another clone fell on his head, courtesy of being thrown by two other clones. Realizing that their tactics were finally evolving, Takeshi smiled as he jumped in time to avoid the lower clone's attack, he twisted in the air and pushed the upper clone towards a devastating slam into the ground, already turning towards his new target, Takeshi's he was suddenly caught off guard when he felt something solid hit his leg. Blinking, he stopped in the middle of attacking a clone and looked down to see that the clone hit in the body did not disappear into sight. Change said clone reached out and punched him weakly on the leg, realizing he had been tricked Takeshi was about to smile in praise, when he felt another solid blow land on his cheek, making him stagger, then a kick to the ribs, another punch in the face, a sweep to drop him more punches and kicks soon enough, he was on the ground being beaten to a pulp by a wave of angry blondes determined to get revenge for the beatings they had suffered at his hands not ago. Needless to say the Uzumaki group was sweating at the scene Natsu spoke Akari are you awake, said pink haired dragon smiled enthusiastically and slammed his fist into the open palm he finally declared as he walked towards the side of the massive beating hey shrimp time is up, now I am your opponent and so began another round of the jutsu training while Siari watched Sora heal the stain on the ground called Naruto's wounds after a grueling session against Natsu, he reflected on the results of the tejutsu session. Training that hour without a doubt teaching the boy theory was a bad idea anyone with a brain could see that the boy wanted to learn with his body sitting him down and trying to teach him theory would simply turn out to be an exercise in futility and frustration, and Akari was not masochistic enough to to try it on the other hand. There were a series of purely theoretical topics that I would have to learn. If only to have them on hand just in case, I have seen enough, he stated as he got up and lay down on the couch. Shouldering her summoning scroll straps once again the Mayanatsu and the bandaged Monia named Takeshi, looked at her, while Maki remained sitting with her head bowed and her hands still inside the seal array, to monitor the surroundings of the training ground, walking towards Naruto and Sora. Who were happily chatting with the blonde as she healed him, and Kari looked at his stricken form with a frown, you stink she told him bluntly hey shut up, it's the truth she immediately interrupted him too shooting a glare at Sora to cut off his defense of the blonde, practically the only thing impressive about you is your stamina which we all have your huge chakra reserves and you're planning on the lie beyond that you stink something horrible Naruto lay there staring at a hole in the she shrugged her shoulders, fortunately for you we can work it out she stated, but just as quickly shot down her rising hopes unfortunately for you we are not the best teachers the clan has to offer, so you probably won't get the best grade when the exam comes, that being said, you won't be the last either. Well, at least you're honest, Naruto grumbled, get used to it, Ikari said before pointing at Natsu. You see the idiot there. I was the one who took care of him. As he grew up, she ignored Natsu's indignant roar and the attempt to strangle her a failed attempt, once Maki sealed it in place with instinctive ease now until Kaisuke Shoro gets here, I will be in charge of you, so expect me to ride you until you reach an acceptable level alone, we have two weeks to do it, so unless you break a bone, I hope you work with everything you understand meekly Naruto nodded. And Kari left with a satisfied smile shortly after Natsu approached Naruto and sat next to the distressed boy, giving him a pitying smile, you must like her, the pink-haired boy pointed out. Do you think she just said I stink? Natsu smiled. She also told me that when we met. She remembered fondly when he and Iker were children. She doesn't mean anything by that. She's just direct in that sense, crazy bitch, Naruto muttered, Endo made Natsu laugh, and Sora reprimanded him in the right place, Natsu said, she's also strong, stronger than you, Naruto asked mischievously, which caused Natsu to shrink. 
Aisuchora wanted to turn her into field agent even before she was assigned the one who started all this, how strong is she then asked Naruto curious Natsu shrugged again, she's not as strong as a Kem Kamika Raiden or even old Hiroki Kaisuchoro he estimated, and she's probably not as strong as me in general, but if she has her summon, it would be difficult to defeat, he guessed she had never gone. All out with Akari before yet her summoning ability was nothing to sneeze at, and even Kimiko had praised her for her talent. I suppose she is what you call Takubetsu Jounin. Naruto's eyes widened at that estimate. Takubetsu Hyunin or Special Jounin were those who, although not as skilled as a full honing, excelled in one or more fields. Particularly at the honing level, most of the Takubetsu Hyunin were not usually field combat officers, as the village required a lot of investigators, interrogators, torture, and cryptographer. Moment, in fact, Naruto couldn't really say he knew any Takut as Jounin, yet having their training in someone's hands suddenly didn't sound so bad. The two heard a soft click and looked up to see Akari stretching her neck left and right with a nod. Arm resting on his huge summoning scroll suddenly both Natsu and Naruto felt the pit of their stomachs drop sharply okay, you've had fun with the idiot duo, he said with a growing smile hey, said two idiots shouting indignantly, even though one of them was muffled by the amount of bandages wrapped around his head courtesy of Naruto's revenge beating. Shut up, go sit with the others, Natsu predictably ordered. He cringed at Sura and joined in. To the others on the sidelines he then turned his attention to Naruto and Sora Sora, it's okay another round the fourth dragon looked nervously at his patient, before giving him an apologetic look it is confirmed, I'm sorry he mouthed as he stood up and ran away, growling against the clan members who stabbed him in the back Naruto slowly stood up mentally swearing revenge on Natsu and Sora for. Leaving him at the mercy of Ikari, said Don Bringer smiled brutally as he watched Naruto adopt a stance, well, you're learning, he praised lightly before advancing his scroll and placing it vertically on the ground, but this lesson won't be about fighting. What did Naruto ask, confused? For the next half hour, I'll attack you like crazy. You have that much time to survive, he explained, ignoring her question or the general gesture. Of his clan members without further warning, grabbed the edge of the scroll and gave a powerful pull, revealing to Naruto the most complicated sets of seals he had ever seen knives he shouted provoking a good amount of bursts of smoke, appeared out of nowhere around him as the smoke cleared. Naruto gulped audibly as he watched foxes materialize. Eagles and wolves of all shapes and sizes all of them already ready to cause him great bodily harm if he wasn't careful. Training chanted and Kari began catch them boys with a chorus of howls and screams, Ikari's summons focused on Nar who screamed hysterically as he fled from the horde of summons, so a week passed, and half mornings and by mornings, and Kari meant the mornings were completely dedicated to Tejutsu, where Takesi Natsu and Kari took turns beating up Naruto, while he rapidly improved his stances in battle. Tactics under pain of suffering great bodily harm. At first he had only managed to implement basic fighting tactics. But that soon changed once the group discovered the abilities of Naruto's shadow clones in transmitting information. The discovery was a complete accident naturally Maki who along with Sora and Amaya took turns teaching him more theoretical concepts during the afternoons, had asked him to retrieve a book from the library, but Naruto beaten and bruised from the morning session, had not wanted to go personally, and so he had sent a shadow clone to do it for him a few minutes later, he put his hands to his head in a gesture of involuntary pain when asked what had happened he said that something hard had hit him on the head, knowing that the boy had not lifted a foot from his bed, Maki had sent Amaya to check the place where Naruto claimed he had been mugged, as it turned out that someone had tripped over his purchases, letting a large melon fly in the process and hitting the Naruto clone in the back of his head. Dissipating a glow in his eyes that Naruto didn't really like and proclaiming that this was for science, he ordered him to summon a dozen clones of a baker, not willing to argue with the crazy woman Naruto obeyed, and Maki soon, he began experimenting with them by making them leave the room and perform various tasks. After a few minutes he ordered one to dissipate and asked Naruto if he suddenly knew something after confirmation. Maki began demanding massive dispels to find the limit of information that was could convey enough to say that when he reached 50 dispels, he had a huge headache after 70 simultaneous dispels, which left him quite exhausted to begin with he fainted, then he wanted to know when the information transmission began to deteriorate which caused another session of dissipations that gave him headaches. Finally they managed to set the optimal number of simultaneous dissipations at approximately 23 more than that, some of the information was lost in the process, yet the seal master thought unfortunately for Naruto. Haj Bunin's remarkable ability opened up a whole new world of pain when Natsu and Kari took him now. They were ordered to train simultaneously with approximately 200 clones, all of whom would have to train in basic combat forms and battle tactics until Naruto could work out the kinks in his style, as if things couldn't get any worse, Naruto had also seen his daily Raymond consumption drop when Amaya. 
and Sora who were in charge of their general health as well as certain areas of studies, began to buy ingredients from the market and produce much more healthy food, with tears flowing from their faces. Eyes the blonde had been forced more than once to eat disgusting vegetables and seaweed which he hated with a passion at least, he was not alone in his suffering, after having introduced Takesi Yinsu to the Chiraku's Raymond, both boys had become hooked on it, and they were similarly outraged when Sara and Amaya stood their ground and involved them in Naruto's new diet. Suffice it to say that a series of restraints from Maki and the threat of unleashing Akari's wolf summon on his genitals had been enough to stop him. Intimidating the two warriors however was not just Takesi Natsu and Kar, and those who abused his Sora clones Amaya and Maki, when he was not using him as his experimental guinea pig, ordered him to use the Kajbunin, when he studied to speed up his studies by end of a week and a half period, under the express and incredibly grueling work schedule the group had imposed on him, Naruto was finally deemed. Passable at worst good at best, he still wouldn't get the Rookie of the Year award, nor be considered a genius, but for once he wouldn't be the last of his class which was more than enough for him. His coaches for now anyway on the other hand they couldn't wait until Kimiko and Kaisuke put their hands on him hell, the evil smiles along with the evil laughs they threw at him every time the topic came up were enough to make him completely nervous and develop performance anxiety, even though he knew they were family Naruto couldn't help but start to think that perhaps he would have been better. Off alone at the western gates of Konoha Izumo and Kotex, the so-called guardians of Konoha, for no other reason than the fact that their antics forced them to fulfill that duty time and time again they remained half-hearted. Asleep as the new day dawned in Kanahagakur, as expected, there wasn't much that needed to be done for the two of them, since most of the registration process was done once past the gates. The guards were simply there. To provide armed support in case things got rowdy or if an invasion happened and someone needed to hold off the enemy forces, while the gates were closed either way it wasn't the most glamorous job, and Izumo completely blamed Keksu for getting them this job time and time again the sternest of the duo was perhaps a fraction more awake than his partner, but still his rigid code of self-discipline forced him to maintain an alert facade at least due to his opinion that the first thing the Kanoha visitors should see the professionalism of their shinobi unfortunately he did not agree which actually resulted in a strange sight when the visitors arrived at the huge doors on one side, a rigid professional soldier while on the other, a sleeping lazy hunched over and forming bubbles of snot it was. Honestly no wonder the other shinobi countries considered Kanoha a hippie village see Kotex Uizumo growled under his breath after the fifteenth time a couple of visitors discreetly laughed. As they pointed at his sleeping partner grabbing one of his patented Kotex wake-up devices his red a pebble, he discreetly threw it at his colleague stabbing him in the forehead, so no fap said the victim roared as he snapped awake shut up he scolded and juiced his friend and bar buddy, and try not to embarrass yourself any more than you already have grown honestly, a good shinobi started ranting. Before realizing that Kodu had fallen asleep again Akitetsu was mumbling pervertedly while he was sleeping, causing a couple of cute girls to enter Kanoha with giggles yes, that's right there Madamanko I've been a naughty boy whoa suddenly Kotetsu was mumbling for a whole new reason, when Izumo stabbed him in the temple, with his guard stick leaves from sleep, he roared any part of his own. Drowsiness now completely banished and replaced by the old rage, strange Kotetsu muttered on the ground he should taste dirt oh wait, there's the blood who Izumo sighed as he looked at his companion writhing in pain on the floor, ignoring the somewhat surprised and amused looks that passers-by were giving them. You see now people will look at us strangely and report us to the Hokage for doing stupid things, he accused Kodu, ignoring the fact that he was the one who told him. I had given his friend a slight concussion I don't know about you I don't know, but I hate being on guard I hate him I'm sorry, what Keksu muttered with his face still planted on the ground, I was busy counting the points I'm seeing now oh nice Izumo sighed in agreement. Again finding it strangely depressing that this act of exasperation was quickly becoming his signature habit heck he knew there were some among the Chunin ranks who had started calling him, and he sighed, never mind that the nickname Stink was also frighteningly accurate regarding his state of mind these days, it was at that moment that something caught Izumo's attention at first he had dismissed it. As if it were nothing but he became more cautious when it became clear that perhaps there was more in this it seemed especially considering the gate of some of them i.e. there was a large group of people approaching the door, normally this was not a concern as Kanoha thrived on traveling merchants and immigrants however, this group was larger than what was normally seen and certainly not a trading caravan given the lack of good goods. At first glance Izumo made out around 70 people within his reach, but the cloud of dust that he stood up subtly behind the group and told him that there was more he couldn't see today. Problem head asked the spiky haired Chunin cautiously I don't know Izumo admitted, as they both tensed prepared to call for backup, just in case a grunt of recognition answered him as the group approached the entrance, as they did so Izumo discernible, it was not a trading caravan, there were no carts with goods to sell, although he could see some covered carts, and none of the travelers seemed to fit. 
the role of peddler and those were quite easy to spot recognize by their opulent taste in fashion secondly if this was an invading force, it was a terrible attempt to do so, while ignoring the fact that attacking one of the five villages head on, was fucking oh, how little did those poor ignorant fools know the fact, it was that the casual and loud manner in which the group traveled simply destroyed. Any chance of their approach being undetectable yet. There was something about the way they approached the door that made him feel uncomfortable and from the looks of it, Kitetsu was too. He had realized that in a nutshell it was in the way they walked. Years of active ninja service had taught Izumo that civilians and trained warriors walk differently than civilians who rarely or never walked. They needed to be careful with the sound of their footsteps or the ability to slide into a bat stance they tended to walk heavily, usually going heels first and so on warriors however were the complete opposite in needing to constantly be ready to fight in at any given time warriors trained to advance with a solid flat step or a sliding step which usually caused the toes to land first and then the heel. Various schools of warrior arts stated several reasons for the different way of walking they advocated, but they all transmitted a visual signal for any trained warrior to observe if they were supposed to detect enemy agents, and it is telling that the entire approaching crowd had the warrior's gate making. Subtle signals to the guards he knew were watching from the battlements at the top of the massive wall. Izumo prepared his free hand to make the appropriate signal for the guards. They would close the door and alert the entire military force of the village. At the same time, he shared a look with Kitetsu and then advanced a few steps, soon joined by his friend. Together, they lowered the arm holding the staff horizontally to cross the two weapons in a gesture of impediment. Poor but obviously quite symbolic stop Izumo ordered the group when they approached within six meters of the couple, please state your names and intentions, he stated seriously half ready to adopt a battle stance and challenged him, luckily he had kept his crib and blade stored in a paper seal that he had on hand at all times embarrassingly he also kept Kitetsu's much to his utter confusion however the group did not seem the least bit intimidated or even bothered by his presence and Kitetsu's in fact some of them seemed to be exchanging river bills and grumbling while others were laughing with joy at their newly acquired wealth I told you he'd be scared one of the men murmured to the other who simply grumbled and looked to the two guards for making him lose money hey what the hell is the damn robbery, a deep growling voice Izumo's shock and Kitetsu at the casual way in which the group acted practically separating the group, he led a tall blonde teenager with a lightning shaped scar over her left eye, followed shortly after by a teenage girl with blood red hair wearing a rather scary looking weeping breastplate with a familiar swirl inscribed over her heart, Raid and Izumo heard several murmuring. The name while they looked at him with equal parts respect and fear, apparently despite his age, he was someone to be careful of however, judging by the looks people were giving the retweet, he was more than willing to bet that she was too, Kimiko Raiden qualified in that category, an old voice grumbled, and to Izumo's surprise, the two did exactly that. Coming out of their battle-ready stances and separating to let an old man pass. Izumo blinked once, then twice times to make sure he wasn't seeing things he wasn't still there walking towards them was a tiny old man who seemed quite comfortable with the situation around him, his attire was a standard black shinobi uniform with a sleeveless bulletproof vest, all things considered he seemed to be a standard chunin slash honing suit in Kanoha with one exception, while Kanoha's bulletproof vests had two large pouches on the front, this one had almost six, which seemed like too much in Kanoha chunin's opinion however, it was a clear sign that they were outsiders. Please state your name and intentions, Izumo demanded sternly, once again outnumbered, or he would not continue to adhere to protocol. The old man looked at him curiously before holding his chin, confused. MMM, he reflected on those. Brats didn't deliver my letter Izumo and Kitetsu's unwavering gaze soon made Kimiko sigh loudly and Raiden punch her in the face in exasperation behind them, the crowd started laughing amongst themselves, I knew it, the blonde teen moaned it was too much to expect Natsu and the rest to remember Kimiko. Not at Oyari Chan is the one in charge no Natsu spoke another teen as he pushed himself forward, she's not that boring weight you said Natsu Kitetsu spoke a flash of recognition passed by his face, turning his head towards his friend, while keeping the crowd within his peripheral vision, Kitetsu addressed Izumo, wasn't that the guy who took a tuning group to the hospital during the you know what incident euphemistically reminded his friend uncomfortable with revealing sensitive information in front of strangers, now that you mention it nodded Izumo looking at the strangers to his surprise, they all seemed to sigh in exasperation, I guess it's the same guy pink hair black vest wears a scarf listed raid in just to stay deadpanned, as the two guards nodded yes, that's the idiot he confirmed before. Looking at the black haired teen I thought you were joking about that said teen shrugged, you should have knew better the tiny man, then coughed drawing Izumo's attention to him anyway if everything went well, his boss should know we were going, he told them before slowly forming a smile, if not please let that old monkey know that the clan Yuzumaki from Yuzushi Agakur has arrived chapter 5 arc of the
Lost Clan The Uzumaki Clan If someone had told the Sandame that one day he would sit with part of the elders of the Uzumaki Clan drinking sake in his office, he would have committed that person on the spot, however here, they were both well more or less, one of them had excused herself to stay with the rest, to make sure they didn't get in trouble in her office, sharing a cup of tea, while the rest the remnants of the clan waited in the anteroom the hallway the library or outside the building, since there wasn't enough space to store the Itsumi numbers for a dead clan, there sure seemed to be a lot of them, I still can't believe that after all these years, so many of you have managed to escape the destruction of Yuzu Yuzin spoke gravely before drinking from his cup, having thought he would need the Liquid courage for this meeting wow he had got that call right so many Kaisuk reflected with the same gravity you must not mean Yuzushi Agakur, either he had many clans, but most of them were relatives of the Yuzumaki by marriage, very few of us escaped, he corrected what you see outside, it is approximately half of the survivors of Yuzu that is still quite significant, Yuzum Kaisen pointed out Yuzun. Follow him the most numerous of our clans have maybe a little more than half of their survivors at most the Aiga were not a country in themselves, Kaisuk replied as he looked at his cup sadly, even as he spoke, he could still see many faces of deceased loved ones too many, it was lucky for any of us to escape the great destruction Yusin. Seeing how the conversation was affecting his elderly shinobi companions, decided not to insist, even though the two of them had something to discuss. Your vanguard caused a great print here a couple of weeks ago you and changed the subject offering the man an amused smile, put over 100 of my men out of commission for the night that worked, while well, Isuk snorted before gulping down his cup in one go yes, Yuki gave it to me, he said he said the morons had no self-control to be fair, they were stopping a mob by swelling a little boy well about that. Isuk's expression darkened causing Yuzin to stiffen I trust it was clear that any new attack on our head of clan will face cruel retaliation he stated more than asked you and looked at the old man calmly and calmly for a moment he did not answer calmly and just before Kaisuk could explode with anger he raised a hesitant hand there is a reason for it what reason could there be for for leave that dialed out of the protection of his family Kaisuk demanded you are not a Kanoha clan Yuzin pointed out, while crossing his hands in his lap, you have no authority here, neither as a clan nor even as individuals, if you want to exercise either of the two. You must first become part of the village your clan member is part of. That's not a big problem. Kaisuk growled. Although his anger seemed to subside, it was part of our plans to begin with. Oh, but that has its problems, Yuzin commented. If Kanoha admits your clan in our ranks what would happen to your enemies asked Kirikumo Iwayumi, these four nations incredibly joined forces to erase your home from the map, an unprecedented and unrepeated event, and three of them now constitute three-fifths parts of the large shinobi villages Kanoha can barely afford to have three of the world's major powers aiming at it, Yuin had not wanted to play this card, but after having come down from his level of being the Hokage to preside over the resurgence of the Uzumaki clan, had begun to realize the inconvenience that having the seal masters around could bring to Kanoha Kaisuke for his part, couldn't blame Lockage. For pointing this out any village that claims the Uzumaki among them he might soon face the combined fear and hatred of the alliance that had destroyed his Ushiagakur. are you saying that you will not allow us to reside in Kanoha, he asked seriously Yuzin raised an eyebrow at all, he replied softly I'm just asking a question if the Uzumaki joined Kanoha, what could you offer us to counter the horrible? Possibility of a fourth ninja war breaking out negotiation Kaisuk was very familiar with this game he had had to play with the other elders at their last meeting and his entire life before the fall of Yuzu, and yet only one had taken his side the other two elders for all intents and purposes, had lost hope of reforging the clan, and were not convinced with Kaisuk's assurances regarding the new head. But the clan was far from a lost cause, but Kaisuk knew that the clan head would have to personally seek them out and prove his worth before the family could truly reunite. The question the Hokage posed nevertheless had merit, what could Yuzumaki offer Koha? Naturally, sharing the clan's most precious fin techniques was out of the question. He knew, for example, that the Hyuga never shared anything of their own with the village, and he was not going to be the only one who would do everything possible to please the village leaders. The Yuzumaki were not no one's lapdogs, I suppose manpower would be the best answer, stated Kaisukar clan may have decreased in size, but not in power, with a few who have decided to follow me here I bring you master seal doctors specializing in invocation interrogators torturers, combat specialists of all kinds, the military force would increase considerably with us around, that is what I hoped. Yuan nodded while lighting his pipe however, what more considerable increase in military force or not this would hardly put us on par, with three of the greatest powers military of the world, Kaisuk knew that the Hokage wanted something, but he couldn't understand what, narrowing his eyes, Kaisuk decided to the man what do you want, he asked bluntly Yuzin smiled, and finally he got to the point. I have no doubts about the will of fire of my ninjas, he stated while putting the pipe in his mouth, all of them would gladly fight to the end to protect their homes and their comrades, just like me, however. 
there is nothing bad at tipping the balance a bit he said smiling as he thought of his colleague Nua for offering a boost to her side right no no, there isn't none Kaisuke nodded cautiously, so this is what I propose continued Yuzen, in exchange for full citizenship clan status and lands on which to build your Kanoha home, will require the following first that the Yuzumaki clan assist our sensors and interception division and strengthening and upgrading the detection barrier and providing backup for the interception team, secondly we will ask you to develop new patented seals that would help monitor activity within the village and its surroundings. In any case their infiltration team managed to point out how unfortunately ineffective our barriers have become if one had the intention to do so, and I would appreciate it if you would think about providing a teacher of basic fin jutsu for our academy, since it is a dying art here he stated thirdly, we would also appreciate your efforts to reinforce our walls and doors with those remarkable seals of yours and lastly any cooperation that they can provide to the hospital, of course, he said with a smile, Kaisuke had years to practice not showing relief or anger in the middle of negotiations, so when he heard the proposed terms, he had to do it. He tried his best not to breathe a sigh of relief, as the terms were within reason, and in no case was it mentioned that Yuzumaki had to give up his precious techniques. This is acceptable to us, he stated, knowing that his only counterpart who deals with the clan members. Outsider would agree you Luan smiled genuinely when the negotiations were over he opened a drawer and took out a sheet of excellent paper, he said with a smile, as he placed the paper on his desk and took out his personal seal, so let this be the beginning of a new and wonderful chapter in the relationship between Kanoha and the Yuzumaki clan, he declared before sealing it. Showing Kaisuke that he had already prepared everything for Yuzumaki's entry into the ranks of Kanoha. Naruto was crazy when he woke up that tomorrow, looking used to Akari's crazy training schedule, he almost expected his relatives to burst into his room and drag him to the training ground when they didn't after a few minutes. Naruto frowned. Frowning wondering if something was going on or worse, and if they were preparing another prank on him, he didn't think he could stand being Maki's experimental test dummy for much longer, he slowly went into mild hysteria, this feeling only got worse when he came out of his room and found the group stone quiet in his living room looking around, he asked half expecting them to jump on him what's wrong. You all look like someone died, Maki winced at that Sora sobbed a little Amaya put a comforting hand on Sora's shoulder, and the two boys looked at him. Only Akari who was leaning against the wall with her arms crossed, seemed to have enough composure to respond to him by sighing and pushing off the wall, she still didn't make eye contact. Someone did it with him, a member of the clan told him. The words pierced Naruto's heart more than he thought. Although he had never had a family before, he had connected with the group extraordinarily quickly. Yet given that the short time he had been around them, he half expected to feel a little removed from their problems experience taught him otherwise what he breathed to no one you knew muttered Takeshi as he leaned forward and looked at the ground Hoka supplied Akari, ignoring Takeshi Uzumaki's rudeness Hoka she was killed in the Anak mission, Nasora cried in silence Amaya's comforting gestures. Sadly did nothing to ease the girl's sadness, you could also hear Maki sniffing Yuki, he came to tell us Akari continued through Sora's sobs, he died a week ago another one not for the tablet Natsu growled at that and quickly left the room making Naruto look at him confused what's wrong with Natsu asked, are his parents also at the tombstone. Commemorative spoke to Kessie gets like this, every time the topic is brought up, Yari sighed again anyway, the clan has arrived, he told Naruto Kaisu Chora will meet with the Hokage but it should be over soon you should get ready, he told his future boss clan, everything you want to take with you to your new home, you better bring it too, this place is too small for all of us Naruto blinked a few times before a smile grew from cheek to cheek they are here, he asked his previous aunt quickly evaporated my family is here, despite the tragic news that Yuki had given them. Ikari couldn't help the smile that bloomed on her face as she watched the blonde react with genuine happiness to the news. Looking at the members of her clan, she saw that they also seemed encouraged by his change of mood yes, so get ready now he snapped, returning to his usual instructor personality and pointing it out honestly do you want your first meeting with the clan to be in your pajamas, Ep Naruto squealed before running back to his room the tension in the room. The room effectively shattered and was replaced by good-natured laughter. Naruto wouldn't admit it, but it pained him to see the family members suffer so much at the news of the death of a member of the clan. I spent two weeks with them, but in that time I had gotten to know them and already treasured them I knew that Akari was only acting the role she felt most comfortable with and that takes was rude to everyone, but they both had good intentions, Sora had a beautiful heart incapable of hating others, Maki was a little crazy, but extremely protective Amaya was a little distant, but loving Yatsu was an idiot but strong and fiercely real however in that moment when he entered into his duel, none of them he appeared like the members of the clan that he had come to know and that scared him. This was what it meant to have filial ties. Would he also react that way to the death of a member of the clan? 
until then, he had only seen others cry, but since he didn't he had nothing to begin with, he had never experienced it himself, he guessed the closest he had been to that point was when Aruka almost died at the hands of Miyuki, but still his teacher had improved, and as a result, also Naruto suddenly starting a family gave him, it seemed much scarier than he had thought possible and just as quickly. Naruto squashed those feelings of fear family was family it was the only thing he had wanted for so long, and now he wouldn't let those bonds slip through his fingers, if he had to experiencing such terrifying feelings would overcome him, just as he endured 13 years of loneliness. In fact, he would give everything to earn the respect of his clan and protect each and every one of them so that they would never have to cry again. It was a childhood promise. There was no doubt, but it was enough to give Naruto a new force of will as he suddenly went on a mad dash and started packing up everything he considered valuable which wasn't much since he rarely had the chance to acquire personal effects. Hey what the hell is that noise he heard Akari shout from the living room, there was no Uzumaki clan compound, yet however, when the group plus Naruto arrived at the place where the Hokage landed discreetly of course the Miyuki incident had not happened, they had still had the opportunity to go through what the Sandame had wisely decided to minimize Naruto's public presence until they had deemed it suitable for their use. They could already see several tents erected and some construction scaffolding here and there where they assumed they would be erected. The first constructions for Naruto, even if there were not a large number of buildings waiting for him, the experience was incredible, as he and his escorts approached the open field he saw many figures walking back and forth carrying building materials or children running around playing, and the sight made him smile enthusiastically, these were his clan members his family had once had the displeasure of encountering a Hyuga group in the city, and always he had thought that big clans like them would act prim and uptight, but his family shattered that image into small pieces. If anything they were more like what Joji Kiba and Shikamaru told him their families were and he loved it, hey Natsu, he shouted with a wide smile, his previous pain almost forgotten as he waved wildly to his clan members, we are back some of the older men who were working on a construction scaffolding, turned to see who was shouting at them and smiled back at the group that he was approaching, hey. Natsu is back with the others, one of them shouted, quickly turning into a snowball in a chorus of similar screams and members of the clan coming up to greet them, after all, there wasn't a person in the clan. Uzumaki who did not know the group's mission therefore his return only meant one thing look at him he is the head of the clan, a scream was heard as the members of the clan gathered with impressive speed and disorganization until the group was almost surrounded by eager members of the clan, while Naruto was somewhat taken aback by this sudden rush of positive-minded people since his typical encounter with such a large crowd tended to end in beatings or insults Natsu and the rest of the group were having a good time great the pink-haired boy was high-fiving forearms with an older man who was smiling toothily at him, while Maki and Amaya chatted happily with some of the older girls of similar ages, Sora blushed at the praise of numerous clan members, while Kakari and Takesi they were simply enjoying the attention they were receiving, so this is the new head of the clan, he heard one of the men ask which caused great performance anxiety in Naruto, would they accept it, would they even like him, he was so close to getting his family back, he was absolutely terrified of losing them, Natsu responded by resting an arm on Naruto's head, much to his irritation and amusement of the dangerous. There you have given him the confirmed he is a brat, but I think he has what it takes there is a terrifying thought he shouted another member of the clan, causing both laughter from the rest of the clan and a throbbing vein on Natsu's forehead, what was that implied roared the pink haired fighting wonder tch so loud ma clicked her tongue with worn out annoyance, where could Yuki kun be, but please. Don't start any fights Nats and Nai Sora was almost begging the second dragon for a futile try, but he couldn't stop trying a fight how to Kessie muse with a growing smile sounds good, who wants a piece he challenge, here we go again, and Karari sighed exasperatedly slapping her forehead, what's that a fight someone called I'm in give another shouted, I'll take care of them all Natsu roared above everyone. Else inevitably soon a punch was thrown and a person was hit, and as quickly as the crowd approached the group to welcome them, everything turned into a massive fight, and only Naruto and Karari Sora did not join in however. It should be noted that the only reason they did not was because Naruto was a little taken aback by the sudden start of violence, and Karari knew someone had to explain things, and Asora just didn't like fighting, even Maki was involved much to Naruto's surprise hey this is normal, Naruto asked Akari, pointing out the fight in progress, while sweating unfortunately confirmed Akari p please stop. Hiding everyone Sora was trying in vain to calm things down, consider it a family tradition, Akari said to Naruto, ignoring the 14-year-old girl's attempts to calm the situation some clans found them, they like the performing arts and like to eat others like to write, we like to fight well, most of us like it, he corrected while looking at Sora Naruto, tried to understand that idea the idea of a 
family tradition of course he had never had one before, but he knew that Joji Shikamaru and Kiba were talking about some activities that their families enjoyed doing together, so this was his as he watched the fight going on around him, he couldn't help but notice as Akari had said, none of them seemed to be fighting with malice in mind. He even saw some ridiculous fights, and no one seemed to be bothered by the rampant violence. It was then that Naruto felt something strange. Nothing really bad came up in him, just a feeling of having been excluded. A smile began to form on his face as he raised his hands to form a familiar seal as he looked at him, and Kari began to sweat as she guessed where he was going, ooh he murmured, taking a few steps away from the room. Lantaju Kajbunin no Jutsu Naruto shouted, and suddenly dozens of clones appeared all over the makeshift battlefield, let's get this party started, he shouted with joyful abandon, launching into the fight, somehow I knew he would do that he groaned, and Kari to herself, as she watched a new clan chief and his army of clones take on any challenger. Although momentarily surprised by the sudden addition to the anarchic fight, the clones and Naruto were soon welcomed with open arms and fists standing there on the only island. Of tranquility among the sea of confusing fights, and Kari and Sora did not have to wait long before a rather familiar voice interrupted the fight with a single sentence, what the hell is going on here is expected, that the fight stopped with a screech, when Kimiko's voice cut through the noise, only Naruto still tried to move forward, but was quickly overpowered by a nearby Natsu who quickly paled. Hearing the voice of the Uzumaki clan's feared disciplinarian standing in front of them dressed in what it appeared to be an orange construction jumpsuit complete with helmet which in turn caused massive beads of sweat. Kimiko carried an impressive load of wooden beams on her shoulder as she looked out at the crowd. Everyone they believe that this complex is going to be built on its own. Enough of playing, get to work. The crowd wasted no time in carrying out the Ritid's orders. Too scared to cross it, however, while they were doing so, said disciplinarian noticed that three people had not moved. Brave according to all reports, when he squinted, he recognized Sora and Kari, who had gone to flank a young Rubio, who was wearing a grey shirt and black pants with three whisker-shaped scars on his cheeks, A visits now he asked calmly, as he approached the Yari Sora trio, who is your friend you know we are not receiving guests, yet well, no one had ever accused Kimiko of being quick to pick up. Whenever topics unrelated to the fight arose the area humbly felt something that surprised Naruto, who had never seen her act with such deference in the short time they had lived together as he put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, I am here escorting the target of our mission, until Su Choro explained with head bowed in respect, Kimiko's eyes widened slightly as she immediately realized Akari's meaning. You mean this boy is asked without having been able to participate in the scouting mission that had led to this whole situation. Yari nodded while Sora smiled with his teeth if Kaisu Choro proves his claim he will become the next candidate for clan head of course things were not that simple, so this is him Yako the other clan elder reflected as he inspected the young blonde's long. Faded red hair swayed gently as she swayed from side to side impatiently. The long elegant lines gave her face a dignified and matronless look. Sue sighed as she exhaled some smoke from her pipe and also gave him he gave the boy a look. I told you so at the meeting. He reminded his counterpart, I know you were exaggerating. The two old men remained silent at that as they looked at the restless blonde boy who seemed uncomfortable having to sit still on the grass, since he still didn't know what to do. There was no clan temple to hold the meeting in. Then you'd better get this started, Yako opined, getting a feeling of approval from Kaisuke. There's no point in keeping everyone in suspense. Kaisuke looked at the small army of Uzumaki clan members, who were all kneeling in perfect formation. Behind the blonde boy with the older and more skilled one sitting in front seeing them gathered there made Kaisuke smile, as many of them were acting quite out of character, normally the strict the disciplinarian was practically fidgeting on her knees, with her fists clenched and eyes wide open too. Her side Raiden actually seemed interested in the process while Akemi to her right seemed more serious than anyone could remember the adorable young woman being even Natsu and Takesi, the two fight happy idiots were unusually calm and serious on their part. Naruto really wished this didn't have an audience. It was hard enough having to meet these two veterans who he did remember. Directly Kimiko and Kari's previous conversation could determine the path that would take him to his destination, now he also had to deal with performance anxiety, what if the and if they hated him the hell what would happen if they found out about the Kibi and rejected him as he had done, the village did not believe he could endure any more rejection. Especially from those who were his family. Let's begin, Kaisu announced, causing Naruto to tense up. He didn't know it, but his gesture was replicated by almost all the members of the clan. Uzumaki behind him Maki-chan please take note of the meeting, the thin red-haired specialist felt as she stood up from her place among the clan members and walked to the side of the meeting, quickly summoning a scroll and some writing tools, meeting to set up. 
the legitimacy of the claimant's status as a member of the Uzumaki clan, said Iako, the old protocols hammered into his head in his youth, still remain in effect, President Uzumaki Kaisuke Elder Uzumaki Iako Elder, with a half of the elders present a quorum is achieved, he announced, without even bothering to check if Maki was following which incidentally she was while this bureaucratic process was. Happening Naruto swore he could hear snoring behind him the temptation to look back and confirm was great, but something told him that he would get in trouble if he did. Either way, a resounding crash was soon heard, followed by a scream of pain and some muffled laughter. First order of business, Kaisuke squealed as he sucked on his pipe his eyes never once left his gaze towards the blonde boy, his name Naruto, took a moment to realize that they were finally addressing him, but he quickly stammered a response in Naruto Uzumaki Naruto Maelstrom, a good name Miyako commented. Although Maki wrote it down anyway where you were born Naruto then asked the old woman maintaining her posture and image of a stern old woman of the clan, which clashed horribly with the almost casual pose of Kaisuke, with his legs crossed here I mean by Gakyur, Naruto quickly corrected himself, thinking that they didn't want such ambiguous answers. Normally, Iruka would have had to threaten him with chores and no Raymond. For a month for Naruto to respond with such care and obedience, but the blonde wanted his family back so much that he would have fought the big nine with a throw of toilet paper and pure luck, if asked Kaisuke nodded parents asked quickly Naruto looked down, I don't know I've been an orphan all my life, he admitted. A little embarrassed by it. Hey, Yako and Kaisuke exchanged glances. At least he's staying on that end, Kaisuke mused to his colleague, what's up with your last name? Yako asked as she returned to focusing on the boy. How do you know if you don't know your parents? Naruto. She blinked before thinking hard a feat in herself the old mom I mean, Hokage-sama said it was on the birthday you know the one where it says, when and where I was born, she insisted for getting the term birth certificate Maki provided to merely earning a nod of thanks from Naruto yes, that he confirmed there was a pause then, before Kaisu tapped his knee with his pipe to clear some blockage next. The Himeo folded his hands in his lap and stared at Naruto you are in fact, the Jinra of the Kai and Noiko asked bluntly, Naruto felt his insides freeze at the question they knew they knew suddenly every bit of insecurity that had begun to assault his mind, since the Muki matter came to him with the force of a thousand exploding tags, this was here would be when they would avoid him forever and he would. The alone again no he couldn't stand this why again why did it have to be he was about to run off to cry alone in his self-induced state of pessimistic despair, when Kaisu groaned, it seemed like his mother seven words seven words that froze Naruto in place, the tears were barely forming in his eyes, he had heard right cuck stuttering, according to what you told us, you are the son of Uzumaki Kashina. Explained Kaisu absent-mindedly while he sucked on his pipe the second Jinri of the Kibi makes sense he nodded, and I nodded the head the Jinchuriki are always, even if it is a coincidence. Chosen due to their closeness to the cage in our case our lineage close to the Enju and their will of fire lady myth and Senju Hasarama Kashina and Suratobi, are a student of Hasarama and Tabarama, which means you're probably Namek's son too, Minato concluded Kaisu before adding thoughtfully, then he and Kashina were actually serious way to second Naruto suddenly shouted on one knee and ready to attack the elders and you're fucking with me right? Namikaze's son almost shouted it so hard to believe Kaisu Kask boredly Naruto's response was to point to the distant monument to the Hokage you're absolutely right, it's hard to believe, old man, Naruto shouted. A tinge of desperation quickly became evident in his tone. Namikaze was the damn Yon Daimei, the guy who defeated the Kibi and sentenced me to hell. That's one way to look at it. Iako agreed. Seemingly indifferent to the boy's bad words. On the other hand, being an old Uzumaki woman, she had had to deal with much worse things, what else? Hey demanded Naruto, tears streaming down as he began to think that this was just a giant prank being played on him, he believed. So much in you that he trusted you a simple newborn to safely imprison the Kiwi, the most powerful big that exists the big that everyone else fears, until the day you die, provided Kaisuke freezing the blonde in his tracks like parents usually do. He added as he looked at Raiden who looked away from his grandfather's gaze. I Naruto was left speechless for the first time. The resentment he had felt bubbling inside him towards the Yondai Mei for sentencing his, I am the Yondai Mei son he asked still shocked most likely yes, confirmed Kaisuke nodding his head before looking at Ayo, now feel too meanwhile, Ayo turned to Maki we elders. Recognized the claimant status as a member of the Uzumaki clan, he informed the girl who quickly wrote it down before passing the scroll to the elders in no time the two elders quickly affixed their personal seals on the scroll, where Maki had placed a mark, thus legitimizing the document, Kaisuke smiled warmly at the boy who was still processing this avalanche of information. Welcome to the clan, boy soon. Applause broke out among the crowd of gathered clan members. Behind him Naruto had to admit his family knew how to have fun. Even the lack of a roof and four walls had not stopped Uzumaki from launching a large-scale celebration of his integration into the family. 
barbecue open sky the more musically inclined members of the clan opened their instruments and played several traditional wh paul songs the dancers danced to entertain the clan sincerely naruto had never daring to dream of being able to participate in something like this amidst the screaming the laughter and the complete lack of any kind of inhibition naruto felt more at home than anywhere else he had been during his short life even more surprising was there he had been sitting between Kaisuke and Yako in the place of greatest honor, to his delight, they were nothing like what he had assumed during the interview, they were not tense or severe, in fact. Kaisuke was already devastated and dancing drunk with the dancers to the laughter of the clan. Iko, for his part, chatted happily with nearby clan members, sometimes stopping to answer some of their questions or introduce the clan members who came to congratulate him oh that Shiroki, Nabuko-chan's father, pointed to another clan member who had arrived. Joined Kaisuke's drunken dance while laughing like an idiot. He's a very strong member of the clan. He's also an idiot, another member said, smiling while applauding along with the other members of the clan at the drunken duo's performance in the middle. Of the professional dancers to Naruto's surprise Ao simply sighed and nodded unfortunately more performances soon followed most of them quite normal oh, and that's Junpachi he owns the clan candy shop we have a candy shop Naruto had almost roared with stars on his eyes, I told you he would love it. The shop owner shouted as he pocketed the money that those who had bet against him reluctantly gave him. Oh Yukakun is a very good tailor. Most of our uniforms come from him, said middle-aged craftsman smiled at Naruto and bowed, whenever you want some clothes find me Naruto-sama offered humbly, clan members don't need to pay oh, that's Alaska Kiman is one of our best shinobi said Ayo to Naruto, while pointing at a red-haired girl who had joined Iroki Kaisuke in his silly dance. Unlike them however she was completely sober and apparently doing it just for fun Junichi works as one of our shinobi trainers, Yakun actually serves as one of our clan's messengers, you know he's pretty good at traveling long distances quickly, Yomi-chan owns our clan's police station our restaurant, the older man had to correct himself when he saw the clueless expression on the face the boy's food. Is pretty good. Oh Raymond, Naruto asked directly, his mouth watering at the prospect. Yomi laughed happily. Of course, we can make any kind of ramen you want as long as you like. Let's have the ingredients of course Naruto assured him he didn't hear that part however, since he was too busy kneeling on the ground and raising his hands like some kind of deranged survivor who had just seen a rescue party finally come for him, it was a testament to the, the clan's habit of having strange people, was that none of these antics baffled them much. In any case, Naruto's comical reactions to the various presentations and various facts about the clan, simply they served to increase the cheerful atmosphere of course, since this was the Uzumaki clan being talked about. Eventually someone accidentally punched another in the face, so that person punched back. The punch soon broke out into a small fight that became much bigger when someone accidentally bumped into Kimiko, causing her to drop her cake, Kimiko was not happy within 5 minutes, the small fist fight had turned into a full-on and all-encompassing brawl, even the dancers joined in, and they threw punches and kicks or grabbed crockery as weapons all smiling fiercely as the celebrations lost all. The quorum to make things even more ridiculous, Kaisuke had managed to fall asleep in the midst of the commotion dead to the world, only Naruto and Ayako stayed out of the fighting surprise of the former, even saw Akari Sora throwing some punches, and they both seemed to be having fun, despite the latter's usual distaste for violence, this is some kind of tradition he tried explain Reiko smiling peacefully. At the growing fight and Kari-chan told me Naruto intercepted the eldest before she could continue the eldest parpa nodded ah good well said placid compl Naruto watched the fight for a moment longer before deciding to ask himself a question that was weighing on her chest, tell me grandma why have people been calling me a candidate for clan chief and she showed no signs of being irritated by the name I gave her and she really didn't care she knew I was old enough to qualify and since she was actually a grandmother, it would have been hypocritical of her to feel insulted the clan heads must unite the family, Narchan responded politely giving her her own nickname and moving slightly to the side to avoid an errant plate, there are many of us here, but we are not all left two cells and before. You can become head of the clan you must convince these two to return to the family. Naruto blinked and tilted his head, inadvertently avoiding the broken leg of a now destroyed chair. That was it I just had to convince two groups to come to Kanoha that didn't sound that difficult before you think about running away, you should know that it's not as simple as giving a speech, Yako stepped forward looking amused I came here with my group because I believed in Kashina and in any child she had, I believed Kaisuke's word and I am pleased with what I see, she said. Making Naruto blush at the subtle praise, but not everyone gets carried away so easily, Neri-chan reminded him as he he fixed his gaze on the fight in progress, a small movement of his lips, betrayed his growing amusement at seeing Kaisuke snoring and writhing in his sleep in the middle of the chaos, those who did not come with us need more than words to believe in you they need to see. Achievements power Naruto made he grimaced and crossed his arms. It sounds silly. Family is family, right? 
Ao seemed surprised by the simplistic logic, but smiled warmly at him when he recovered. That's right. Neri Chan agreed, but remember until we all find you. We lived in hiding, we have suffered so much as a Neri Chan family that we are afraid of getting our hopes up. Please try to understand that. Naruto didn't seem very convinced, but I could see that little by little he was beginning to accept the situation. I will try, Grandma. That's all I can ask for. I guess Yako mused before patting him on the head, giving him an unexpectedly warm feeling at the act of affection, now why don't you join your clan members, I'm sure it must have been difficult not to. Participate at first Naruto's eyes shone with excitement can I ask with a smile he had been holding back from joining the fight again due to the presence of the elders, but if she gave him permission w advance fools here or as he jumped into the fray, attacking an older teenager from the clan in the process, Ao laughed behind a raised hand much like Kishina as expected, Kaisuke was not happy when. He woke up the next day of course that was partly due to the crazy hangover that he had, and partly because at some point during the festivities, someone had stabbed him in the crotch therefore his pain was amplified in a way that only a man could know. Worse still was that his Iga neighbors had come to complain about the noise, while he was still recovering, needless to say, Kaisuk was not in a good mood when he addressed the assembled clan. The meeting was now taking place inside the roof scaffolding of the clan temple, so according to our neighbors, it seems like everyone had quite a good time. Last night he growled while already lying on his back with a striking bag resting on his forehead in two lower areas, it didn't take a genius to discern that they were bags of ice, our neighbors even seemed to think that we sneaked into their complex to play pranks on them, Kaisu continued. Hearing some members of the clan swallow audibly, they were especially displeased with the player who ran through his clan compound at this, the entire gathered clan was sweating. None of them had the courage or the madness to point out that he had been the author of that particular trick, having woken up still drunk in the middle of the Uzumaki's joy, and apparently deciding to run away while laughing madly, it was lucky that no one had seen him clearly, since he had been using his technique feature to increase his size yes both sizes anyway, seeing that no one had a death. Wish everyone remained stoically silent as he continued listing the damages and jokes that apparently everyone had done it the night before it was at this point that Naruto realized why they needed a clan compound was not so much to keep people out, but to keep Yuzumaki in without a wall to keep them in and be easy to handle the Yuzumaki were prone to causing massive savage attacks that induced collateral damage whenever they got angry a party wasn't thrown anyway, Kaisu granting, recited every act of collateral damage the clan had ever done caused as a result of the party which considering the amount of elements he was going through, were an impressive few among the clan members in the front row and Naruto leaned towards Akemi who he discovered was the perfect older sister he had always imagined is this it's also a tradition, she asked unsurely, the redeed smiled at her and patted her lap. Which was hurting more and more from sitting so much. Yes, he confirmed to her, much to her dismay, after the party, the conference. No. Worry it will end soon Yatsu for the last time you can't go to a city and proclaim yourself Lord Dragon super awesome, while wearing nothing but underwear and scarf Kaisu continued lecturing, which made Naruto sweat drop at the fact that no one seemed even remotely surprised he was drunk, said drunk exhibitionist defended himself I don't care, and Yuki no more losing his pants near a school Kaisu. Scolded the dark-haired teen, I don't want the local parent group to come and serve a restraining order this time it was an accident I'm not interested, leave your clothes on what was that nothing Kaisuke nodded that I thought lastly, we should address the topic of Naruto's graduation exam, which will be held in two days, he stated gruffly said Rubio stiffened when the topic came up, although Yako. Replaced Kaisuke now that there was had her chance to rant as you know Naruto Yari and the advance guard managed to give you a two-week respite to get you up to speed for the exam, stated Ao since then she has reported that you are acceptable so later today, as many of us as we can will be present to see you succeed in a preliminary exam, to see how you do against the rest of us after that we will. Proceed to train you as much as possible to use Amaki standards before the actual graduation exam, after which we will work out a more appropriate training regimen for you. Understood, Naruto asked calmly. Naruto swallowed. It was bad enough knowing that he had to retake the exam, but now he was going to have another even worse exam against his family. I understand. He acknowledged, nodding, and he smiled. Well nodding well then train a little he suggested it wouldn't be good for the Chuko of our clan to act carelessly, although it had been a suggestion Naruto had the clear feeling that it was nothing H chapter 6 arc of the lost clan gaining exam 2. To say that Naruto passed the clan preliminary exam with flying colors was an understatement the elders had been raving about him when he barely finished the obstacle course, easily the most sadistic exam he had ever had to go through all courtesy of chemist who he insisted that this was his daily training ground. He still refused to believe that. 
when he arrived at the academy early the next day, the elders had insisted on it and had even assigned a small squad to make sure that arriving early Naruto proceeded to completely surprise Aruka and his classmates by not picking a fight with anyone or even being loud to be fair, the looks his caretakers gave him were good deterrent against doing it either way, knowing he wouldn't be able to resist losing control if he sat next to Sasuke or near Sakura Ino, the blonde had chosen the only place where he knew he couldn't have dragged himself into trouble between Shino the guy is creepy and Nat the weird who kept blushing and putting his index fingers together every time he looked at her as expected, even when Aruka shakily began to explain the special graduation exam, the Poor man was still in shock at Naruto's sudden personality change, Naruto found it impossible to cause a scene shy was not as pleasant as a brick wall covered in a layer of ice, while Hinata was silent, although for a different reason, not that he could say clearly besides he could swear he felt Kimiko's gaze on him, daring him to even try, and as the instructor said he slowly regained his balance. Causing the class to look at him with blank expressions, everyone was notified to attend the special graduation exam, due to extenuating circumstances that arose during the normal exam, stated Aruka now more confident and beginning to appreciate the lack of interruptions, as a result of the manipulation of a traitor, now condemned impartiality of the exams you took were questioned by the Yuzumaki he didn't say not wanting to cause problems for his pseudo younger brother, and as such Hokage-sama has determined that in the interest of justice, a new exam should be issued under his direct supervision, naturally all of this caused groans in the class, except for a few Hinata who was too shy to protest Shino, who nodded at the logic used by the Hokage and Aruka Sasak, who grunted and looked out. The window no doubt confident that nothing would change, and Naruto who already they had explained the circumstances, and having been present at the time of the decision in fact, if Iruka had to guess Naruto looked positively dizzy, which was strange considering the boy hated academics, and by extension exams, now the test will be conducted as follows Iruka continued. A little nervous at the blonde's excited disposition, he took a piece of chalk and began to write a list on the blackboard, the first thing is a written exam for which you will receive 20% of the final grade, he stated. Then after the three basic exams will include a physical fitness exam during which your stamina and wits will be tested in a simulated combat scenario, continued finally showing the first real deviation from the standard exam process, this had been a point emphasized by the Hokage and accepted by Amura and Karu, although Danzo had not agreed with the argument that it would severely decrease his number of shinobi unlike before it is mandatory to pass this section of the exam or else you will be immediately disqualified you have all gone through the survival exercises here at the academy so there are no excuses if you fail he issued a warning he looked at the class who had been about to protest quite loudly this part of the test will take place this late after the jinjutsu ninjutsu and the jutsu exams each of which will take up 20% of your grade unlike before it is not necessary to pass the last three with perfect scores, he added looking at Naruto, that had been an obvious case of how biased the regular exam was, apart from the mandatory pass for the physical fitness exam, you will need to accumulate a minimum of 75 points in order to graduate as he finished riding on the Blackboard and circled the 75 that he had written several times finished Aruka watched as his students squirmed in their seats, smiling as he did it, he had no doubt that those who had graduated before the repetition would graduate again, and now that the exam had been rebalanced into a fairer setup, he had no doubt that Naruto would surprise everyone the exam would begin in two hours he claimed this had been set aside to give the kids a chance to study and practice at the last moment, although another reason it was so that the Hokage could free up enough of his schedule to attend the exam. Although you are free to stay here and study or use the outside courtyard to train, you cannot under any circumstances use this time to consult with your clan's families, friends or acquaintances, not from the academy for help or request or receive items from someone outside of this class, normally understood such a warning, would not have needed so much specificity, but Yuka had learned a long time. The go that when it came to shinobi any loophole that one left open would undoubtedly end up being abused. He smiled as he watched the 33 students get their heads together. So, see you in two hours. Don't be late. He shouted as they began. To run out of the room to their lockers or to the compound courtyard Yuzumaki how was it Kaisu cast clearly as Naruto's bodyguard squad knelt before him and the Yako in the meeting room still under construction, noticeably the lack of walls made everything the matter seemed much more ridiculous, Jin a rather muscular looking man with faded red hair, bowed his head a little more or less as expected. Aisu Choro responded the population seems not to know how to react to our arrival, and complaint about Naruto-sama added, we were mostly greeted with confused looks along the way, although there were still occasional looks of condescension suspicion and outright disgust, Kaisuke frowned as he took a drag on his pipe and exhaled smoke, although the team initial exploration had reported the city's apparent antagonism towards Naruto which allowed him to color his expectations about the population's reaction to the arrival of Yuzumaki. 
He admitted that he had apparently put too much sea in the collective memory of the people about the Yuzumaki clan and their deeds in helping Konoha in the past, apparently it was too much to ask the citizens of Konoha to remember their once great allies, we must take into account that Naruto's condition, Sama will undoubtedly make many convey their feelings towards the clan, Iako pointed out. Although sadly perhaps it was too much to hope that they would see beyond his status as a Jinri, and once it became common knowledge that we had claimed him, we were naive too to think that clan status would eliminate that stigma, Kaisuk agreed, nodding as he tapped his pipe lightly, causing some blockage to fall. The question now is, should we try to ingratiate ourselves whatever they want? Our actions will prove them wrong. I vote for ingratiation, Kaisuk declared without losing his temper. Rhythm after his old man had spoken we need the goodwill of the population for our businesses to function properly, allowing hostility to fester, will do us no good elsewhere in the room he spoke, as was customary in Yuzumaki tradition, only the elders and the clan head could vote on such. Decisions although the clan head could overrule the elders any time a tie or close vote occurred unfortunately with only two of the four elders present and no de jure clan chief to decide the tie the two elders were left in a stalemate, you have not changed at all, Kaisuke pointed out Hayako with a frown, you have always liked him a lot give people second chances, and you've changed less hey Yako. Kaisuke replied calmly the Yuzumaki have every right to participate in the world at large, we shouldn't be so eager to reject that right the world at large destroyed our nation, and our family Iako replied, they abandoned us without a second thought. Kaisuke frowned. The last few days had been a wonderful reminder of the happiness and benign chaos that the reunited Yuzumaki were capable of, but apparently he had chosen to forget. The politicking that accompanied a council of elders meeting in particular the issue of the shinobi world's abandonment of Uus had been an argument that without the emergence of the imminent fall of Yuzushio and the Yuzumaki's subsequent decision to split for security reasons would have threatened with civil war Yuzumaki, even when Yuzin Kuni was under siege, we will not have this discussion again hey. Yako Kaisuke stated firmly this council is not complete and we do not have any clan head to join. Pronounce on him reminded his counterpart the faded red-haired woman looked at Kaisuk for a moment before reluctantly nodding, regardless of whatever disagreements the two elders had they knew that the clans was now more important than ever to have an ideological split so early in the clan meeting. Would only have catastrophic consequences. Instead, Kaisuk turned his attention to the red-haired woman silently kneeling next to Jin in a similar pose, silently waiting to be called. What about you? Hey Ori what happened to our attempts to approach the clans that had been the second part of the plan proposed and accepted by Kaisuke for the Yuzumaki clan to settle in Konoha, the first was to evaluate the feelings of the population towards them, and at the same time approach the established clans with a little luck shinobi professionalism, would overcome any personal recriminations they might have. Towards Naruto we have had partial success Kaisuke Choro responded with absolute professionalism, without showing not once any sign of discomfort, at having witnessed a disagreement between the elders, the Nere and Akimichi, seem willing to trade and recognize us as friendly acquaintances, although the third of that family alliance the Yamanaka, has chosen to take a more reserved approach they claim. The want to see our contributions first before making his decision what about the others Ao questioned while his counterpart nodded in approval the Inuzuka seemed to distrust us, Kori responded immediate, given your clan's penchant for animal perspectives on life, my team has come to the conclusion that this is due to your need to know where we stand in a canine hierarchy in short whether we are. Alphas or followers Kaisuke snorted that sounds good he said deadpan, I can think of a few clan members who would love to resolve that matter, me too, Iako said with a ghostly smile, yet he maintained his stern facade, what else, figs are more troublesome, Cory continued, frowning. He frowned for the first time when he mentioned that the clan's neighbors in numerical terms are the closest to us, although there is still a large gap that does not diminish quickly, he explained however before coming here, it was enough to guarantee having a significant portion of prestige that now in their eyes we have also stolen our stock during the holidays, as well as our general reputation. The uproar seems to have struck a chord with them, and they are currently standing in the way of any agreement. Preferential trade with us, and they seem to have little patience with our presence within their enclosure. The two elders exchanged glances without knowing how to proceed. This was really expected, the Yako commented with a small sigh of defeat in terms of the personality of the clan, we are too much of a force. Opposite of them not to mention that insufferable pride of his growled Kaisuke, as he closed his eyes to reflect on the topic Ayo, and turned to Kori what's up with the rumors about them she asked, is it true Kaori nodded, it is one of my men was able to take a look at the seal on the forehead of a branch member, it is not one of ours he stated with conviction however, it appears to be a bastardized. 
The detention seal he added as he took out a scroll and unravel letting the elders see the reproduction of the seal The two elders stared hard at the seal for a moment before disgust appeared on Kaisuke's face bastardized He grunted those parameters of pain Don't have to be there Heyo it was more conservative with his opinion on the other hand It also seems to have integrated elements of Yura Shish pointed out however it is specifically directed at parts of the genetic code Kaori nodded to both elders. Mary agrees Shorosama informed them it seems likely that what they have told us about politics from the Hia towards Suketo and Jenka. Beatruyo shook his head sadly, while Isuk frowned deeply. The sealing arts are used to keep the family in line. Kaisuk grumbled in disgust. Embarrassing agreed Yako absolutely embarrassing however unfortunately it's out of our influence. Kaisuke sighed before taking another drag and letting out smoke. What's up with the others they've been integrating well into their new assignments. It's too early to tell Shoro Samajin replied however there seems to be there has been little friction between our clan members and the shinobi forces in. General, the animosity seems contained towards the non-combatants as mentioned above, at least some good news, Eko grumbled, remind the clan that we expect reports on your work every two weeks, if there's any sign of suspicious activity within the ranks of Konoha, we can't afford to ignore it. Isuke was willing to object to that, but had to hold back since he was already he had grudgingly accepted such reports in a previous meeting with Eko. The truth was that as much as he wished he could implicitly trust the population of Konoha, there was too much risk that they could be sold to their enemies, in which case it was necessary for Yuzumaki to keep his eyes open for any warning signs of betrayal. This depressed the old man greatly, but it was something he had had to accept. Jin Kaori, you can go, he said kindly to the two shinobi. He didn't even blink when they suddenly lost sight of him. Vista instead turned to Hayako and sighed. Now since we've gotten that old monkey to accept the survival exam, do you think it's a good time to mention that other thing to him? Ao's sly smile was all the response he had. Needed the training yard was the embodiment of chaos, completely nervous about Aruka's lecture on the upcoming exam marathon the students in Naruto's class had run around digging up old exam notes heck, anything that had a shred of information some girls even broke to cry at several moments, and the sudden stress affected them. Sakura, to Naruto's approval, was one of the few along with Nino and Hinata who managed to stay together, although she quickly broke up. It became evident that this was solely due to her self-confidence and her academic performance. The physical conditioning part on the other hand had her in a tizzy. In fact, most of the girls in the class seemed equally concerned about the addition of such a thing. Proves what the boys had not realized except perhaps Shikamaru Choji Shino and Kiba was that as a result of preconceived perceptions of what qualified as beautiful, regardless of the fact that they were just entering their adolescence, most of the girls had very unbalanced diets that left them with very little protein in their bodies, and as such muscle mass and stamina the strongest girls in the class were as expected Ino Hinata and no wonder the Yamanaka clan were experts in psychology, without no matter how old the patient was, Yamanaka and Noichi, the current head of the clan and Ino's father quickly took advantage of his daughter's psychological development and noticed her slow progression towards eating disorders before immediately stopping it as such. Despite having spent months furious with her father, Ino was still one of the healthiest girls in the class. Although she still lacked muscle mass and Nat on the other hand, firstly she was from the Iga clan and secondly she wasn't too worried about impressing others. Certain duck-haired boy this meant two things one that neither his father nor the elders of his clan would ever allow him to follow the example of the other girls, and by making him weaker than they already thought he was of course and two, he did not feel the need to adapt to other girls' definition of beauty, especially since her mother before she died had always called her a beautiful girl. In fact in terms of appearance Hanada had little to no confidence issues in any case her shattered self-confidence revolved mainly if not entirely regarding her combat skills as a shinobi, her appearance was always in second place, while her ability to distinguish herself in the field was always in first place. Which is why her clan considered her she was a failure and her self-confidence was still low, unlike her cousin from Branch House. She just didn't have the intuitive ability for Jen. No, that wasn't quite right. She had the ability for it. She just hated the idea of harming others. However what this meant was that both girls had an advantage over their competition in the physical conditioning test and were therefore more focused on their own areas of weakness, Tujutsu Purino Ninjutsu Paranata, on the side of the boys most concerns revolved around the written test and the Jinjutsu exam, since the fine chakra control that the latter demanded was not something the boys were too inclined to practice, even Sasuke the prodigy of the no Bane class. Lazing around since he started studying the moment class ended call the boy whatever you want he was a diligent student at all times however, what surprised most of the class was seeing Nara Shikamaru studying like a possessed man, or the living monument to the lazy bachelor stereotypes, didn't care about passing with flying. 
colors, but the increase in the minimum passing score to 75 points and the inclusion of the survival test were indicators that he had to get going for a maybe at first. He hadn't bothered to go beyond the 75 points in his calculations, but a whispered comment, read threat of Dino, about ratting out his mother, had banished the pineapple-haired boy's laziness and made him roar at his classmates too. Tell him. Left alone as he foamed at the mouth while studying like crazy only Choji stayed close to his friend during the Shikamaru crisis Naruto for his part stayed mostly outdoors, knowing that he sucked at Jinjutsu hair octet ninjutsu and was passable at Tajutsu, the part written well I had learned enough under the watchful eye of Maki Amaya and Sora thanks to her Kajbunin survival exam no. Problem living alone for most of your life guarantees survival skills first level or an early death, therefore he focused on the only thing he could improve during the short rest, his tajutsu however who to ask for help Kiba would have been the girlfriend choice, but the wild boy quickly realizing that he sucked at too many classes, had unleashed studies like Shikamaru's said lazy boy would in turn. Probably find a way to frame himself for some horrible crime if he dared to interrupt his study marathon, and Choi was more worried about the part written that for the rest of the exam Shino no, the bug boy scared Naruto, always looking at you silently behind those dark glasses, Naruto shuddered he thought about challenging Sasuke, but the boy was ignoring everyone while studying that left the girls. What he didn't attract Naruto a lot since he hated fighting with women it seemed so bad on the other hand he remembered that most of them seemed to be on par with him and Tajutsu Ino for example, he was practically where he had been before being picked up by the clan Uzumaki plus she was very intelligent, always scoring at the top of the class alongside Shino and Sasuke if anyone could determine. Any notable flaw that her family had not been able to reach it was her plus you know she was practicing Tajutsu at the time, so why not? What not to take advantage of the situation by approaching his partner blonde raised his hand in greeting and smiled Osu Ino Ino stopped mid kata to look at Naruto he didn't particularly hate the boy, but sometimes he found him annoying having said that he had made a huge improvement in his books, having abandoned the horrible fashion faux pas he called a tracksuit, what do you want Naruto asked. Rudely don't you see I'm training sweating at the hostel greeting Naruto showed his stubbornness by not backing down mama, tried to push away the hostility without much effect, I was just thinking oh Kangi seriously, she scoffed and gasped Naruto flinched but kept his composure, since you're practicing tojutsu, why don't you practice with me, I'm trying to solve the problems of my style, but my family has not been able to solve everything, being part of one of the distinguished ninja clans of Konoha. Ino of course had found out that Naruto's estranged family had arrived and welcomed him, although she was happy for the blonde thinking that no child should leave without the warmth that the family gave him, that would not make him any less idiotic and annoying, but she was still right. He could practice wine tastings until the cows came home, but none of that would compare to the real sparring experience she clicked her tongue in annoyance okay, but help me Naruto if you try something funny she threatened after all there was a reason girls and boys faced each other in segregated groups, the temptation was too great for boys going through puberty, like so as not to try something. With her classmates Naruto raised his hands in self-defense I know I know he quickly reassured her, I won't do anything I promise Ino still kept a suspicious look directed at him, but nodded at his promise she assumed that was it. It would have to be enough okay agreed rules only to jutsu no paralyzing blows, nothing that could leave the other out of shape for the exam Naruto offered and did not not agree with the term sounds good, let's go he took his blonde partner to the sparring circle where she adopted a stance Naruto wasted no time in doing the same in front of her, do you want to give the signal, Naruto asked as he slipped into what seemed to be a bastard form of the gen stance, greatly surprising Ino and Inada, who had taken a small break from her ninjutsu training to spy on Naruto with Ayanada, and did not regain her calm thinking that Naruto had just seen Hinata train at some point and decided that the fighting style was great, satisfied with that mental conclusion nodded yes at 3 Naruto nodded 3 vocalized his muscles or what passed for muscles in the thin girl thinking 2 continued Naruto his own muscles stiffened one neither of them vocalized as their eyes turned. Nero zero in an instant Naruto's eyes widened as he gracefully or what passed for elegant at 13 years old, swerved on his heels, easily dodging the sudden Hino kick that would have knocked the blonde down in one fell swoop if he had still stayed. Naruto quickly aimed his open palm at Ino's ribs, only for the girl to lean forward and use her extended leg as a pivot to launch another kick at Naruto, who quickly jumped to the side, avoiding this also in two movements. Naruto had impressed Ino who admitted that she had never seen a fighting style like that before in her life she had imagined from Naruto's stance that he would be copying the Hyuga's way of fighting, which although it could be said that it was mostly offensive it was still pretty simple, no one she had fought before had used circular movements to fight. Grimacing as she returned to a prepared stance. She watched cautiously as Naruto began to move in circles around her as she moved. 
she tried hard to even out, never showing him her exposed areas, unfortunately she wasn't used to moving so much in the same place, and finally tripped slightly over herself, which was all Naruto needed with a grunt of effort Naruto launched another barrage of attacks at. Ino's exposed side that she quickly dodged cursing as she realized he was now on the defensive, where the hell had the boy learned to fight like that? Every time he sparred against Sasuke he would simply attack his opponent like a bull. Quickly returning to her stance she lunged towards the blonde boy, determined to regain the momentum of the fight, by throwing a punch, she was surprised to see Naruto deflected and use his momentum to close the distance until he was too close for any type of attack to be able to. Effective Yuzumaki Achis yelled with both arms extended forward Futago and Kyuzo, what sounded like a really extravagant technique was simply for the purposes of this fight, that Naruto hit Hio's stomach with both open palms, with all his strength throwing her back however, despite her incomplete state, the technique reinforced by Naruto's sheer natural strength was enough to knock the breath out of. The Yamanaka heiress as she landed abruptly on her back and jade painfully Naruto remained in his standing position attack for a second before realizing what he had done suddenly worrying that Ino would kick his ass for hurting her so much, he quickly rushed over and bowed deeply as he he apologized for two things that no male opponent would have ever seen him do oh, I'm so sorry and he didn't. Apologize again and again as he helped the blonde to stand up the attempt failed, he simply left the girl sitting on the floor, which it was a bit of an improvement, the two imagined Jade still trying to control her breathing, what the hell was that Naruto asked with wide eyes, he could barely believe how easily she had been taken down by someone he had estimated was on her level in Tejutsu just two. Weeks ago Naruto on the other hand was scratching the back of his head with a nervous smile, he he laughed nervously, it's something my clan member taught me your clan knows, Jenny no almost shouted catching the attention of some students, before Shikamaru's hysterical roar of shut up was heard from inside the building, both Hino and Naruto sweat dropped as the collapse of the lazy yin boy Natu had given up his training to investigate this apparent leak in the fighting style of his family, also sweated at Nara boy's crazy intensive session. Although he quickly recognized that whatever Naruto had been wearing, it wasn't Jen. Said troublemaker confirmed his suspicions, shaking his head with a smile. No, according to my cousin, we can't use those things, he said, crossing his arms. Hands behind the head and looking at the sky he calls the style the Yuzumaki style trigrams palms, he corrected her, instead of using chakra to alter the chakra spirals we use chakra manipulation to improve our strength he said, although it didn't sound to him like he was reciting a lecture from memory without them both knowing it, and that Jay gasped as he quickly realized the potential of such a style. In the hands of a fully offensive warrior with a powerful constitution, and he couldn't have gotten there first if it wasn't for the fact that he had no idea how it actually worked. The gentle fist had to take his fellow blonde's words at face value, but why the circles? She half asked, half demanded. Naruto shrugged. Did you realize how hard it was to hit me, he pointed out, getting a sympathetic nod from Hino, yes, my cousin gave me a good time with his style, if you think I was slippery, he's practically untouchable, Hino's mind was working quickly as she digested this information. Her first her instinct was to gossip like crazy about this new style, but her ninja training and her father's teachings immediately ruled it out since Naruto for better or worse was a citizen of Konoha, and therefore ally the allies did not betray their allies on the other hand, he felt his respect for the troublemaker increase a few notches fighting under a discipline that actually required good. Discipline it must have been hell for the hyperactive boy it spoke well of his character, the fact that there was was able to push himself and learn the style, although that raised another question, one that bothered both Ino and Inada, how the hell had he learned to achieve this skill in two weeks, when asked Naruto gave Ino a smile of apology and a bow I'm sorry I can't say it yet she apologized I. Gave my word to the elders and was not about to protest, but she found herself unable to do so, she knew what that was like when the clan elders in the absence of a clan chief, they ordered something she did it without hesitation, it was something that both she and Hinata could relate to. Although they were both deeply disappointed by the lack of answers however looking at her watch, Ino noticed that only 10 minutes had passed since the end of the day. Training which had taken less than that that meant they still had over an hour and a half before the exam a large part of her was furious at having been defeated so easily, but her competitive streak refused to give in ready for another match she challenged him, as she stood up and dusted herself off, she gave Naruto a confident smile, this time I won't fall so fast, Naruto smiled happily for not. Alienating the girl on his part Hinata felt something weigh on her heart as she watched Naruto accept happily Ino's challenge, why couldn't it be her, he was training against why couldn't he trust her to improve of course there was a girlfriend reason for all of this, her self-confidence was so shot that Naruto rarely got to see her in action, like she had no idea how strong she was or could be so. There was no real reason to seek her out for training. In the end Hinata had to settle for watching Naruto's fights making mental notes on his stance mistakes and openings. 
if I couldn't say it to his face, maybe a written note would be enough soon the time came, and the exams were upon the 33 students all of them filtering into the classroom like prisoners on death row even Shikamaru, who had been expelled by Aruka to prepare the room for Itsumi's guests and the Kaj, the 33 students bowed to the excited guests in the room before reaching their seats. Silently gossiping about the newcomers to the village. Itsumi's arrival had unsurprisingly sparked all sorts of reactions. Under the sky throughout Kanoha there were those who were excited by the survival of Kanoha's former blood allies, those who were skeptical of the newcomers and their boisterous ways, and those who were silent. Hostile due to past grudges between their ancestors and the Uzumaki, not that any of that surprised a clan of red-headed madmen, after all, there wasn't a town under heaven that didn't have a pair of feuding families most of the time, simply buried the animosity, and were assigned to different squads, so there wasn't much reason to intervene. Beyond that when Naruto entered he did the usual bow before looking at the elders of his clan and smiling widely greeting them. Happily even with a distinguished family supporting him, Naruto could not avoid some of his most typical behaviors, to the surprise of all the elders they returned the smiles and greetings to despite their exalted positions as guests of the box, stop waving and move. Shikamaru hissed. Behind him with that crazed look still in his eyes, Naruto began to sweat as the boy bowed in record time and ran to his seat, looking at the clock. As if the object was his eternal enemy hell, if the Nara boy wasn't careful and Naruto would bet he would break the pencil he was holding from how tightly he gripped it, apparently the boy took it very seriously, the threat of a reprimand from his mother, taking note of that for future use and abuse, Naruto took a seat between Shino and Hinata, who gave their usual greeting to the blonde, read a nod from. Shino stuttering from Hinata then when the rest of the students took their seats, Hiruka he moved to the center of the front of the room, and he smiled at them holding a stack of papers in his hands, it's good to see that everyone arrived on time, even Yushikamaru said the scar tuning with a smile he had been quite amused, seeing the air of Nara go crazy with the exam, since there was had to put up with the boy's laziness for too many years as I said before this will be the first part of his exam reminded the students this part is a written test of 34 questions you have 2 hours to finish, announced please do not start answering until I have finished 5 minutes of taking the exam was all it took for the announcement. However in that time Shikamaru seemed to be on the verge of suffering several dozen heart attacks and brain aneurysms, smiling at the different reactions of his students. Yuka looked at the guests in the room who nodded in response, raising her hand as she looked at her watch. She waited until the second ticker reached the exam mark. The announcement begins. As soon as she finished saying that, the sound of pencils scratching like crazy was heard. Coming from everyone smiling Aruka took a seat to the left of Hokage, who looked at the students like a proud grandfather, together the two guests Hokage and Chunin prepared to wait while the students diligently filled there while they were doing it. The exam students took note of various incidents during the test. At minute 30, a girl suddenly burst into tears and ran out of the room, causing some worried glances, but otherwise no one else seemed to dissuade her from her task. However, Haruka had she had to leave to make sure the girl was okay, she still admitted that she was not prepared for the exam and agreed to stay one more year, even reminding her that she did not have to pass perfectly, did not deter the girl later at 45. Minutes Aruka and the others began to notice that Shikamaru was singing something to himself in a low voice as they strained their ears, they almost burst out laughing when they realized that he was maniacally chanting Keat over and over again, as a show of determination after an hour other girls apologized before crying loudly once they left the classroom. They also chose to stay. One more year, a few minutes later, the first of the boys to leave school did so after signaling his frustration by hitting his head. Head against the desk over and over again. Shortly after, another child dropped out after literally laughing like crazy and then imitating a cow. Suffice it to say that when the exam ended, only 25 students remained of the original 33. Those who remained, however, felt satisfied that they had curiously enough, however, the exam itself had not been as difficult as the number of dropouts suggested. Rather because of what Aruka had gathered was the pressure to perform under the scrutiny of the clan elders, and the Hokage I added that pressure to the fact that they also had to perform well in the survival test, which not everyone excelled in, and I had a recipe to eliminate the good weak ones from the pack of course, there was no way another replay would be issued for those reasons if any. Parent wanted to object to the Hokage he simply had to inform him that his children would have to act under even more pressure, if they could not bear the pressure of taking a simple written exam in his presence then or not, they were either prepared for shinobi life or were not suited for it. The next three exams on their part went smoothly, as these had remained fairly similar to the ones they had taken two weeks ago. The remaining students felt more comfortable even with the special spectators. Additions however it was not until the Tejutsu exam that the class began to witness some changes, having narrowly failed the Jinjutsu exam which hardly left him out of the class. Race, especially if he obtained the grade he estimated for himself in the written part. 
Naruto had passed the Ninghutsu exam under the pleased gaze of the elders of his clan, however, when Tejutsu emerged, the elders were more than satisfied with his performance, they were euphoric. Although they didn't show it outwardly for once he trained passably in Tejutsu, which put him on the level of most of the boys in his class, Naruto had held his own admirably against Kiba, who had won, although it was close even after they finished the Inuzuka just stared at him for a moment before smiling and extending his clenched fist to the Jinchuriki who smiled back and bumped it with his own. While Lakamaru howled happily he may have lost the fight, but at least he earned the respect of the clan elders and Kiba, even Sasuke had looked at him with pleasant surprise. Although he quickly returned to his melancholic personality, however, when the training was over, the students finally got nervous as the survival test loomed, this was the real unknown of the exam, and they all had to admit they were a little intimidated taking the kids to an isolated area a mile from the wall, although the students couldn't determine that thanks to an ingenious jinjutsu that the Okage applied, Haruka turned towards his students with a wide smile that appreciated the nervousness that he also had at having to subject them to this test now, the rest is over. It's time for the survival part of the exam, he said cheerfully. The test is quite simple. For the next 48 hours, a squad of Chunin will comb the area for you. Your task is to simply hide from sight and survive off the ground. We'll give a full score to those who manage to remain hidden for 48 hours, the probationary score is awarded at 36 hours a little less than that, and I'm sorry, but you're not cut out to be a Ganon, yet he apologized in advance any question Sakura Ruka immediately raised her hand and nodded, hoping that she had something to ask. Isn't it dangerous for us to do this outside the walls? She asked with fear. After all, they weren't even Ganon yet. Hiroka nodded. A valid point. Sakura responded with a smile, causing him to she reciprocated the praise, the answer is no, thanks to the help of the seal masters of the Uzumaki clan, he pointed to the two elders who nodded or bowed to the students, the testing area has been placed within very strong barriers that will keep any undesirables away long enough for Kanoha to come and rescue you if you need it. Also, with the chun in at hand, you will be safe in case of unexpected problems. Sakura nodded, still a little doubtful about the safety of the test, but appeased enough to let it go, when seeing no more questions and quite a few anxious faces, Hiroka smiled before looking at Hokage, who once again nodded turning towards his students, Hiroka raised his hand, okay then from the moment I say it you. We'll have an hour to hide, after which the tuning will begin to look for you remember you must remain uncaught in order to pass the genin candidates looked at each other suspiciously at that reminder, before looking at Aruka, their enthusiasm barely diminished smiling Aruka nodded very well, let's go in an instant the 25 students jumped out of sight, Aruka sighed as he turned to Lockage and the two. Elders Yuzumaki well that's it Yusen nodded his aged head with a smile, quite agreed please inform Izumo to have his team ready in an hour, Yukon ordered politely with a nod, the Chunin disappeared from sight already on the way to Kanoha then the Hokage gave the two Yuzumaki a smile well, then some bad on who reaches the passing mark 0.5 hour, then returning to his usual schedule of wreaking havoc. And chaos in and out of the classroom this time however he was in his element moving quickly from branch to branch Naruto, finally settled in a small ditch near river, having noticed a slight crease in the side from the trench that was dug just under a large old tree, judging by it, he would have guessed that it was the home of some animal. But the lack of freshly moved land told him that it had been abandoned for a long time with some effort and a lot of effort, not using chakra to not give himself away, Naruto carved the crease with his kunai slowly digging a tunnel under the tree, finally realizing that the hunt had not yet begun, he slapped his forehead and began feeding his hands with chakra, which served to accelerate his speed. Of digging until he soon had a hole narrow but spacious enough to hide in. It wasn't the most glamorous hiding place, but the nearby river gave him quick access to water, and the smell of earth that covered it ensured that his smell he was masked, which amounted to critical lessons in his survival classes however, just as he was about to settle in, he heard someone approaching having accidentally broken a tree branch with one of his steps cursing Naruto assumed he had lost track of time and that the hunt had begun cursing even more, he realized that he must have chosen a place near the searcher's starting point, unfortunately not having had time to mask the entrance of his small cave Naruto just prayed that no one would look towards the side of the ditch however, his hopes were dashed when he heard a somewhat familiar female voice say it's in a hole on the side of the ditch, an even more familiar sigh followed that. Statement B Naruto a serious hole blinking as he recognized the voice Naruto came out of the hole and slowly poked his head over the edge of the ditch, only to see Shikamaru and Hinata towering over him Shika Hinata, what the hell are they doing you two here he? Demanded ignoring the girl's flinch at his confrontational tone, you should hide Shikamaru's side as he slapped his face in exasperated moron, there is no way we can pass this exam if we hide alone, he said to Naruto who blinked ha look at our opponents are chunin chunin, that means they are good enough to perform real tracking missions, after missing ninjas or bandits, do you really think we can hide? 
from trackers experienced Shikamaru pointed out, especially if they have 47 hours to look for us he added, only to see Naruto squirm a little more, as his logic destroyed Naruto's, but Yuka sensei protested Naruto would have said something about the fact that he had previously managed to hide from Jonin level shinobi, but Hinata interrupted him at that moment, and Aruka assents, and then I said we couldn't. Team up and Naruto-kun spoke Anada however unable to look him in the eyes, due to the strong blush he had he wore, that only we had to stay hidden wrong, said Shikamaru with a sigh, he unlike Naruto, he did notice the shudder I mean the hidden part Anada didn't say we had to stay hidden, he said not to get caught, he emphasized the word Naruto's eyes widened, they lit up with understanding oh Hinata also. Quickly understood what Shikamaru was saying seeing that his audience was with him surprisingly even Naruto Shikamaru nodded so this is what I propose he stated while crouching down quickly imitated by Anada Naruto stood looking over the edge of the ditch we joined together and built a suitable hiding place, he emphasized the word while looking at Naruto, who had the decency to blush your concept was good but flawed Naruto the ditches are the first place where they would search just like the tops of the trees, where do you suggest we go, then Naruto asked simply assuming that everyone agreed to work together Shikamaru and Janata noticed this, which earned Naruto a nod of Shikamaru, and a happy laugh, some might even say ecstatic from Hinata, I explored several places that I think are suitable. But the help of Hinata stated Shikamaru in a no-nonsense tone she was the only one I could find in time, before we all Shikamaru looked at it if we could I would, he stated with some irritation. However, we are halfway through the hour, and the Chunin are not going to strike, so hunting our comrades will take too much time. In fact, I suggest that we go to the designated place and start working. At the hideout she stated, realizing that the heir of Nara was right Naruto, and Janata nodded before the three of them jumped away our 1tr Hinata had never felt so embarrassed before in her life after finding Naruto and getting him to agree with Shikamaru's plan to his delight, the trio jumped towards the calculated hiding. Place of the Nara heir quickly discovering that he had chosen a fairly flat clearing immediately Naruto had begun to criticize him, accusing him of trying to set them up for failure, until Shikamaru glared at him and told him to shut up so he could explain. In the end it turned out that Shikamaru's idea was brilliant, while everyone else would naturally overlook a clearing as a hiding place, because of his exposed nature, this same characteristic made it one of the places where trackers were least likely to investigate, judging that no one was enough to stay there therefore to win some time, since Shikamaru had calculated that the tuning would know the area and therefore overlook the clearings at first he quickly explained, the second phase of his plan, an underground hideout normally such a feat, would have taken weeks to build, but Shikamaru after having seen Naruto performing the Kaj Bunin during the Ninghatsu test, quickly realized the boy's extraordinary potential as a survival companion as well, with Hinata watching over with Subi. Pugin and Shikamaru leading the effort Naruto and his clones dug a fairly deep hole that then expanded until it became a small cave, fortunately the chakra exercises required by the Yuzum Yachi style had also served to eat away at the ground like a kind of jackhammer while well, Naruto as the cave ended. Shikamaru went to look for some sturdy branches and then built a removable piece of thick grass to block the entrance to his hole. It wouldn't hold up if someone, let's say, jumped out on it, but if one were simply walking on it, it would keep their hideout safe however, it was just as they were celebrating the end of their hastily devised project, Kainath screeched at Armada, having finally spotted a tuning tracking team heading their way fortunately there didn't seem to be any dogs even so, it was enough for the three teenagers to quickly enter the hole. Unfortunately, the hole was not designed for quick entries and exits, so the three they remained in somewhat awkward positions pressed against each other, even as Shikamaru closed the hole just in time for Chunin to appear at the edge of the clearing, hence the current situation of Hinata, having almost been pushed into the hole by Naruto, who he thought had been chivalrous. She entered clumsily and remained trapped right at the mouth of her small cave, unfortunately Naruto was next pressing him tightly against her, fueling both her imagination and her blushing Shikamaru, she put the cherry on top of the uncomfortable situation by hitting Naruto, getting him to press even harder against her, which caused a small squeal, shh. Shikamaru hissed as he put the lid on the hole be it, Naruto, I swear to you, if they catch us, it's not my fault. Naruto protested loudly before receiving a heart attack in the ribs from an irritated Shikamaru, look, I did it the way you wanted, okay. And Naruto-kun, you are you, and that tried to say that she was pressing hard against his chest, which for a 13-year-old girl was had developed ahead of time, although not much, it still embarrassed her a lot, almost as much as the feeling of having her lower back and butt sticking out of the cave next time, don't put people in the holes, Shikamaru was still arguing with Naruto through hisses like if I. Had time to think about that Naruto replied guys Hinata tried to intervene, hoping that the end of the fight meant that Naruto squirmed, ish Shikamaru interrupted her suddenly tense and alert, he paused for a moment before whispering Hinata, can you use your Byakugan to see what is going on, he asked only the whispered name of the girl's cage inky he replied, soon after he heard a sigh of relief they 
are moving away, Hinata reported 10 Met 2030, they are out of the clearing and heading north, both Naruto and Shikamaru sank in relief however that didn't last long as their argument returned to full speed, see you almost got us to catch you troublesome idiot I heard, if you wanted a bigger hole you should have said it, well I was fucking Hinata's side only 47 hours left, plus hour 5 after there. Difficult start Naruto had finished a wider and more accessible entrance to the cave, while well, Hinata kept watch with her bloodline activated, they had managed to get out of the narrow hole making Naruto use his palms enhanced with chakra to carve around them, finally getting Hinata to fall into the cave, followed by Naruto, and then Shikamaru for almost the next hour, Naruto and Shikamaru argued about what had gone wrong and Janata tried working as a peacekeeper with little success Shikamaru was unusually quite nervous for the exam, so Hinata knew she had to blame Ino, even so when she realized her part in the bakel, that they had barely managed to get out of she acknowledged her part of the blame, and was he crouched down in the designated spot in the cave to think moments later his eyes opened. Again and he described a more detailed plan to test the exam, which inadvertently caused Naruto to lose his bet with Hinata that Shikamaru had just fallen asleep. Now he owed him two fences. Either way the next few hours had gone relatively well all things considered with the wider opening Shikamaru was forced to create a larger cover, which he complained about throughout his work plus to survive Shikamaru had pointed out the need for water and food Naruto was in charge of that given his ability to use shadow clones, by creating around 12 of them, he ordered them to move out and look for food while he stayed with Hinata who monitors clones from the safety of their base camp, that way if he saw that one of them was being followed or tracked, he could warn Naruto in time to dispel them. Meanwhile said blonde worked on finishing a small hole in the cave even deeper, since Hinata had told him that there was an underground stream of water running a few meters down as he did so he reflected on how much help Hinata had given in this exam, after all, she helped explore this place she was watching when he the hiding place was over, and now when they went out to look for food and found the water fountain to be honest he was a bit perplexed after all before this test, he had very little knowledge of Hinata's abilities, she had always seemed like a weird shy incapable to vocalize a lot in any case she also seemed intelligent, given that she had little trouble following Shikamaru's train of thought, although he had never seen her participate much in class in general she was defying. His vision of his world and Naruto he didn't really know what to do with it well maybe that sounded a bit exaggerated, but for Naruto it wasn't living alone for 13 years, hadn't worn down his determination to get people's recognition, but it did serve to solidify some profiles he had built up of people over the years for example, once Ino recovered from the shock of Naruto's new form of Tejutsu it actually became a decent challenge which he wouldn't have expected at all, for the gossip Shikamaru as it turned out really was a huge brain when he put his ass in motion, what he now realized was possible in the face of the threat of ratting out Hinata for her part, was an incredible observer and an intelligent girl, although a little shy also Hinata had a really nice laugh which she discovered when she finally reached the underwater current and managed to spray her face with water she couldn't hold back a giggle, which in turn made Naruto blink before he smiled and gave a thumbs up. Water just like you said Hinata-chan good job he praised her, although he was confused as to why she suddenly cried and turned scarlet Shikamaru had stared at the two of them at the dirt ceiling and sighed exasperatedly muttering troublesomely before closing his eyes and prepared to take a nap, shortly after his two companions did the same 43 hours left hour 13, Hinata ordered Shikamaru high recognized. The shy girl before making a seal with her hand back again he murmured instantly the veins around his eyes swelled, giving him a frowning expression that never failed to scare Naruto at least the frown was just for the initial step, otherwise he would have to keep looking away from those angry eyes, a pause okay, asked Naruto impatiently, waiting wasn't one of their strong suits. The girl blushed. There's no danger. She informed the teams that they aren't even close to any of the others around here. Shikamaru asked, a little irritated when they woke up. Two hours ago, Naruto had complained that they didn't. It was only fair that no one else benefit from their teamwork. Even Shikamaru's assurances that the smarter members of the class would realize that had not persuaded the blonde to back down from his demand that they help their classmates. Class damn the blonde's instinctive sense of justice and no wait, he quickly corrected himself before focusing his sight on an area where he could have sworn he saw a shadow that served to widen his vision much more clearly in that area, causing him to gasp e, it's Kivkun and Shikamaru groaned he just realized what's his condition the girl nodded seems exhausted, reported e, he continues looking around. Akamaru is with him Shikamaru nodded, they're probably chasing him he concluded before clicking his tongue in irritation, either this is not good, why the hell no Naruto demanded we can just go up, grab him and bring him back here, and risk him tracking our scent to the hideout answered Shikamaru, even if they mask our smells, what happens to our footprints, these are non-amateur chunin so what do 
you propose we do leave Kiba hanging? Naruto replied hotly alone shut up for a second Shikamaru ordered as he made a circle with both hands and crouched down in his area of the cave, let me think Kanata. let me know if Kiba's trackers are getting close to him h it was 5 minutes before Shikamaru opened his eyes, and at that moment Naruto was about to blow his eyelid off I got it, he stated the air of. Nara before from looking at Naruto Naruto make 13 shadow clones and send them to Kiba there have 12 of them go in different directions while the last one masks the footprints and brings Kiba here have Kiba help you and remember to take the longest possible route here while masking your footprints and scents with a little luck the tuning should hold on to the footprints and scents of the 12. Clones why don't I go personally asked Naruto Shikamaru glared at him, you thought Kiba would fit very well in this hole, asked the kid sarcastically, you will be excavating Kiba's place once this is done, prepare a secondary exit for us, in case we need to leave, and the Chunin find the main tunnel Hinata keep an eye on Kiba, if the trackers get too close, we will have Naruto send some more clones to distract them more offensively, that's fine, said Naruto with a smile, he already liked plan bh, Hinata acknowledged, fine, he ordered you. The heir of Nara, hour 17, fortunately for Shikamaru's peace of mind, plan B didn't. Had unfortunately been necessary for his peace of mind now he was stuck with the two biggest charlatans in his class, worse yet they all had to share a cave, and when two of its four occupants had the attention span of a chipmunk with a mind on a sugar high, Shikamaru did his best not to strangle them. While they were sleeping he had considered that plan, but discarded it as being too troublesome that said if the two of them didn't stop alternating between fighting for the food and fighting over the tight space he couldn't be held responsible for his actions aside, Hinata looked at her leader with worried concern that he might really explode 31 hours left hour 20 Shikamaru stared at Naruto I hate. You Naruto is very important to me, you understand that, he said to the blonde in a dead tone as he processed his situation. Hinata laughed to the side as her new addition to the cave. I hit Shikamaru on the head. Oh, come on, Shikamaru couldn't let them catch her, he argued. Lon doesn't listen lalalala Shikamaru expressed loudly while covering his ears with his fingers once again, Ino took it upon herself to punish him for his rudeness, by giving him another smack Kiba stared at Shikamaru before leaning towards Hinata, this happened often before me the smiling heiress will arrive, Hyuga just nodded 28 hours left hour 25, are you doing this on purpose Shikamaru accused. While Naruto scratched the back of his neck shyly while Sakura felt at home among the others chatting animatedly, there are 23 hours left hour 28 Byakamaru, I'm not a chew toy, Naruto roared for the seventh time that night, when the puppy bit his leg dreaming that it was a nice soft bone his companions led by an increasingly crazed Shikamaru, but excluding the shy heiress Aiga, they proceeded to beat him within an inch of his life, for interrupting his sleep again 20 hours left hour 36 oh, thank god we are in the final stretch, muttered Shiker, as he woke up tired, having had a horrible night thanks to Kamaru, biting Naruto's thanks to Sakura asking. Sure she heard wrong or Kami yes thanks I we're almost done is what I said Shikamaru quickly responded in disbelief that there really was made that mistake Sakura looked at him for a moment before shrugging her shoulders and returning to her breakfast a pile of wild fences that Naruto's clones had collected Shikamaru for his part, sighed in relief 12 hours left hour 37 well at least it's Choji. Shikamaru stated earning another beating, while Akura and Ino demanded angrily because he had protested their presence, but not his older friends Naruto sighed before welcoming Choji to the cave and quickly summoning some clones to help him finish enough room for him, Yin Nat still in charge of guarding the trackers, smiled at the boy as he greeted everyone politely hour 40 Hinata watched as Naruto and Shikamaru argued again about their new addition, although uh, to tell the truth, she was also somewhat curious about his arrival. Why did you look for us? Shinikan asked curiously. I was following you and you weren't being chazzed. The taciturn boy shifted inside his coat in what she assumed was the aburum equivalent of a shrug. He didn't want to be excluded finally muttered Yin Nat was sweating even when Shikamaru was once again attacked by Ino and Sakura after he called them gossiping old wives 8 hours left hour 46 Shikamaru looked staring at Naruto, the blonde boy shifted restlessly under the gaze of the Nara air, but otherwise remained with his shy smile, what no more surprises Shikamaru asked impatiently as the group. Began their preparations to leave Naruto scratched the back of his neck of course not Shikamaru defended himself, there are only two hours left until the goal Shikamaru growled at that statement, but kept his suspicious gaze directed at the blonde from what I know, you are about to embark on a rescue mission right now to save a damn puppy, what a damn puppy asked Ino, her ears perked up at the unusual. Swear word Sakura also looked at Shikamaru with suspicion Kami damn I said Kami damn Shikamaru corrected himself with a note of hysteria meanwhile Naruto looked at his friend with concern, since the test began Shikamaru had been acting very unusual, where moms are really so scary 2 hours left, the time finally came when the test finally came to an end under the direction of Shikamaru who was at. 
one more unexpected freak factor eight of the graduating candidates emerged from the tunnel and smiled at each other as they realized they had spent the entire 48 hours out of sight and undiscovered Kiba and Naruto fist bumped Choji, ate some fences Sakura and Ino high fived Yin Nat blushed and put his index fingers together, Shino Zumbo, no one really had the nerve to ask how the hell he did that. And Shikamaru was thanking whatever deity the troublesome test was over, and he could returning to their quiet way of life using Hinata as a guide, they proceeded to jump towards where the adults were waiting, although everyone was surprised or not so surprised in the case of Sakura Inoshino and Shikamaru, seeing Sasuke standing there waiting for his appearance, he had been having a hard time for the past two days the look he gave the other eight rookies who seemed well fed and rested was priceless. The Arichiha opened and closed his mouth lightly many times, as if trying to vocalize a question that it just wouldn't come out finally he settled for a one word, question how Shikamaru shrugged we joined together, we made a hole in the ground you know when you say it like that it started Naruto. You shut up Shikamaru snapped reflexively, after having to deal with the hyperactive blonde for so long two days in a row in cramped conditions as expected, Naruto pouted, and Yinnat laughed, the two had been with the crazy Shikamaru the longest during the test, the sound of someone clearing the throat, made the rookies turn towards Lockage, who seemed bewildered by the interaction between the nine. Students well well this is certainly a pleasant surprise nine passes exactly he mused before looking at them individually flanking the Yuzumaki elders nodded as Huka approached them with a smile, proud good job guys praised you as Hokage-sama mentioned you are the only passes for your class, he informed them with a happy smile, and what's more, the nine of you managed to reach the mark of the 48. Hours well done Naruto was not the only one who looked at Sasuke at that announcement, if what Yuka said was true and then the boy had managed to survive alone for the entire 48 hours, without being caught also judging by his appearance, he had not had it easy, which only served to increase the impression yes congratulations, Yuzin repeated with a smile as he raised his pipe smiling at the future. Generation of ninjas it is quite extraordinary really normally we have around 18 graduates, everyone should feel proud of what they have achieved and of having set such a high standard of success for generations to come, the nine rookies beamed with pride yes, even Sasuke momentarily broke his frowning expression to show pride in their work, although he disappeared just as quickly before the others. Praise from Lockage now well if you follow Ruka back to the academy, I think your new forehead protectors are waiting for you added Yusin with a smile, he really enjoyed the way the eyes of the new one's graduates lit up at that and watched them quickly run off after Ruka alone with the two elders, Yuzumaki Iris send, took a deep drag on his pipe before letting out some smoke, looking at the two warily eye. Think you two may be right he stated perhaps there is some merit in your suggestion the two elders simply smiled chapter 7 arc of the lost clan, the Gainan group, it was not often that the Hokage could anger his jonin heck, they were trained to resist that kind of thing, but every time the new exam devised between him and Aruka with occasional input from the Uzumaki elders had been a resounding success to the point that it practically eliminated the need for the teamwork test to this year's graduates, except for one prodigal in particular, but then it was too much to ask for a perfect score on that end on the first try, although in the end, I had decided to leave that requirement for the moment however, with exactly nine students graduating after a grueling two-day survival mission had eliminated the unskilled from the beginning, considering that the only other village capable of boasting that was Kurigakur, and more so due to the fact that whoever graduated during the years of blood mist did it as a result of having the highest number of corpses. It was no small feat. The problem now was the equipment and therefore the current situation in which the three honing instructors he had chosen for this year's graduates were in an uproar, his advisors had wisely warned him that this would be his reaction. Although like them he had agreed that it was their problem not his. The Hokage led, and the Honing followed him whatever their own feelings. In this regard, the origin of this discontent was quite simple, this year there would be no teams. Well, that was not entirely. Exactly, there would be teams, but not in the classic sense of the word. The idea had arisen from a conversation between him and the two. The Uzumaki elders who had told him about old times with him while drinking serve which in retrospect was becoming common among the three veterans in the process, revealed that Yuzushi Ogakure had rejected the cellular structure of four men, including the leader of the Kanoha team from the beginning, something that Yuen admitted he didn't know they discovered that the problem with this was that hype. Overwork the teams to such a point that they became useless if certain missions came up or yes, for example, the mission of a reconnaissance team suddenly became an all-out fight in which they had to retreat, it was inadvisable or intolerable in that situation, the team was so Yuzushi Agakur. Not having exactly the numerical power that Koha had it instituted what they called the Genin group in effect it was no different from Chunin or Honing Po, which were also the standard for Kanoha however Yuzushio had extended this structure to the Gainan in order to more easily assign the shinobi suitable for the right team for the right mission. Furthermore, such ease of changing things allowed the Gainan to get used to working with a variety of partners and bond with their fellow shinobi. 
This in turn meant a much more united shinobi community than even that of Konoha, and strongly encouraged his shinobi to take care of each other, regardless of team affiliations. In addition to Uusa's possession of powerful seal masters, this had been one of the secrets to the village's success. Which allowed him to gain enough fame to justify the subsequent concern and fear of three major shinobi villages and their allies in Konoha however, the idea had not taken hold due in part to the opposition of Danzo and the ancient Hokage, and the lack of need, thanks to its huge. Number Sen Judo Barama founder of the four-man cell agreement, had been particularly against the Utfusio structure, due to the fact that he considered that such an agreement would be difficult to manage in terms of individual education, a big concern in towns as big as Konoha after all. How could a limited amount of John in sense and deal with more than three times his number of students who would? The focus on how would they divide their time Danzo on his part simply echoed of these feelings, while actually opposing the idea that had been raised earlier by him and Dame on the grounds that extensive exposure to other shinobi would quickly erode the suppression training regimen. Of emotions that his Anbur Rai had to continue to undergo despite his age, the old Warhawk was no fool and was well aware that the more a person had to interact with others, the greater the chances that his conditioning would fail, was because that's why he almost never sent more than one root people on a mission at a time. Unless extenuating circumstances required more manpower, Yuan nevertheless believed he had a solution to the Nadame's stated problems with the system. Izushio in short decided to mix the gain and structure of Kano and Yuzushio, more specifically a base of three honing instructors, each of whom mastered a particular field of study, would remain as honing instructors for the group however, for every three gaining older than nine, who graduated an additional instructor would be added as a full-time master consultant and bar or substitute teacher as needed, allowing for a team rotation scheme on C-rank missions. Superiors however to avoid a massive shortage of competent honing for the missions this new structure would only come into effect for the newest batch of gaining going forward in effect, this generation would be the test drive generation, if the system worked, it would remain, if not it would return to the old system, his three honing. Sense and appointees however were perplexed and a little reluctant to commit to such a new and untested system, this is for the best Yuan assured the trio, while Lemur and Karu who had adopted their way of thinking I nodded towards their flanks, conversations with our new allies have shown us that our gain in ranking system is very flawed and in fact has no relevance to the reality we face when becoming tune in where it is very, it's likely that their teams will be divided to meet the needs of the mission, Karu pointed out. She nodded. The old woman gave the three Jonin a stern look. Okama is right. He agreed with this new system in place. We have determined that our shinobi will be trained much more effectively, since none of you are experts in all areas of shinobi training, Amura nodded gravely attacks and you are a world-class shinobi, but where your strengths depend on ninjutsu and tojutsu to jinjutsu, and was they are below yisens in the same way Siratobi san has greater mastery over elemental chakra than either of you, and is much more skilled with weapons and is above most in combat tactics. Battlefield except maybe you attack us, and the Nara admitted knowing that Kakashi was not only a war machine, but also an excellent tactician with this new agreement, they will be able to cover each other's weaknesses and thus give their students a better chance of surviving, and at the same time doing so will strengthen this village he stated. Although from the way he had spoken it was clear it was clear that the last point more than the others was what mattered to Amura by his firm nod Karu agreed on that point, no one could accuse to Amura and Karu of disloyalty towards Konoha, they simply turned out to be more collectivist about it, we couldn't amente, I don't know how to organize joint training sessions, so ask on the while. Scratching the back of his neck in irritation with a lit cigarette between his lips, I mean I know that in Oichi Shikaku and Chauza, they were eager for a new convoy no Shikau, they will have to swallow their expectations, Karu snapped, making the honing shudder, the heening system is not here to satisfy your dreams, but to train and raise the new generation of defenders of Kokur Karu spoke you in giving. His former teammate a stern look the old woman clicked her tongue in irritation, but gave in to the Hokage and remained silent, You sighed as he returned his attention to the three jonin, although I may not have said it in the most diplomatic way, my advisor is right, he told them, frustrating their hopes that the Hokage could be convinced otherwise. The traditional combination, yo shik cho, is a team combination. Extremely useful if the mission involves capturing and interrogating targets, but what about escort missions assault missions, what about missions that use Nara's shadow techniques, all shintention useless, but Akamichi's magnification techniques would be invaluable posed and at an even more basic level under the ancient organizational system everyone would have at least one Kanoichi reminded them before looking at Kakashi, say Asuma with some amusement, what could your two of you teach him? 
about using her feminine abilities which Kurinai couldn't do better and with much less embarrassment for everyone involved, then looked at the red-eyed Jinjutsu mistress and also gave her an amused look, and you cool and what could you teach the children about their own physical skills and needs that Kakashi and Asuma could not do better, and with much less mortification, the three honing had the decency to look somewhat embarrassed. Although it was difficult to tell with Kakashi because of that mask of him laughing, the Hokage put his hand on a small stack of papers in front of him and slid it to the side, so that three sheets will be independent of each other in any case it has already been made official, these are your assignments he told them, like every previous year you can. Administering the basic teamwork test ensured that they were given at least one familiar piece of the old system to hold on to, however the teams that do so will be randomized in order to provide realistic tension. After all, we don't always have the luxury of knowing who we will team up with. The three honing approached to receive their orders and took them from Hokage's hands, looking at the paper as if it were some kind of explosive label. You have your orders dismissed at the academy. A similar scene was going on what do you mean no team Zeno almost shouted she had waited so long for this moment, only to ruin it with Aruka's announcement tch troublesome yeah, what's up Kiba shouted in protest we pass no in fact this is very unusual Shino who usually never speaks, I vocalize with a hum of irritation surrounding him, why because it is the Kanahagakur system to establish four man cells to carry out missions at the level gaining friends stop being picky, does this mean that we all failed the test Sakura asked with wide eyes, as she clung protectively to her forehead protector Aruka sighed at least glad that Naruto seemed to remain in too much shock to express his indignation no, it's not like that Aruka assured Sakura listen guys it's very simple the Hokage has decreed. Reforms to the royal shinobi structure of Kanahagakur and his generation is the first to benefit from them, benefit how Shikamaru asked cautiously for once genuinely interested after his little well somewhat substantial breakdown over the graduation exam, he managed to calm down again during the next day, quickly becoming once again a quiet slacker, yet the thought of having no equipment was intriguing since I had never heard of Kanoha doing something like this at the gaining level before. Haruka looked at the genius boy having assumed that he had already put together some if not most of the pieces. The reason there will be no teams is because in a nutshell now you are all the only team as expected Shikamaru nodded in the way that only someone who was involved in the plan could the rest however he seemed surprised to varying degrees, this ranged from silent shock to blatant squeals, followed by Kiba's roaring insistence that not stop doing that, Iruka sighed as he reviewed the Hokage's. Letter pinned to his clipboard Hokage Sam has decided that after advice duly given and considered our old Gainan team system was obsolete, just like the exam explained he looked at Naruto, expecting the boy to shout that he didn't understand to his surprise, the boy was actually following him, he would have to look into that later and so, in order to give you the best possible chance to become. The lead shinobi of Kanahagakur has decided to establish from your generation, the Gainan group does a swimming pool have to do with this, Naruto asked confused Aruka side a little surprised that it had taken so long for Naruto to lose track of the conference, not that kind of swimming pool Naruto sermon, the scar tuning a draw group in this case in essence, all of you are from now on Gainan. However as missions arise you will be divided into teams according to mission requirements, not according to selections predetermined this time Naruto nodded along with the rest of his companions, then for one mission Sasuke Shikamaru, and let's say, and they could not be paired however for the next it could be Shikamaru and Nada, and Naruto missed the expression of absolute horror on Shikamaru's face. At that perspective although Hinata didn't and laughed softly at her friend's expense while Naruto gave Shikamaru the sweetest most innocent smile he could muster, or possibly Sasuke is teaming up with Ino and Sakura, it really all depends, Iruka continued, oblivious to the interactions occurring between his students. In fact, he was so in his lecture mode that he didn't notice the hearts that appeared in the eyes of said two girls at his suggestion, or the expression of manifest horror on their faces. Ichiha's face was in all honesty the most emotional thing any of his classmates had seen him do, since he was s years old. In any case, Iruka soon noticed the laughter around the room and frowned. He frowned not having noticed the victim's expressions instead he cleared his throat to regain his attention and continued however, due to the fact that even without equipment everyone will need training, three honing have been assigned to the Henan group, making it one per team ready for the mission continued during the free time these honing sensei will collaborate to educate you all in the arts of the shinobi so I hope that you will not behave as best as possible with them understood a circle of he responded to Aruka sensei, although he still continued to doubt his sincerity. Anyway, now they were gaining and therefore technically they were out of his hands very well. So your sensei should arrive in 15 minutes or so, he estimated while looking at the wall clock. 
I suggest that in the meantime you find a productive use for your time with that being said Aruka went to his desk and sat pulling out the application forms for the incoming students for the next semester, even after graduating the professors still had a lot of work to do one hour, that was how long the gain in of the graduation class had to wait not 15 minutes like Aruka had said, but one full hour. Honestly if Shikamaru hadn't assured them that there was no way all the honing sensei would have planned to plant them, the newly created gaining could have simply left and gone home however, as things stood they had been forced to endure each other's company, which quickly became more of a chore than an activity. Pleasurable due to increasing levels of boredom and the inability to cope with said boredom to such an extent in fact that several of the newbies could have sworn that they had heard Shikamaru mutter something about the record again when Naruto started firing random questions at him when Honing Sensei arrived and they found themselves staring at a class full of disgruntled rookies who were staring at them with dazzling eyes. The three of them had the decency to look a little embarrassed by their lateness, but it was the of the bowed headband who really took the cake when he asked, we weren't late, right, he asked timidly, the students did their best not to massacre the man Kakashi was standing in. Kakashi laughed nervously as he watched nine rookies glare at him, having been late even before. Then he was used to paradoxically Karina Yasuma looked at each other for a split second before deciding to throw him under the bus for his sake, so to speak the result of that plan particularly disastrous had been that now all the students blamed him for the hour's lateness. Even if the three of them had been complicit to some extent in short, they had opted to have a few drinks at the local bar after Hokage's little briefing, and they had lost track of time of course that didn't stop the other two, honing from using him as a scapegoat, since they really had no intention of working with children who hated them from day one Kakashi on the other hand, they knew they had. To be relaxed enough that if he was really angry with them, he would get back at them if not, and this was infinitely more plausible than they would go unpunished, it was a bet with good odds either way, having gotten over the initial stage of homicidal rage, the students had followed the three honing instructors to the rooftop, where the students in a show of unanimous disapproval of their senseis so. Far proven work habits gathered in a group along three rows grouped together as the three honings stood awkwardly in front of them, there was no mistaking the angry looks the students were throwing at them, a certain Akashi began at least having the decency not to take out his porn to read, considering the tense atmosphere, I suppose Aruka already told you this, but we are your three instructors. He could have sworn that he had heard a do among the Ganon, although most of them just looked at him as if they were asking seriously, idiot of all. Modes as a first exercise I propose that we introduce ourselves to get to know each other better, what do you think he tried to look excited in a vain attempt to encourage the children he failed after an awkward pause, Kakashi coughed into a fist and began to sweat okay, I guess I'll go first, and so it began a long litany of pseudo presentations from the Honing Sensei that only served to increase the Layers of the gain and followed by more informative presentations from said graduates, although these seemed more directed at their classmates, that the honing apparently had Shino's habit of holding a grudge, had rubbed off on Kakashi and his colleagues for a moment the three discussed in silence, what was the best way to deal with the situation to be fair, the gaining had good reasons to be angry with them but if they wanted to overcome the next obstacle on their way to gaining status with full privileges, they would have to overcome that anger and focus on the mission, a couple of glances later, Kakashi sighed as he straightened up and he stretched his neck to free himself. Once he had done so, he looked at the waiting gaining for a second before unleashing the full power of his killing intent. It was without a doubt the most horrible experience the newly created Ganon had ever felt. It suddenly felt like their lungs felt they had refused to continue functioning, and an unbearable amount of invisible pressure was being placed on their shoulders, causing many of them to buckle, even as they sat from the sheer force of it. One couple specifically Hino and Sakura but to Kakashi's surprise no and that they even fainted, even the survivor Ichiha and the Yuzumaki boy were sweating buckets and doing everything possible not to faint, and according to the profiles that the honing had received, these two were by far the ones who they were more likely to not give in under such circumstances due to their harsh lives and all of. This happened in the span of exactly five seconds the moment Kakashi gave in on his Kai flare, the three honing heard inhalations. Collective as the gaining suddenly found themselves able to breathe much more easily Sakura and Ino who were passed out were slowly revived by their classmates before everyone looked nervously at Kakashi, that was your first lesson, the masked honing stated with complete disinterest as his only visible eye fell out murderous intent abbreviated as K in our profession he added, consider that also his first and only warning Kulin, although he had not enjoyed the effects that the murderous intent of Kakashi had in the gain and nodded grimly Kakashi senpai is right, agreed as he took a step forward and crossed his arms under his bust, now you are all gain and learn to control. 
your emotions this is not a matter of acting against a teacher acting now is insubordination and that it's a military offense, even when Jen and swallowed suddenly realizing the dangerous game they had been playing, Asuma intervened with his two cents, even when he managed to maintain his general attitude of indifference, everyone you are soldiers whether you like it or not from the moment you passed. The academy exam, Honing stated, smoking absently before taking out his cigarette and blowing some smoke into the air. He spared a glance at the still trembling Ganon. You are all very lucky that you let's be pretty relaxed any other teacher would have stripped them of their rank and returned them to the academy for that kind of attitude, then we're supposed to accept bad habits from you, Naruto demanded. Never want to be intimidated into keep silent yes, stated Kakashi with the same disinterest he had shown before and no, the Gainan blinked in confusion if Kakashi is late Asuma took charge of the explanation, knowing Kakashi's penchant for irritating newbies with his cryptic explanations, then you take care of it, so you maybe he has something better to do, or maybe he is performing a task for the Hokage. Have you ever thought about that? He posed the question to the Gainan who slowly shook their heads. We are their teachers. Yes but we are also honing here reminded them can I we teach you at ok sama's discretion, if his orders in any way impede our commitments to you, then you must learn to deal with it in a constructive manner, and not in ways that qualify as insubordination however that is out of the question. Emissions, Kakashi added, suddenly losing his mask of disinterest and becoming serious, instantly gaining the Ganon's attention. If a team leader acts with bad habits on the missions, then no more. It's a matter of contradicting orders or extenuating circumstances. It's a breach of duty and danger, he informed them, absently noticing that the Iga girl seemed to be whispering something to him. The Kibi Hink, who seemed confused by the explanation, in that case, feel free to react. Understand, he asked. Knowing from their looks that it managed to pass as expected the gaining slowly nodded their heads in agreement, and the three honing shared a smile well, because now is the time, from the final test, said Kakashi, suddenly full of good humor, even Karina and Asuma seemed to perk up as if they were also part of the joke, unfortunately for the Gainan. Yes, it was the final exam, Kiba parroted, surpassing Sakura and Naruto, becoming a Gainan, explained to Asuma. Succinctly what the hell Naruto shouted as he stood up pointing at the trio of Jonin we're not Jonin anymore, what the hell was that speech for so you're Gainin okay, Kakashi said lazily as he looked at the blonde, but you are not yet fit for duty, not in the eyes of the honing at least to be sure of that the Hokage institutes a second final exam after the academy exams to evaluate all graduates to the maximum henin, only that in case maybe some of you just got lucky during the graduation exam or are more into theory than practice, none of the honing missed the brief glance the gaining gave the pink-haired girl before refocusing. Your attention on your three potential teachers, although you are all gaining candidates at this moment the final test will be carried out in teams of three, thus simulating the conditions of a real mission, Karina informed them, and sternly, please note that the teams have been chosen at random, and in no way do they reflect future assignments, Asuma urged his colleague who nodded and took a short, folded piece of paper out of his jacket pocket and began reading it. The team began almost shuddering at having had to dispense with traditional team numbering gaining Aruno Sakura Aburam Shino Akimichi Choi recited, noting the slightly awkward behavior of the three, as they realized they knew very little about each other well, that would serve well for the test, if their father was right anyway. Team B Yaman Kaino and Yuzuka Kibicha has Sasuka screech and a roar of disapproval, rose in the air, and were quickly silenced by a sudden burst of killing intent from Kakashi, who tore a hole in the two with a stern look, grateful for the immediate solution to the auditory assault, Asuma nodded towards Kakashi, before finishing Team C Nar Shikamaru Huganat Yuzumaki Naruto, while Asuma had been too busy. Reading Kakashi and Karina, and they had been paying close attention to the Gainan's reactions, at the team assignment Sakura had slumped in defeat at her team position, before roaring against Ino's appointment, although as previously stated, Kakashi put a stop to that immediately Shino seemed a little uncomfortable. But the team's assignments probably due to the fact that he had failed to deduce a coherent and logical reason for such a grouping. Choji for his part seemed uncomfortable and point continued. Looking at Shikamaru who had given him an apologetic and reassuring look, somehow reassuring the big boy judo for now Ino as mentioned above went into screeching fangirl mode, quickly attacking everyone's ears with her victory scream Kiba was wincing at the screeching abnormally high decibel level that his new teammate had unleashed on his enhanced hearing, and Akamaru also seemed annoyed by it. They both made their displeasure over this undeserved attack on his hearing heard loudly. Sasuke simply widened his eyes comically and adopted a horrified expression. Manifest for a moment before returning to his melancholic pose the most interesting reactions however, were that of Team C realizing what the team's assignments would be, once he assumed they're finished with Team B Shikamaru had fainted after correctly deducing who his two new teammates were upon seeing this Hanada burst into giggles, much to cool and surprise, before realizing the same thing as. 
Chikamaru and then blushing like a tomato as she watched Naruto who simply smiled mischievously as he also deduced the team's final pairing. Looking at this scene the three honing couldn't help but think that this might be an interesting task after all. Chapter 8 Lost Clan Arc The Bell Test The next morning, oh come on Shika say something dot 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 please Shikamaru looked at his stalker, it's not my fault, Naruto protested as he raised his hands defensively to the side, Hinata couldn't help laughing at the sight, much to the fascination of both teens, a vein began to visibly throb on Shikamaru's forehead, indicating how irritated the genius boy was. But the furious glare and a wave of his hand in a particular direction, it soon became quite clear what had caused him so much discomfort. Then at least do something with your fans. The Nara air almost roared at the boy as he pointed towards the small crowd of people crowding at the edge of the training ground. Naruto-sama could hear someone roared in support followed by the sound of horns and drums. A huge banner was held high between two clan members that Naruto could barely recognize, which caused the teen and his makeshift teammates and the supervisor honing sweat as they read Uzumaki's rather hasty message to always win. There were even some who grabbed improvised drums and trumpets to make as much noise as possible, while others seemed to enjoy simply shouting with joy and encouragement. That's quite a shock. He pointed at some absentmindedly with an amused smile and Naruto smiled nervously rubbing the back of his neck he yes, the elders warned me that something like this would happen at some point during the exam, I'm surprised they didn't come during the graduation exam, the look Shikamaru gave him at that moment could have melted the ice, those are all of them, Asuma wondered out loud Naruto dismissed him. But this day no, that's like 40 of them we have maybe 200 in the clan compound, hid both Asuma and Naruto, turned to see Shikamaru on the ground, passed out Hinata's laughter, made them redirect their attention to the Hyuga girl who instantly blushed and looked down shyly on, not that Shikamaru-kun said something about em more of them be before passing out she explained sheepishly, although the twitch ad. The corner of her mouth was unmistakable for once she was glad she wasn't the one on the ground, Naruto gave a shy smile to Asuma he just he sighed exasperatedly as he fixed Naruto with a stern look, what did you do during the exam Naruto sincerely asked not a little bewildered by the actions of the supposedly calm and lazy air of Nara, as Shika himself would say we share a whole Asuma I blinked. But how did it start staring at Shikamaru for two days, oh oh Naruto nodded sagely, while well, Asuma gave Shikamaru a look of pity yes, the honing giggled at the circumstances he had deduced from Naruto's brief explanation before nodding his head. Do Anata anyway wake up it's time for the test, I imagine everyone followed the instructions, both teens looked dizzy as they held their growling stomachs, although Hinata was able to hide it better as she crouched down, and he gently shook Shikamaru to wake him up, that was enough of an answer for some, who nodded with a slight smile, well understand that you won't always be in a situation where they are fully rested or fed he lectured the three of them even when Shikamaru regained consciousness, that's why we're here at this time of the morning for the test, the three Gainan candidates nodded at the information which caused Asuma to continue fortunately the Itsumi fan team had fallen silent for now the test is simple, he told them as he took his hand out of his pocket. And as he did so, he revealed two bells. I have two bells in my hand. The goal is to have one. When the timer rings, he pointed to the old kitchen timer located on a nearby rock outcrop. The one that doesn't rings. He does it, they tie him up and force him to do it. Watch while his companions eat the lunches I brought, he added, making the three wizards pale. Now this test has generally had a failure rate of 66% on average in the past. Ama said seriously which means we could very well have only three new gain in this year, all nine or even none he added mentally smiling, as the three paled even more, then when I tell you to go, you should try to take the bells off my person and keep one for yourself. You understood shakily the three gain and nodded making Asuma smile well then mission begin three blurs, jumped away from him towards the forest Asuma, smiled as he leaned against the rocky outcrop and took a nice long drag on his cigarette, now let's see if you were smart enough to take my hint, Naruto mused sweating nervously as he watched the smoking Han in from the cover of the tree he was hiding. And before the Uzumaki clan arrived without no doubt he would have attacked Asuma from the beginning. But many many training sessions with the clan members who were on par with Konoha Honing had beaten that out of him. He knew there was no way to beat Asuma one-on-one. -on -one. It just wasn't doable with his power level or the techniques he knew unlike Kakashi who seemed extremely relaxed, Asuma was just cool and both senses of the word had a calm head and someone Naruto could respect in terms of behavior, and the honing had only looked at him once since he was assigned to his team. On the other hand, the blonde fervently wanted to quit smoking. His nose was itchy and his eyes were watering. There was also the matter of the bells. Naruto frowned. As he considered his situation if he grabbed one of the bells then Shikamaru and Nada would have to starve during lunch, and if he had correctly deduced Asuma's comments about the test then whoever didn't get a bell would also fail their gain in qualification exam which naturally made Naruto stop. 
Could he really save himself and let one of his comrades return to the academy grunting softly to himself, Naruto clutched his head as everything it gave him a headache, if it hadn't been for the substantial training his relatives had instilled in him, he would never have had to be confused with this kind of dilemma, he would have just moved on and figured things out later now ah however he was questioning himself and wow he hated it a part of him wanted to find Hinata and Shikamaru and ask them what they thought, but he thought that was against the rules, so he held back that impulse honestly all he wanted to do was get through this stupid thing. Test and make his clan proud, why did there have to be this kind of ridiculous test, but of course the clan always made it a point to take care of each other, no Naruto froze as a smile grew on his face, that's right his clan had taught him better than to try to move forward, no matter how it affected others. The Yuzumaki had always cared about the unity of the clan, so why dishonor them with this type of victory? A sound caught his attention and he watched as Hinata ran out of the foliage, looking torn between the crowd. Decision and hesitation clearly she had come to her own answer smiling she raised her fingers in the shape of a cross yes, I guess that is the only path left huh, used Kajbu and no jutsu Asuma looked at the young Hyuga heiress, as she charged at him head first overall he couldn't blame her the Hyuga style essentially restricted her movements to frontal attacks, something he had never really liked yet. It still surprised him that she was the first one out he had always imagined, that the Yuzumaki brat would be the first to rush brave Miss Hyuga praised her neutrally, as she pushed herself off the rocky outcrop, just in time to dodge to the side with plenty of time to spare, as the girl launched a palm full of chakra that would have done some damage if it hit, but not smart enough when she turned to. Look at him he was already punching her with a calm expression of disinterest on his face, however it was about to connect with the side of her head when his instincts activated and he jumped back carefully avoiding a flying kick to the head oh, he reflected a little interested now as he watched the blonde Yuzumaki boy recover from his failed attack, what is this teaming up with Naruto kun Hinata? exclaimed surprised by her savior and not a little happy that he had come for her hello Hinata, Naruto greeted, although keeping his gaze completely focused on Asuma, how about we teach this old smoker a lesson, Asuma, or an eyebrow at the bold suggestion. Although he couldn't help but smile at the attitude the boy was showing, oh interesting Hinata for her part, didn't need any further instructions, as she easily got into the Jukin stance next to the person she likes a half firm, feeling half hesitant bar confirming her help a Kajbun and Asuma easily deduced as he faced the two smart gamings he had taken a look at his chakra levels before starting the test and there was no way the boy would already have so little in him, unless he was a clone nice let's see what do you have, he gestured for them to come towards him, still not wanting to use their chakra knives, one against one two one one it doesn't make any difference, he told them funny bring it how about three against one, he heard a voice ask him from behind, making his eyes Aaron instinctively. Jumped to the side of the bells just as a shadow staggered toward where he had been smiling grimly. He noticed that Shikamaru had managed to get behind him with the help of the foliage if he hadn't spoken. Asuma had no doubt that he would have succeeded with Kajimane Lesson 1, Asuma stated with a tight smile before disappearing, the shinobi are quiet, he continued as he reappeared behind Shikamaru, who simply smiled before jumping forward, making Asuma miss his hit Lesson 2, the honing, just as he used his other hand to grab Naruto's foot shinobi, are always aware of their surroundings, he said just as he turned and then threw Naruto towards Hinata, knocking them both down. And causing the Kajbunin to dissipate Shikamaru cursed Hinata backs away lesson 3 he said, then Asuma appearing behind Hinata with a blow ready to be struck Shinobi, never let go of their prey, unfortunately his blow missed the target, a stain appeared next to it Hinata, and then took her away before she could put the Yuga Eris out of commission. Nothing personal of course. He just wanted to make sure the three of them understood what was at stake. Still, that was a pretty improvised plan. Asuma amused as he watched two blurry spots retreat into the forest, maybe they have the answer laughing Asuma returned to the rocky outcrop he leaned back waiting once again for his next move, either we were so close Naruto or rather his Kajbunin cursed as he punched a tree close, then he looked at Shikamaru, why did you have to speak, you could have caught him Shikamaru for his party stared. At the blonde no he couldn't reply to Suma is not a rookie Naruto is a honing he would have easily noticed the attack once he was close enough, even if he had caught him, there's no guarantee he wouldn't have been able to get out of trouble right away, and you two were too far away to reach him in time and hold him back further, Naruto grumbled be if so only the main body was there Shikamaru raised. An eyebrow main body asked before narrowing his eyes, are you not the real Naruto right, he deduced he had his suspicions based on the sneak attack that he had seen the blonde perform Ama on him, usually Naruto, it was too simple to do something like that, unless I was in some kind of situation where it was not advisable Naruto shook his head, confirming the boy's suspicions, I'm a cashier Bunin. Confirmed my true self is somewhere else Shikamaru's eyes narrow. 
remembering his friend's ability to use the technique he hadn't made much of a fuss during the survival portion of the exam, but he had the opportunity to do so now yes about that how the hell do you know Kaj Bunin he asked suspiciously having decided that since he had chosen not to talk about it during the graduation exam he could. Uso now minimizing the number of people who would know Hinata also seemed interested in this information, although she seemed to react differently, I mean giving Naruto an admiring look long story she replied Kaj Bunin from Naruto, not to mention they are ranked 6 ways until Sunday tch troublesome muttered Shikamaru, before fixing the blonde with a calculating look, how much punishment can you? Stand he asked directly since they had never tried that aspect of clones, before a good hit Shikamaru blinked that's all just a hit he asked disappointed if it helps you remember that everything I learn the main body, learns the CL kindly offered for the second time Shikamaru blinked, that's incredibly useful. He muttered to himself as he crouched down and clasped his hands in his usual thinking posture, today again with the pose, Naruto demanded. Shut up, I'm thinking. Shikamaru was a bit irritated by the temporary team assignment he had been given, but in no way was he willing to risk his mother's wrath by deliberately failing not to mention that being a civilian, while in one of Konoha's prominent clans, was practically the lowest he could go. Wrinkling his eyebrows as he delved deeper into his thought process, he gathered the variables he knew the variables he could predict, and then what he called the X factor, those things he couldn't predict or planning each of his plans, took that factor into account. Even if it was only to help him stay calm in the face of the unexpected, the variables he knew were quite simple. Asuma was a honing. Naruto knew Kaj. Yunin had his shadow techniques, and Anata was a practitioner of average Yukin, but novice what he didn't know on the other hand, constituted a larger list how even Naruto was could Hinata withstand a significant amount of pressure, how intelligent was Asuma, could his own chakra reserve support a completely rested honing if he caught the man in the Kajimain, these were just some of. The questions he asked himself and to his irritation the most he had about all of them were conjectures still had to consider Naruto's cage Bunin okay, he spoke Shikamaru as he opened his eyes and stared at Naruto the blonde had been shaking from what he could see of anxiety dissipate and bring the main body here, Naruto nodded and immediately turned into smoke at the same time Shikamaru directed. His attention to Hinata Hinata keep your Byakugan up, we need to know what Asuma is doing at all times, H. Hugan ordered in a matter of minutes Naruto arrived where they were and landed on a nearby branch what's up Shika asked, I need you to do three Kaj Bunin Shikamaru ordered in a second his order completed well, now make them do exactly what I say, let's test Asuma's skills before we do anything. Naruto smiled in understanding it was the noise that first told Asuma that things were about to happen. Getting interesting looking towards the tree line he saw three clones well, he guessed they were all clones ran towards him all of them with a kunai in their hand, Asuma sighed he took out his used cigarette and threw it towards the ground here we go again he reflected while skillfully dodging a right hook to the face he kicked one of the clones in the stomach and then proceeded to turn on his heel to hit the third in the back of the head, as expected all three went up in smoke Kaj Bunin reflected again, I still can't believe that brat managed to get off the tahu, his instincts activated then, and he carefully bent his neck to the side to avoid a kunai thrown just as six clones were now. Leaving the line of the forest heads getting more and more complicated, he did not reflect on the honing like his predecessors, the six clones were quickly eliminated then, just as he was about to put out another cigarette to relax, he was forced to abandon his sport when six kunai fell to the ground where there were nine clones this time, plus this kid's chakra reserves. They're crazy he muttered to himself as he ran towards them to meet them this time caught off guard by the honing's sudden aggression, the nine clones quickly reduced their number by half before trying to organize a counterattack. unfortunately by then Asuma had momentum on his side and the remaining clones were destroyed in minutes, looking at the stopwatch Asuma noted that the kids still had maybe. Half an hour before the test ended unfortunately for them I still hadn't seen them truly cooperate with each other, apart from that impromptu onbush they had set for him, I guess not even Nara Aiga and Jinchiriki combined could understand the true meaning of the test, that those feelings of disappointment only increased when wave after wave of clones came at him each twice as many as the last. With only 15 minutes left, he had been fighting for 96 clones separated into numerous waves if the pattern was holding, then the next wave came, and Asuma was really starting to admire the Yuzumaki kid for his chakra reserves. Even a honing like him would have been hard pressed with only 5, but this kid was taking them out like they were normal Bunin finally pulling out his knives. French there was no way in hell he could defeat 40 Ganon on his own, using just barehanded to Jutsu without getting hit a few times he ran at them head on in another attempt to cut their momentum, before it really got going as expected, he managed to cut a swath from the start, even though he wasn't channeling chakra into his swords, even using the blunt side of the blades, it was enough to blow up a Lone kicking punching and slashing Asuma absentmindedly wondered how the boy had managed to improve his tojutsu skills so much since graduating as a gainan, after all his scores on the pre-genin exams had been abysmal yet here they were. 
giving him some light training a jingle caught his attention then, and he quickly jumped to the side, just as a clone almost managed to grab the bells, either he had forgotten about that putting away his swords, he quickly glanced at the hand seals before slamming his hands on the ground, Totenyam Manuma shouted just as the ground beneath a dozen clones turned into a muddy swamp, causing him to sink. In his hands. It wasn't as big or flashy as Jurea of the Sanin, but it would do. For the purposes of this test he still had a little over 30 clones with which a kunai whizzed past his ear. But that wasn't what caught Asuma's attention was that the kunai had flown behind him as he turned his back. Eyes widened as another wave of clones charged at him that hadn't been according to the pattern, quickly dodging an axe kick from a rushing clone he was forced to keep turning backwards as the two waves converged on him from all sides, be that child was good, but not good enough, he roared as he passed through the hand seals again. One hit him in the face, but quickly dispatched the aggressor with a quick hook to the stomach, another lunged towards the bells, but just as quickly was eliminated by a quick punch to the back even then, Asuma couldn't believe how many problems these clones were giving him on average, the Kajbunin were not made for combat, but for exploration their lack of durability made them horrible combat. Companions which is why stone clones were preferred in that area however, for using these expendable clones like this, the boy had all the makings of a tactical genius weighed a small smile formed on his face, even as he continued fighting the clones, Shikamaru had to be that no matter how how clever the blonde boy could be. The idea of getting him accustomed to greeting after greeting, only to be surprised with an early greeting, must have been the Nara boys doing, and the only reason they could have known when to attack would have been if they kept an eye on him constantly. And since he couldn't feel her chakra signatures nearby, he was going to assume that the girl Ahuga was providing continuous reports intelligent very intelligent, so that's right Ian used as he felt himself getting excited it was a good plan was not a brilliant plan Shikamaru Naruto and Janata had pulled their unique resources to hastily come up with a battle plan that was making him sweat really. Well then Naruto Shikamaru Hinata had shouted her challenge with a smile, as if conveying the feelings of the three companions. Team the clones around him suddenly seemed even more eager to fight as they began to charge at him with renewed determination. However unlike before they had abandoned their type of fighting. Fighter and had settled for something that looked like the Hukin of the clan. Aiga for a moment wondered if Yanada had turned Eng into one of the clones. But then many of them were using similar palm-oriented strikes. However, unlike the Hukin. Asuma could tell that these chakra-infused palms were not for surgical strikes, but for unleashing large doses of pain, much like what he had heard about Tsunade's chakra-based super strength. The Yuzumaki clan's Alaska Soken realized with his eyes. Wide open how did that boy do? He instinctively looked at the curiously silent fan gallery at the edge of the training ground, as he expected everyone had calmed down for the exam, but what surprised him most was how approvingly it seemed like everyone had noticed them. Also what the boy was using, so that's it, he reflected with amusement, he deftly dodged another blow with his palm and rewarded the clone with a fist to the face, dispelling the opponents, whether they were clones or not Ganon or not, it was quite exhausting afterwards. For a while and as he got tired he made mistakes. The first came in the form of an indirect blow to the upper part of his biceps, which made his arm burn with pain, yet he managed to recover in an instant and dispatch the offending clone. But then he received another blow to the leg and was about to bend over. The real mistake, however, occurred when five clones attacked him at the same time while one went straight to the bells, dispatching the one with the bell with a blow to the shoulder. He immediately turned his attention to the five clones approaching, and he dispatched four of them when the fifth instead of dispelling a punch to the stomach, he simply grabbed him and smiled a little breathlessly this time, don't assume sensei said the clone now revealed as the original Naruto with a mischievous smile, even as Asuma's eyes widened at his mistake, Naruto shouted shik and now catch him. When Eno Jutsu's success heard behind him just as his body froze stiffly Hinata BH came a female voice from his right, although Asuma couldn't turn around. To see all he felt was a searing pain as the girl's jukin punches hit his ankles and shoulder joints, he had been trapped completely, even if he managed to get out of the Kajimane, now he would be too to put up much of a fight even against a Bell Academy student, now he heard Shikamaru order apparently no one to forget the parameters of the mission of the I have Hinata's voice exclaimed just as he. Felt something pull and break from his belt still holding his arm outstretched Naruto smiled at him, we one sensei declared smugly, just as the boy's relatives erupted in roars of summons Asuma laughed, despite himself the three boys had played with him and well deserved the pass hell, after what they made him pass immediately, he ruled out giving them the secondary but optional test to see if they would still try to save themselves individually that you did it Naruto that you did it later, just to rub it in the timer went off a few hours later, Asuma found his colleagues chatting at the local dango shop, their pre-arranged meeting point didn't even notice him coming until he was practically on top of them, oh hi Asuma how what the hell happened to you Kurunai he broke off seeing the honings. 
ruined appearance you got into a fight with a bear and you lost a suma side. I wish those brats really did me good, he muttered as he slumped into a seat on Kakashi's side of the booth and banged his head tiredly against the table that brother. Gainan did this to you, Kakashi asked surprised after all it wasn't every day a Gainan team could do so much damage to a hounding hell. Neither he nor Kurinai had been even remotely exhausted by their own trials. Kurinai had to stifle a snort of amusement, which caused him to um it gave him a weak look hey. I want to see you try to take on over 100 shadow clones, using only weak ninjutsu and tojutsu he. Challenged making both of them gape 100, Kulin asked in shock at least Asuma confirmed wishing he was back home and in bed, be the need to share notes with his colleagues, to form a balanced learning program used it, Kakashi asked carefully the three knowing full well that the only person remotely capable of using shadow clones within the gaining ranks right now it was Naruto there was no need to ask. What that was he didn't assure some with his head still resting on the table I never felt even a hint of it, it was all his own chakra, that's crazy Kurinai almost screamed, although she managed to keep it quiet, what kind of gaining has so much chakra you know what Kakashi reminded him with a meaningful one-eyed look, then he turned his attention to Asuma, then they passed with flying colors he. Agreed. Bearded honing with a slight nod that the other two assumed was a poor attempt at nodding the two of you Kurinai shrugged passing, though Aburam and Akamichi had trouble integrating their styles with each other, without however, Aran failed to come up with the winning plan, after Aburam revealed to me the purpose of the test. Asuma nodded as he processed the information. Then they both turned to Kakashi who had specifically requested to test the equipment with the Achiha, as expected. He shuddered. I approved. Although. Little he admitted after a moment of silence, it was exactly as the report said Sasuke has trouble working with others, he stated Kiba was in favor of ganging up against me, but and he wasn't okay, there's a reason his file had fangirl warning notes, Karina frowned at this, while Asuma shuddered, it was no secret that Kulin hated two things more than anything else, men he despised Kinoichi for their gender and women that they were a disgrace to the title and particular fans how they passed he asked dangerously, if he found out that Kakashi had passed them by passing to Uchiha, he would lose his genitals. 